Good morning, one and all, as we are ready to go, or, well, we're ready to go <laughs> <laughs> for challengers here today. Uh, we're hearing that Laura Gold, uh, well, they're, they're slowly trickling in, as you'd often expect challengers players may not be the most prompt you've ever seen in your lives, and yep, there are four empty stations over there on the left-hand side, but we'll see what happens. we got winner's finals ready to go, or mostly ready to go here for us on this final day of Miami. Jay, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. Obviously, yesterday was a long one, but a short one at the same time because we only got to one game four out of all the series we were able to cast yesterday. I'm hoping today's going to be a lot closer because we have some of the best teams left throughout challenges. Top EU squads, top NA squads, and some surprises with the two teams that we have in the Windows Finals making it the way that they did, man. They were showing up playing some great Call of Duty yesterday. Yeah, we got an even split between Europe and North America here in our final six squads. Uh, Team War in particular had a grueling battle uh, off stream to kind of finish off their day with a map five to get them into that lower uh, quarterfinals or semifinals matchup, however you want to frame it up. Uh, Omit EU also dropped earlier than we would have expected, so it looked like we were going to get a full day worth of North American dominance, but surprise, surprise, we got to a point where we had Boston Academy, the NA Season 1 Elite Champs, going up against five Media Clan, what has often been touted as like the second Spanish team over the course of Challengers history. And boy, I'll tell you, Boston Academy got spanked yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with you. I remember when I said in the beginning of the series, I only knew two players. I was in the shower this morning rehearsing all their names. Rencor, Super, <laughs> Sucre, Yako. I'm never going to forget those names with the performance that they were able to put on yesterday. Just nonstop slaying. It caught Boston Academy off guard. They're usually going to play the fundamental part, but when you're getting outslayed, outrotated, everything was not going your way. Five Media Clan just came out and played some stellar Call of Duty yesterday. Yeah, they looked unbelievable. I, I mean, we often talked about you know, the Spanish in the past, they've always done well kind of throughout the elite seasons, a couple of top threes, maybe a couple of top two finishes. But when they were trying to get on the land last year, Modern Warfare 2 it was like top 12s, top 24s, just really couldn't figure it out. But this year looks like it very well may be different because 5 BD Clan came into this event as the top placing EU team back from Boston. And they've already supplanted that top six finish with now, at worst, a top three in front of them. Uh, I think the biggest thing about it is, you know, for every team that's out there, Maybe you didn't have the cleanest start to yesterday. Maybe you didn't have the cleanest finish to yesterday. But, hey, that's yesterday. Long yeah. day, like you mentioned. Today is where it all obviously all comes to fruition. And, hey, look, COD is a very day-to-day -day event, especially when it comes down to this Challenger's Passion Pit. So, looking back at our bracket, here's kind of where we find ourselves with two lower round 10 matches. Boston have to drop to play a mid EU. That's a battle of champions from the Elite yeah. season. And then FaZe Clan Black, who is coming off of a recent roster change, they did not look particularly great versus Lore Gaming Gold last night. And now we'll have square up against team war oh yeah so this is all out battle like some of the top teams that we have on both sides phase black versus team war is going to be a great matchup but then boston versus omit like you said challengers elite winners from the na elite winners from the eu those guys are going head to head in that losers quarters but then our winners finals is even more exciting because five media they were able to come out and dominate yesterday versus boston academy but lore gold that was really the surprise because i looked at a tweet yesterday these guys only been a team for a week they're coming out here making it to winners finals on one week of practice that means you're playing some great god at the right time uh, yeah absolutely the case and that's one of those things man it could just happen that quickly sometimes it clicks but can they keep it consistently here into day number three, technically, of their gameplay, especially against a five media clan squad that looked really, really polished yesterday. Like we said, it wasn't just individuals. It was the full collective team really playing with some great tempo. So here is that roster that you were rehearsing with the Celsius in hand of the shower this morning. We've got ourselves <laughs> a Sucre, Super, Rencor, and Yako. I think the biggest thing about it is, and I saw a couple of tweets kind of claiming this when they had tweeted that they beat Boston Academy. A lot of people last year, maybe myself included, had said words along the lines of Super and Rencor play a lot for KD, may not necessarily get a lot of focus around the objective, but that was not the case yesterday. This was a full, complete squad, and they did everything right. Yeah, they did everything right, and it started with the slaying. The good thing about MDB3 is you're always put in a situation where you can get a player on the hill, and everyone can just play the cutoffs, and that's exactly what was working out to perfection for these guys because they were rotating early. You're allowing those ARs to put themselves in power positions because on a map like Subbase, we're talking about top snow, top three-story, cat room. They were able to control a majority of all the power positions on the map, and when you're getting the kills, it makes the game a lot easier. So if they play the KD, at least it was working out yesterday. You got to make sure you're doing the same thing today but keeping those fundamentals in the back of your mind 
exactly the case. So, yeah, it'd be interesting, I think, as well, just to see what kind of maps that they prefer, because we were a bit surprised that they kind of, oh, I, I, I won't say allowed, but we got to a map series set versus Boston where we looked at it and said, wow, Boston's got to be thrilled about the, uh, the series that they had laid out in front of them, but didn't really seem to make much of a difference. And there is a Rio map four that we didn't get to that I'm particularly curious to see what this team looks like on a fast paced map like Rio. So maybe we'll get a little bit of that, but for Laura Gold on the other side, like you mentioned, very recently put together a roster. Of course, all the players in some regard familiar with one another, but it is recently put together. So Classic and Gunless come off that Convoy Gaming team, and then DAC and Zero Four come from different squads to create this new roster. And yeah, like you said, they looked good yesterday, surprisingly so. Yeah, they looked really good yesterday, and it was on the back of, believe it or not, not the guys that you're really familiar with in Ga Gunless and Classic. Gunless had his moments where he was putting down Dylan Rex every time on that high-rise B Street. That's a really key gunfight. But it was more focused on the guys that I really didn't know that much about. Sure. 4 and Dak. Dak was putting on a stellar performance from start to finish of that series. He puts up a 35-piece in the opening hard point, drops a cruise missile in the search and destroy, and into the control, he's the only one to breach 30 kills with the AR in hand. It was the two young guys that were really setting the tone early on. It definitely caught the opposing team off guard. And if they could come out and play like that today with a little bit more assistance out of your main two guys out of your vets in classic and gunless there's there's definitely a chance that they can walk away as our champions yeah absolutely the case and it's one of those things that you know i, I hate to kind of pinpoint one player or the other because it's really kind of a double-sided story here whenever we looked at like classic and gunless teams in the past especially in the challenger scene when they play well they look like you know whoever team they find themselves on is kind of unstoppable yeah and when we saw them play yesterday that was indeed the case classic and gunless were looking really really good but like you mentioned the explosivity of, of zero four what he's been able to provide and then on top of that what we kind of got from back we've really started to learn about more about him over the last two years yeah it's looking really really solid as far as their ability to possibly you know continue forward with the momentum that they were able to build yesterday to a possible grand finals yeah, they're going to continue forward. They got to show up to the station, though, first. Where the hell are these guys? We're already seven minutes late. We got to get to the station. You know, five media clan, they are ready to go. They're trying to continue that hot streak from yesterday. But, Lord Gold, you got to show up because the longer that you wait, the more you instantly have to jump into that match. You don't get an opportunity to shoot some bots. They get a little warm up in. And you best believe that five media, they just got out of their chairs, but they were already shooting. They are ready yeah. to go. So, Lord Gold, we got to get to the venue. Just yeah, to say, unless they're on one of these stations scrimming but that's team war on the left phase yeah, black on the right black. boston academy deeper on the left and yeah so those that, are the losers that game. looks like a mid eu on the on the far right so yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. is so yeah they're just not here uh <laughs> okay they lose a map by 10 15 like you know you get 15 minutes after like what the hell are you doing? I don't like, know. you go into yesterday, you're making the winner's bracket, you take down Phase Black, and now all of a sudden we're just showing late on Sunday? You're like, you see the bottom low at third. Like, bruh, what yeah. the hell are we doing? Well, the thing about it is it's not just the players. There's a full staff worth of Lord Gaming uh, peeps there, too. I mean, they have a whole second team for crying out loud. Like, no one got the memo? Surely not. I don't know. The Passion Pit I see classic. is going to feast on this, though. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I see Classic, though. I see Classic sipping on a little bit of an energy drink. Just popped up into the cam on, oh, left, okay. on the They're left side. So at least you got a couple players here. But where's the rest of the guys? You got eight minutes until you lose map one. You don't want to start your championship Sunday like that. Yeah, unless they were maybe warming up a CDL team. I don't know if that's something that is uh, possible. But regardless, they're eight minutes past game time. <laughs> so I don't know. It's definitely one of those things that you look at and say, okay, oh, that's just what we're dealing with today. Like I said, Passion yeah. Pit Doc is going to love this flat out. They they uh, they memed on uh, Ben Bantz last time they did that. <laughs> they didn't show up until like five minutes after or something like that. So, Wow. I, I, what do you say? Wow. No idea. All right. I guess these guys, are, they just woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. But if they woke up. <laughs> to, get, <laughs> to get away from that, though, Alan, out of all the six teams that we have remaining, who do you think are walking away in as our champions today? Man, it's tough to ask, right? Because it's one of those things that, like I said, like we often see teams, uh, I'm thinking back to like even like Boston Academy from years past, like when Sensor was playing in the Vanguard of Modern Warfare 2 year, they would have a great Saturday. But then Sunday, they just like wouldn't show up. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, there's just not 
ready to go or they just not play the same level of cod and i think maybe some of that is due to the fact that saturdays are typically very long um i will say just kind of looking at the event from yesterday some of our teams did have to show up at like 9 a.m yesterday to play their first mm. matches so there is a level of fatigue that could definitely come into play it, it's hard to like put your finger on it all like as casters we can often say things like momentum and fatigue and you know mental taxation can kind of play a toll on you we don't really have that guaranteed for sure but it is something that often comes up in the conversation so it's hard to look at both five media and lore and you know look at what the prize pool is for them right in front of them right like top three at least for both of them they definitely have the best chances but i wouldn't be surprised to see any of the four teams that are starting in that top six position today in the lower semis have a chance to catch some fire and possibly win this whole thing okay okay all right so you're giving everybody an equal shot i giving like everyone an equal shot have, yeah. yeah we have good teams the rest of all the squads that we have are great. You obviously saw the prize breakdown. Houston Spartans are able to walk away with 7th, 8th. Lore as well with 7th, 8th. Walking away with two grand. Probably not the performance that they want to go into the weekend, but you know at least you get some money on the way out. But for these final six teams, that prize pool can be the reason why you're coming out because you're going out here obviously to make a name for yourself. You want to make a good name for yourself so you have an opportunity to potentially get picked up by a CDL team. But to make your way across the map, across the world, all the way towards Florida, you have an opportunity to walk away with some big, big bag of money. And I think I saw Gunless approaching the station. All right, we yeah. should be getting pretty close to game time. Yeah, I, I saw Dak as well. There's Nikki D getting himself set up. There's Gunless. There's Dak. So, got uh, four minutes. Haven't seen 04. There's 04. Okay, they're all here, but. Yeah, they're going to have to take some time to get themselves together. Uh, we've also heard that there's no vetoes yet at this point. So, yeah, they're going to be a little bit of a rush. And, I mean, hey, you've been there before, Jay. If you yeah. ever feel rushed jumping onto a setup, are you playing your best cod or your worst cod? Honestly, it all depends on the, the feeling of the team. Because when you're rushing to a setup, you're already losing composure. Because you like to be there 15 to 20 minutes early, probably a half an hour early. So, you know, you're getting into that mind state. You're getting into the environment, making sure that you are prepared for the moment. But... Sometimes you just get caught off guard. It can throw you off if you're not able to shoot some bots in the morning. You got to instantly jump into a map. You can't really check all your settings. All those things you have to take into accountability, especially when you're the team showing up late. You don't have any chances. You have to spawn in, and you have to be ready to go. Might get completely checked, but hey, we got to get through the veto process still. At least we know that everyone's here. So we're going to step away for a break, let the players hopefully speed through the vetoes, and we'll be back for map number one of our winner's bracket final when we come back after this.
Welcome back, everybody. We are getting close to just about ready to go here for our upper bracket final matchup. As you kind of can see in the background, the lower quarterfinal matchups are already underway. And, uh, well, the pop-off early. 250-24 is what we kind of saw there from FaZe Black taking down map number one against Team War. Uh, did not see anything reported from the Omit EU game and Boston Academy game going on on the other side. But, hey, that's what's going on right now. A hot start for FaZe Black. Uh, Team War need to find a way to get themselves back in the mix. That's much as for sure. That's the hottest start I've ever seen. We're talking yeah. about Team War. Those guys are not pushovers. A lot of former CDL players, and you're coming out here getting absolutely slammed in game number one. <laughs> you're getting chirped across the stage. Everything is happening for FaZe Black, and that's the way you want to start your tournament. Obviously, you lose yesterday to Lord Gold, but 250 to 24. My God. Yeah. Lord have mercy, Alan. Yeah, load in, please. Load in. Uh, speaking <laughs> of loading in, please, Lore Gaming uh, Gold is or, is here, as you guys probably could tell by based on the cameras. The vetoes are done. So here's a look at the map set for this particular upper bracket final. And, uh, well, it's kind of a little bit of a run back in a number of ways for 5 Media because we saw them play the sub base hard point in their map number one yesterday. Uh, the Rio hard point is also in the mix, still there for map number four, which was part of their series versus Boston Academy. And then you've got the Search and Destroy playing first on Rio and then potentially on High Rise with Karachi could control in the middle uh any, any thoughts from you jay just in terms of how this map series layout may favor or maybe not favor one team or the other i love the sub base right off the river for five media obviously if it ain't broke don't fix it you were able to beat the hell out of boston academy yesterday on that map so you're getting it to start off this series to keep that momentum going and in the real search and destroy i'm really excited about that one because that's where we can see oh four with that smg with that mcw in hand try to make plays because that's what he's been doing so far throughout this entire season whenever i'm watching him he's taking over an snd so i'm excited to see that real search and destroy in game two but i think the deciding factor is going to be that karachi control man because it always simply comes down to the control for Lore, they're always great when you're talking about getting a clean four to three dead in certain situations because they can instantly push over. But we saw the aggression that five media were able to play with yesterday. So Karachi might simply come down to whoever can walk away with the majority of the attack around. So I really like yeah. the massive most for both of these teams. All right, fair enough. I mean, again, it's one of those things that's going to be hard for us to put a finger on what exactly Lord Gaming prefer, simply due to the fact that this is a pretty new roster. But yeah. there are definitely some things that we can insinuate based on who's on that roster uh, without question. And, you know, it is one of those things starting off in a sub base. Look, we saw it yesterday from 5 Media. They were all over the map playing super quick, super fast, and it caught Boston Academy completely off guard. So now you're dealing with a team that, let's just assume they played at the same level they did last night. Now you got Lord Gaming who have not been able to shoot anything more than in the firing range. You know, how do you get ready to go against yeah. a five team that was absolutely destroying? And you can see the thumbs up across the screen. So it looks like we're about ready to load in here, Jet. Yeah, and the thing that's scary is that they're playing a map in sub base right off the rip where it's very, very punishing. If you're not if your gun is not warm, you're not losing I mean, you're not winning a majority of those insane gunfights, putting yourself in those power positions. A map like Subbase can get away from you really quickly because this is one of the hard points that I think throughout this entire game that we have where every single hill has a potential to be chained. We're talking sure. about you can get trapped over towards the P1, P2 chain where you're spawning over George Warehouse. All right, now you're going to make – now you're going to – cut that one off you're gonna play p3 but then if you get pushed out instantly lose those gunfights now you're spawning all the way across the map you can just get put in such a headlock on a map like sub base and i'm really hope that lord gold like you said showing up late we're able to at least warm up mentally for this series uh, well may have had some differences in which side teams prefer to be on so we'll be a little bit debated there by the cinematic fly through get ready <laughs> to go here for map number one again um yeah it, it's Look, we can sit here and split this, you know, a million different ways, but I think overall, kind of going back to the question you asked before the break, like who's going to win today? I think whoever is just ready to go flat out yeah. from, day, from minute number one. Um, and that's not like a, a push or a play off of the fact that Lord Gaming was not ready to go until 30 minutes after they were supposed to start this match. But it, it is one of those situations that, you know, we often saw it. And actually, there was a lot of words about like the Boston event as well with, Grand Finals being played on main stage, they had to start super, super early, and a number of the yeah. teams like Houston Spartans and Syndicate just were not ready to go uh, versus the lore gaming team that was in the Grand Finals that then, which was now the Lagliners team. So mm -hmm. there is something to be said about just being ready to go and playing your best COD without really having the chance to sit there and, you know, warm up at your own leisure. Like, the, for everybody, it's been that case. So, yeah, it'll be... I think whoever is just ready to go for minute one here today is going to be 
probably who ends up raising. Well, there's no. I don't think there's a trophy, but who comes up with forty thousand dollars richer or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Five media clan. They're probably gonna look like the team to do so because they got that Mamba mentality. They were here at eight a.m. They were ready to go. They are not waiting for anyone else to show up. They're more focused on their game. So. Now we're going to jump into this game, number one. Sub-base, HP, Lord Gold starting on the preferred side. But you saw five media yesterday. Their break off, two subs right through comp so they can instantly get the P1. Indeed the case. Okay, let's see what kind of Lord Gaming Gold we get today. Zero four. 4 he had been, I would say, one of the more exciting players to watch starting things off from Season 1 of the Challengers League in North America. Kind of came out of nowhere, like you had mentioned earlier in our little pre-show. Sukri around the back, able to find him for free, but how about it? Lord Gaming, three for one in the opening exchange, and they're going to continue to soak up time here in the first hill. Yeah, this is good stuff from Lord Gold. You're already withstanding the pressure that was 5 Media were trying to do. He's had a couple players push out through the P5 side, only one player pushing up through Water Street, but they found all the kills. So now they're soaking up a lot of this P1 time, and 5 Media are just playing from the back foot. We have to try to flip these spawns, and you have to get past 04, who already is top warehouse. His teammates are finding kills around the map, even a team kill from Red Core. Not the start if you if, that you wanted if you're 5 Media. Yeah, and I will say, you know, we kind of really praised 5 Media Clan and their ability to play around the map yesterday versus Boston Academy. One downside to them in the first rotation of hard points was Yako. He was like 3 and like 18. Yeah. Now an 0 and 5 start through one hill. That is not the pacing that you're going to want out of your player that's really running the only SMG throughout the majority of this map. So first 60 points tallied quickly for Lore. Around the back comes the play from Yako. Lore Gaming just trying to hold on towards the proximal spawns, but pressure is in. And 5 Media Clan are all about trying to isolate this player in the back. Yeah, this was a 3v4, though, so you have to make this one count. If you are 5 Media, they're able to find two, but it's still classic. In the hill, finessing around the tractor, gets oh, it man. done with the Renetti, and keeps the spawns for low goal towards the back end. This final 20 is going to be theirs. This is a perfect start to sub eight HP. It's going to be like 100 to 1 at the end of this HP, and now off the rotation, 04 finds a double through Top Snow. Potential spawn outs for 5 Media. Nope, everyone's still going to be here. So there's a lot more 04 has to try to get done to find this break. Wow, good finesse though. Finds himself into the office. No one has any idea he's here. Super tagged up heavily. Going to get chased down by 04, and why not? 1 HP, no worries at all. The kill comes through. Sukri in the corner oh! also dealt with. Wow, absolutely smoking him. It's 0-4. One and eight start for Yako. This guy needs to wake the heck up. All right, there it is. He was able to get his second on the board, but the break comes in instantly for lower gold. Five media have not woken up yet on this map number one. They are just getting chained and chained again. That's now three hills in a row where lower gold set themselves up properly to either rotate early or find the break. Now with 25 seconds left on P3, 5 Media are going to try to contest this. Bruh. You don't want to continuously be down the way that you are. But you have to be able to make up for it at P4. And look, they're already letting people buy. Dak makes himself behind enemy lines. Dude, 0-4 is just him, huh? I mean, 9-4, and four, 3 in a row. The, one of the only remaining players over the top of that previous hard point. And he's the one that kind of creates the separation for his teammates to come off spawn and find success. Yako. Finally, able to get himself something to speak of. Wins the spawns here for 5 Media Clan, and with that, the Spanish can get inside the hard point and start finally getting some time. Yeah, they need this time, man. They need to have a response here at full 60 to even build some momentum going into this game. But you can already see Lord Go taking a lot of map control. You have players pushing around the back. A water route coming in from 04. They're just trying to find a time or at least an opening with one kill. 04 is just waiting for his teammates to work around the back end. It's going to be Yako with the reads. Snaps onto gunless. Eventually, 04 strikes. He gets nothing. So, 5 media able to hold on to this P4 for some much seated time of full 60 in the response. Okay. Finally, it feels like we're playing a game of hard point. <laughs> 126. It's going to be a two of right around the 60 point threshold here for 5 media clan. No real efforts here for Lord Gaming. To make a play for the old time and why would you especially with the setup they've got currently around p5 I and mean, they got both sets of high ground essentially covered sukri the only one to really sneak through and wait a second he is in a really cheeky spot to get the player out of the hard point if <laughs> he's not red which apparently gunless is able to see maybe a barrel or something but they get the read on it and lord gaming will find themselves the early time yeah, and they already were able to flip the spawn. So now Redcore has to try to get something done from top three. He finds that kill onto Classic. Now it's time to pounce onto the hill. And if you, if you can earn the cruise missile even better, he's able to find the freebie for the six. They're able to flip the spawns as well. So the 40 seconds here at this P5 is much needed for five meters to get right back into this game. 
And Lorco, they know. They cannot approach over towards the warehouse side. We have to try to push through middle. Have to try to push through comms. And they have not found any success finding any kills through the middle of the map. Yeah, and Yako has had himself a better last two hard points, but this guy on screen was unbelievable yesterday. Super was a dominant force alongside Renko. Good shot! And wow, okay. So I say maybe just need him to start to lock in a little bit, and shots like that will definitely help. Yako try to get some separation over through the bottom side of servers. Not going to work out. So the scrap time goes the way of five media climb, and that's a very successful two straight hard points for five to get back into this game. Yeah, this is perfect place from five media. Now you just have to get them off of these people one time. Potential cruise missile going to come on in when you're dropping a couple players around in the middle of the map. And now those spawns flip. You cannot allow this game to get away from you. Yako's going to invest that dead silence. Get some great timing at least onto the first. Gets more info onto the second. But this is where your teammates have to be able to find a couple kills through bottom comms. Dak is able to find one super there for the trade. So still lower gaming, finessing around the old hill. But 5 Media get the break. Really clean shots from 0-4. Has one more that dropped out of the top side at servers. But... Not able to get the better of Super, who's now on three in a row. So, again, just when you start to need the Spanish players that were really pivotal towards their cause yesterday to wake up, they surely have. 9 and 14 for Yako, now up to 9 and 12 for Super. Rencor still double positive. And with this, we're down to within 60 points after a 128 to 1 initial score. So, big bounce back here for 5 Media. And now, all of a sudden, some efforts being made over towards P2. And this is going to be the deciding factor of the game. If my video don't get the break, you allow Lore go to walk away with the majority this time. You're going to basically call a game if you are Lore. So five media have to try to figure out how we're going to make our way in, but they are not finding any kills. You get blessed with the back spawn, but Classic is able to read it as well. So five media all spawning over towards the warehouse side. Gunless in the perfect position to cut them off. And this is not the way you wanted this P2 to go. Because Lore Gold, they're going to be able to breach that 200 point mark. Uh, Pierce is frying. It's one of those things you see him in this position up top at Warehouse. You know he's going to be good for a handful. Now on three in a row. Tries to take down Super at low HP. Not going to work out. But the extra 20 seconds at the end of this hard point likely going to be conceded. Yako tried to give it maybe one last look. But nothing to be found there in any form. So over the 200 point mark go Lore Gaming. And the last two hard points for five between Hill 4 and Hill 5 that looked so good for them. Is immediately countered by a full 60 here at P2. And 5 media, they better have a better game plan for that cruise missile. Because I think that P2 is something that you definitely have to invest that in. Because you can't give up all that time. Because if you get broken here at P3, they're basically going to call GG. And 04 yeah. off the rotation is able to find a freebie onto Yako. He's not going to spawn all the way across the map. He's had the numbers advantage through the backside. You have to try to ice up if you are 5 media. They're finding a couple of kills. And they're also able to control the spawns as well. So it's a 2v3 still for this time. Super up top. Trust that his teammates will clean things up around the back of the hard point, and that trust may not have been earned. It's just super last one left is 4 once again. A double from the back side of the hill. And now as he gets Man. on to five in a row, like you already called here, Jay, this last 20 seconds essentially calls game. So five media have to flood forward from this. And by forward, I mean from the high ground. Classic, stunned down at his feet, steps away, tries to finesse a touch, and the help is there to follow up. One more player inside the hard point. The pistol gets it done in the last 10 seconds. Likely good for Lore Gaming. And you still have the backspots if you're five media. The next two players who are already out oh have to my. clutch on up. But 04 again finds another double. That's now eight in a row. This guy said, I'm showing up late, but I'm still going to be on point. 24 and 11. Here comes the cruise missile. Finally, five media are going to invest it. But at this point, it might be too late. Yeah, you have to get the player out of the spawn here. And it, wow, oh, man. From bad to worse that quickly. In the hill go lore gaming. And 04 says, I'm going to call a game right here. Going to transmit all the information on where 5 Media is trying to set up this hit from. And, I mean, they may not even get to the hard point in time. 0-4. Oh, my gosh. If he, if he gets that kill off the tablet, that would have been a mental boon for 5 Media Clan. May not make much of a difference in the long run. Classic just trying to wiggle his way around the hard point. Yako, you got to contest, brother. Like, just get into the hill. What are we doing? 5 Media Clan looking like a totally different squad in all the worst ways. And Lord Gaming still trying to wake up. They really don't even show any energy there. It's just business as usual. <laughs> yeah, they just showed up and were ready to go. I said, all right, we made it here on one week of practice. We're just going to continue to do what we do, and that's play our game. But on the back of 04, who had an absolute takeover in map number one, that's exactly how you want to start. You show up late, but you still get the job done. You walk away with the opening HP. And if you're 5 Media, 
that one definitely catches you off guard. They had a bunch of opportunities to get themselves back into the game. I know it was a slow start, basically 100 to 1, but you answered back with a great P3, a contested P4, and a great P5 to only be down 40. Then you go into the P1, you already earned yourself a cruise missile, and then at the P2, you're down 40 points. You decide not to invest it. I think if you're Rancor, you're definitely going to go back and watch that because you can't allow them to walk away with a majority of that P2 time and then instantly break you at P3 because that cruise missile is more valuable yeah. at P2. You can't let the game get away from you, but since you decided to invest it at P4, you get nothing to connect on that side, and then you're already down a million. You, <laughs> that's not the way you want to come out and play your opening HP if you are 5 media, but what an answer right there from Lore, more specifically at a 4 That's an oh, MVP yeah. performance, man. 25 and 13 with a minute 40 in the hill. Yeah, that's, that's Mr. Do-It-All. <laughs> that's the cod equivalent of a triple-double right there, like yeah, flat man. out. Wow. Okay. So an explosive start for Lord Gold, and <laughs> it was kind of funny because looking at the cams, yeah, just a couple of fist bumps, you know, just make sure that, you know, the muscles are loose, <laughs> make sure the hey. eyes are functioning still. And, still tired, you know, Alan. To... <laughs> still tired. You're still yawning probably a bit. <laughs> yeah, not to play with it too much, but it's not the energy that we're seeing out of Boston Academy, FaZe Clan Black, <laughs> Team War, who just won the Search and Destroy map number two, by the way, so... Hey, yeah, they might just be next level with it, Alan, you know? I you show know. up tired and you're just slamming, you know? Everybody might be a little twisted, but calm, cool, and collected is what Lord Gold came out on map number one with. Unreal stuff, man. Wow. Okay. So that gets rid of map number one, a map that we, again, have always framed up, at least we had to this point, to be five media clan looking really clean and polished on it. That goes awry, and now a Rio Search and Destroy comes into the mix. We haven't seen a lot of Rio Search. Uh, yeah. We saw none of it yesterday, actually, here in Challengers. Uh, it didn't see much of it, I would say, uh, across kind of the elite season as well. Maybe a couple of teams here and there, but largely speaking, it's kind of been one of the auto vetoes for one team or the other. So Rio Search is up, and then Karachi Control, as we kind of framed up from before, still waiting for us at map number three. And I'll say this first and foremost, Yako can't have a bad search here. He just has to be no. much more on it. Oh, yeah, they have to be on point. You're down 0-1. You got steamrolled throughout that map number one, so you have to be able to make up for it in this Rio Search and Destroy, or all momentum is going to go in favor of Lore. So I think for a map like Rio, we usually expect always fast plays, always fast rounds and all that good stuff. But I feel like the team that is able to slow down the game the most on Rio usually walk away with success. I'm sure. talking about the CDL now where we're looking at Toronto Ultra versus Atlanta Phase. That map, I went back and watched it, that was a 25-minute Rio S&D. That's insane stuff. You only yeah. see that on maps like Invasion or maps like Miami from back in the day. Whenever the game is slowed down on such a small map, it makes it a little bit more chaotic. So I feel like if you are lower gold and you're already calm, cool, and collected after map number one, you continue to do that in map number two because five media might think on a map like Rio, we got to be super fast, and that could be the game plan that cost them. Okay. See so what the mentalities will be for both these two squads. And you can't talk about a team that Classic's on without talking about Classic and Search and Destroy. Oh, Always yeah. Always <laughs> been one of those guys. Guy figures and it out all the time, Alan. Absolutely. And the thing about it is, like, it's interesting because that has largely always been the narrative that kind of surrounds Classic. But I'll tell you, the years, or maybe even just the events, that he looks good in Hardpoint. Again, it's like championship caliber, caliber type of gameplay that we often see from the squad. So, see what we get here in the search. First blood good for 5B Decline, just by way of nades over the middle of the map, and that will slow down this lore approach, which was pretty uh, intent on trying to play towards Ooh. B, and well, 04 says we're not done here yet. No, oh, that's a good play from 04. It's at least even up the numbers, making it 3v3. I didn't really like the initial break off because you have no trophy system to attack through top mid. So you know those attacks are going to rain over the top, but you even up the numbers, you're able to relocate over towards A, get the free bomb plant. Now it's a 3v3. I mean, this is more than free. I mean, 5 Media have no idea on what this post plant even remotely looks like. So they're going to have to double hit through boxes, check every corner, and then hope they can figure things out as they make their approach towards the site. Gunless does get seen. Classic, top of the bomb site. No worries there to get the first. And, I mean, this Hello. is just a lineup. Like, <laughs> no information at all on that post plant. What are we talking about? Yeah, I don't know what the hell 5 Media are doing. Like, you're gaining no info over towards bridge side. You're not getting anything through top mid, and no one is scouting over towards A. You gave up that bomb plant, and you three attack through boxes. That's the most difficult thing to do. No one on the flank, yeah. no one going back through your spawn. Like, that's one of those rounds where you're going to look at it and just be like, what the hell are we doing? First round goes to Lore. After first blood as well, mind you. The fact yeah. that they had no information at all at A. And what was a 4v3 setup? It's kind of kind of crazy to think about. So... Dak didn't get a chance to play round number one, but the rest of his team sure did. 
And now it's on to what 5BD want to do on their offense. Three man hit over towards A immediately with a quick push forward from Yako. Stuns and smokes down. Trophy to supply a little bit of extra support. And Yako will not immediately plant here. Second trophy gets placed as well. So that should definitely be enough for the plant to come through. But off the flank, Dak gets one. And this post plant's going to be stretched now. Yeah, that just can't happen if you're Sucre. You're the island player. You got to play slow on that deep pinch and allow that bomb to go down before you decide to make a play. But Lord go knowing that the, now they have multiple angles of attack on how they want to breach on in. I don't know what Gunless is doing watching boxes, but everyone else from Lord Gold is working their way through the pinch. 04 is able to find a trade onto Rencor, so now it's a 3v2. Yeah, they should have already seen Super. So, yeah, this is very easy isolation. Last player left is over towards Garage. That's too easy. Yeah. I... I it just, I, I, I'm confused on how five media just are allowing one side of the map just to be completely overwhelmed. I mean, that time it's a 1v1, sure, but, I mean, that just forcibly stretches out your post plant so much. Yeah, like, when you're getting full control of that A site, like, you have everything. You have a garage, you have boxes, you have your flank, and then you also had a player who was island, islanding over toward the opposing side of the map. It just falls into the hands of Sucre. You cannot die in that position. You have to hold down that deep flank, because he could potentially have walked away with a double, but instead he drops, and then Lord go, no, they have all these different angles to approach on that hill, and five media, everyone has to try to clutch up in one-on-one -on -one gunfights, but... With lower gold having the numbers, they just traded effectively, secured the second round. Right back to the attack they go. They take top mid control again. Yeah, Dak getting a little bit of information that there are defenders nearby. He actually should know that there's two players here. So, Bob's going to get planted. A couple of tags here and there from the side of 5 Media, but that's a free plant. So, now it's down to the 4v4 post plant setup. Classic still playing right on top of the bomb. First blood good for Sucre from the bridge side. Follow-up not going to be fully there from Classic. Lots of damage dallied, but no eliminations. But Dak... The timing of this pinch, unbelievable. Gets the first one for free. Double checks, there's no one on the bomb, but quickly gets traded out. Maybe enough space for Gunless to try to get his way back into the mix, but too far away. And as Yako starts to hold, there's just really no chance that Gunless gets here in time. Yeah, there's no chance that Gunless is able to secure the round, but at least he finds a kill to end it out. Five media strong on that defensive retake. You take bridge control, you find the first blood through Eskies, and then you trade effectively in the 4v2. I thought Dak got some really good timing when he gets past that player through side steps, but once he gets that first kill, he tries to pre-shoot the bomb, and there's too many players on the side of 5 media located through top mid. Finally able to get one on the board, but now you have to be able to read these setups for lower gold because they're playing really patient. If you get a free bomb plant, let's, let's put everybody on the same side of the map. Yeah. Or at least if you're going to watch the flunk, do it from a safer angle to where you're going to get push. Like, a credit kill. Yeah, yeah. Same setup. Almost to a T. This time, though, 0-4 is going to be able to at least take a tally through the windows of the van. And that smoke is deep. It's actually too deep. So, 4 gets a read on everything, saying, well, this is all bait. No one else is here anymore, and here comes Lord Gold on the rotation over to mid. Yeah, they get a perfect read on play call. That 5 media have made the call. But they're just trying to cause some noise. you got a couple players from Lord Gold to rotate off of A, and now this site is wide open. Classic is going to get the info. He's trying to play the timing through Garage. Can he find the first? No, he cannot. Super gets it. And now you have the advantage. 04 trying to play off the cross from boxes with the rival nine. That will not work out. So a little bit of a head fake immediately turned into a commitment back over towards A. Works out for 5 Media Clan. Post plant much more stable this time around. And for oh, Lord Gaming, gonna they're going to have to play this all from Garage side. Lots of corners to check. First one. Wow. I mean, what? Super just got melted. Two bullets from 04. So now you got a 3v3 from the front. Yako's still kind of behind the play, so to speak. Just comes down to who makes next contact. Yeah, but it falls into the hands of two players from Lore. Gunless is thinking someone is going to go for the pinch. Dak is going to try to stick the defuse. Not what you want to do in this situation. Now, with only 14 seconds left, Lore Gold are not going to have an opportunity unless 5 Media didn't check the bomb. But I think that's just a situation where lower gold, you have a lot of map control. You have players working on the pitch, but everyone decides to conga line back to your spawn. You're able to make it a 3v3, but at that point, positioning now known. All the information is now gained for five media. You can give up that flank. All you have to do is watch boxes and watch lower garage, and the round is going to be yours. But what a round right there at Allure to draw them away from a site, go back to it, get the bomb down, find the first plug, and tie the game up at two. Yeah. Much more stable, just flat yeah. out. And I like the idea. Hey, we kind of show force over towards A. I don't know if they realize that O4 kind of called them on the rotation back, but it's kind of a little bit of a head fake saying, well, we're going to go B. Never mind. No, we're not. 
And now for the first time, Lord Gaming gonna play outside this B site. Super was the one kind of over towards Bridge initially. Does he get a read on this? Oh no, he gets caught placing a trophy. And then the follow-up, Yako, good for the trade. We stay 3v3, 04 also, Tad really can't commit to this play and so he'll back out. Yeah, it's a 3v3. Lord Gold showed a different look on this attacking round. They said, five meter, you've been taking bridge from us every single time. This time we're gonna smoke it, find the first blood. But the trade instantly comes on in. Gunless though, in the perfect position. Put his team back in the advantage, in the 3v2 now. As that bomb is starting to rotate towards A, and 5 Media not going to get a read on this. And already the no. flank coming in from Classic. It's now a 1v3 for Yako. Yeah, Rancor is just completely caught. Heck of a route from Classic, though, to be fair. And Yako's going to have to deal with this, and he will not get the timing on it. Wow. Okay. Very peculiar round kind of playing on the outskirts. Never even looked at the middle of the map where Lord Gaming, but worked out for them really nicely. And I think it all starts with the fact that you get that first pick on the Super in the corner while he's unfortunately placing a trophy. Yeah, because that's what 5 Media have been dominating on their defense. Every single time they're sending multiple players over towards the bridge side. But Lord Gold, they said this time, we're going to use our smoke grenade. We're going to send 04 in for the first blood. <laughs> and take bridge control and force a couple players from 5 Media to rotate off their defensive setup. Then pick them apart one by one as Lord Gold take advantage again in the search and destroy. Back to the defensive side they go. And 5 Media are going to show a different look this time around on the attack. Everyone over towards the bridge side. Oh, big first contact over towards Bridgeside. Yako able to take it. Perfect. Four Semtex right around the back with a couple of extra tags from Rival 9. Trades it up and then a follow-up gunfight. Trying to come through here. Oh, four allowed to still stay on top of the couches, but Yako just fading him out a little while longer. Back and forth we go into a very early 1v1 with 60 seconds of the clock. Oh, it's a lot of time for both of these players to just work around the map. Bomb is going to be down towards top bridge, so Rencar going to hit the deep route. Let's try to catch the timing onto Classic, but he's playing this safe. Setting up his screen to watch Deep Pinch. Also watching the middle of the map. He's going to be able to spot him. Here comes the stun. It's not going to be able to connect, so got to disengage. Yeah. Still plenty of time to work through this from both sides' perspectives. Rancor waiting to see maybe if he can catch him on a route around the back. That will not happen. And he will be the one with the onus to have to make a play first. There's the check. Bomb was not picked up, by the way. Pushed off it a little bit too far out. Classic will reposition. Rancor looking to play for the blood. And this is going to take extra time. This is all going to just feed right into Classic's hands here. Rancor is going to have to play for B. Surely Classic will get the read that this is not an A play. So he may be able to catch him on plant, but the timing just a little bit off. So the plant comes through. 1v1 now. Established with just 40 seconds on the clock. And Classic, oh, oh no! Slides right past him. Rancor like pro to the corner, never scouted out. Yeah, that's a <laughs> very, very timing 1v1 the whole time. Because Classic, once he gets that info, he's not towards A. He's just a little bit late. All of the rotation back to B. Not able to spot Rancor as he gets that bomb down on the exit. Then plays a perfect position to allow Classic to run right by him. And 5 Media here able to secure the round with all lot of pressure up through the bridge. A one-minute 1v1 it comes all the way down to the wire. And Rancor is able to secure it. So all tied up at 3. Five media back on the defensive side. Lord Gold back on the attack. They've been taking top mid every single time. They're probably going to go back to what works. Stuns over the side. Oh, actually only connects on the half the teammates that were there. So Dak will still push through. Find first blood on Yako. Super has to bail out. And with that, Lore, as they often have to this point, will just go for the quick plant. No worries here. Ooh. Oh, quick plant, but Sucre with a big shot onto Gunless. At least takes him down. Back there for the trade. And now both five media players are working their way around the deep pitch with Classic in the perfect corners, at least going to be able to get a freebie onto one. It makes it a 1v3. Rancor caught out. Information now known. Fighting against the clock as well here in this 1v3. 20 seconds to go. Double stairs hit here for Lore Gold, and that'll do it. Yeah, no worries whatsoever. Smoke tried to make a mess of it, but doesn't quite get there in time, so... Advantage now back to Lord Gaming, getting later and later into the search and destroy. It's just one of those things. It's like their offense is just so quick to get the bomb down. That's causing yeah. issues right now. They're just taking top mid control, Alan. Like every yeah. single round in their attacking rounds, they're taking top mid aggressively with those SMGs, and they're finding multiple first bloods. At that point, you know that that's the most aggressive player up. No one else is going to challenge in demand disadvantage, so we can put the bomb down instantly and then just play our numbers to perfection. Lord Gold on the attack now. Per perfect on that side of the round. 
But now back to the defensive side they go. And 5 Mini have thrown a different couple of looks at it. But they're going back to Old Reliable. 3 over towards A. Sucre being the island play on the right side. Oh, look at this angle. <laughs> oh, 4 for the first oh. time. This sits and I'm deep out. in towards Garage. Now Dak is saying, let's just run at these guys. Measured aggression, though. Backs off. Classic couple extra tags. 04 now stepping forward. And 5 Media, they're just stuck, man. They don't know if anyone's on the flank. And look at Lord Gold. They're like, let's just run it down at these guys. All four members stacked up. Gunless is nade. We'll tag them. The final shot's perfect over the top. Whoa, quick round. That's just what 04 does, man. He's the S&D mastermind for this Lord Gold. Puts himself in a nice little spot in towards the garage. Finds the opening, too. And at that point, you get all the info. You rally the troops up. You play your numbers advantage. Everyone goes for the chow. And he's able to find his third on the round. Now puts Lord Gold at match point. And they're back on the attacking side. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're going right yeah, back yeah. to top mid. Five meter, you better be ready for. Okay. Do or die time here for five media. Need three in a row. Nades. Lots of nades. Over the top. And wait a second. This trophy's not down in time. But doesn't make a difference. Dak just runs right through all of it. They say cool guys don't look at explosions, and Dak is trying to be pretty cool right now. Back they blow up, things nothing up. Nothing really gone through it, though. They blow things up, and they walk away sometimes, you know? <laughs> and that's going to be a classic find in the first blood onto Rencor. The only player playing over today. So now you can get this bomb down for free. The rest of five media have to now commit on this flank, and they have to do it quickly before Lord Gold put themselves in that setup. Yeah, Gunless is going to play gate here. He should at least read one, if not multiple. Here's the check. There's the call that there are two players off the flank. The only one not known is Sukri. Zero four playing over the top of the hood of the van. Now the information is, should be fully known, unless they didn't count the names. That's the only other issue. But doesn't make a difference. Oh dude. man! Oh four! Did he just take care of all three? Finished on I think five in a row. Unbelievable! This guy is everything right now. He's doing it all, man. Take over in map number one. S and D mastermind in game number two. Multiple three pieces in the final couple of rounds. Lord Gold, they show a blade, but they are on point. Yeah, if you're five media, we got to go take that bathroom break. What the hell is going on? We were here yeah. bright and early, shooting our bots, feeling warm, feeling ready to go. But right now, it's all Lord Gold, man. A team that's been only a squad for one week is now up 2-0 in the winner's finals. One map away from making a dance in that grand finals. Wow. I mean... It's, it's crazy, just one man. of those things, like, and you wouldn't even know that this is like a Sunday of a of a Challengers Open on the other side. Everyone else on the side of Lord Gold is like, all right, what's next? Like, it's taken <laughs> as they come. Twelve and three from 04. Ooh. I mean, he popped off a map number one. It didn't stop here. This guy might be the next coming of I don't even know what Cod Jesus at this point. Dude, he's like. Doing it all. We're talking about a triple double hood map number one. 12 kills, three devs, also three plants. This guy is literally doing it all right now yeah, for Lord yeah. Go. Like, you got to be feeling great, man. You're up 2-0. You show up late, and you're still taking care of business. Now you're going into a control on Karachi where you are full of momentum. 0-4, he's just getting it done with the MCW with that rival nine in hand. That's definitely a player who's building his stock up map after map, man. He's yeah. a good guy. Yeah, I mean, again, it's one of those things. You kind of we, we saw this. Uh, they were team diverse in Challengers Elite, uh, playing with Neum and that crew, and we initially saw them as just like, who is this guy? And I think yeah. you were the only one who actually knew him because you saw him in rank play a handful of yep. times. But slamming Boston, me, dog. He, <laughs> at Boston, it was a top twenty-four finish. They ended up finishing top eight in stage one of the Elite, and now all of a sudden, coming off of a couple of the cups that were just okay. You're looking to get the grand finals and lead the way the whole time? I mean, that's a hell of a way to start a challenger's year, tell you that much. Yeah, without question, this guy is my MVP for this Lord Gold squad. Yeah, for sure. He just makes some next-level plays, man. Every time he's in the clutch, he's always getting it done. The way he plays around the map with that AR in hand, always holding down power positions, finding some insane kills as well. And he's been the deciding factor so far for Lord Gold, being up 2-0. You take a look at the maps and modes again. Obviously, we got the Karachi control, which is guaranteed. But that Rio HP and that high rise SD, you want to try to get there if you're five media. You do not want to come out on a championship Sunday getting 3 0 because that's going to kill all the vibes on that side. Yeah, I'll say. Got to find a way to regain in a big way because if 04 is shooting like this, yesterday I was really anticipating 
seeing what this five media clan could do on Rio, but now I don't know if I want to see them square up against so four of the map. <laughs> yeah. Based on what he's doing right now, he is everything. So Karachi Control coming up next. Like you saw, everyone stepped away for a bit of a bathroom break. So we will head over to a break of our own and jump back in with the Karachi Control right after this. Welcome back there, friends. So far, it has all been lore gold, and I mean that in every sense of the phrase. So, for 5 Media Clan, have to try to put together a bit of a reverse sweep, starting on Karachi Control. I'm my whole shift with me. I've got my boy Study. And, uh, well, while we were on break, a couple of results did come through on our lower quarterfinals matchups. Uh, FaZe Clan Black took the Control versus Team War with a 1v1, apparently, to win. That okay. now puts FaZe Clan back up 2 to 1. And then Amit EU took a 3 2 on Invasion Control to put them now. 2-1 in maps over Breach Academy. So, a little bit of a weird switch up here. I mean, that matchup in particular, like we said, is the top two teams from each of their regions after Season 1 of Challengers Elite. So, I imagine that match is going to be a banger. 
Oh, yeah. Definitely going to be a banger. And it's a good thing for Team War as well to at least respond in that search and destroy after getting blown out in that map yeah. number one. But now you're down 2-1, but your back's against the wall. Have to ice up again in the series. They were pretty sure the last game last night, they were down 2-1 in their series yesterday versus the Spartans, and they were able to clutch up winning two maps in a row to still push on through. So definitely looking at Beans to get activated, start chirping a little bit, get that energy going in that series. But back to this one on the mainstream. Lower gold, up 5, up 2-0. Obviously, 0-4 has been a deciding factor. Oh, I thought we were playing Karachi. No, we're going yeah. to high rise. Go to high rise. That's fine. Here we go. Gunless over the top at heli. Helicopter is pretty much already blown up, but super. Ooh. All balls from the high ground able to work things forward. And this is, the, again, we saw this team play yesterday on this map. They were so quick at being able to establish a spawn trap. Not the case here yet defensively for 5 Media as Gunless will step on over towards the B zone and stop the clock in a minute, 9 seconds. No, oh, Gunless able to find a kill as well. Also able to get out with his life, give his team an opportunity to push all. Now he's also able to find a double through underground. So he's just trying to finesse long enough for his teammates to put pressure over towards B. Super with a big one-on-one on 0-4, -on -one on but still where is Gunless? Finally, Super is able to take him down, but Dak is able to get on that B point. First segment about to be complete. Yep. Ooh, doesn't oh, doesn't quite get fully locked, though. Semtex takes him out of the point, but the kills that come through should surely allow the M Classic to step on. Good prediction on Sukri's position. And now it's just down to taking care of Yako, and there should be a bit of a stack here. Yeah, two players already on. 04 trying to step up to see if he can catch anyone across the map. The trophy system actually dealing quite a bit of damage to him sitting on this position. And as 5 Media get out of spawn, they do find a handful of kills, a lot of a chance to contest one more time. Sukri, it oh. does double down with a okay. little extra. How about that to get you all fueled up? Yeah, that's exactly what you need. A little smack talk in game, get the blood flowing, and say, like, we are way better than these guys. Let's start to turn up, but it's still Lord Gold on the point. Currently in the lives remaining, up by two. And they're applying a lot of pressure over towards A. But here comes the flank from Yako. You're going to invest a dead silence. They're not going to know where you're coming from. He's able to line up a double. Does he read the play on the top of the propane, though? Because it's still 0-4 here trying to contest. Wow. Okay. This feels a little bit more like it if you're a 5 Media Clan fan. Definitely more reminiscent of yesterday than what we saw in the first two maps without question. Super. Just trying to gatekeep oh. whatever he can on the Lord Gaming coming from spawn, but not fully going to work out. And even on top of that, good shots from Dak. Gets a little bit of a tag in towards Sukri down low in the pit. So on the zone they go. Triple stacked up. Does Rancor give us a go? Tries to, but the point is already confirmed. And now a couple of kills come through on the exit. And Lore Gaming, they may be able to stretch this into a quick transition to A. Oh, this is perfect for Lore. And Classic was able to get the info onto the player in the back of the spawn. So it's going to turn into a one-on-one -on -one between 0-4. But he got Huge. the info in his back pocket. Able to eliminate that player who was trying to be a nuisance behind enemy lines. And now Lord Gold have taken advantage in the lives remaining. All of five media trapped in their spawn besides one player playing towards low heli. But you already have Dak with that at rival nine being super aggressive. And this might be enough for Lord Gold to put a game clock on that pause. Yeah, sure could. Eight to five as well. Lives becoming an issue here for five media. And Dak is still making sure no one comes out of spawn anywhere near safely. First tick done. Second one on the way. And keep in mind, you can win by kills, but the extra tip progression could also be massive for them. I don't think they get the second tick fully. It was close, but regardless, Lord Gaming steal away a huge offensive round right at the last second, essentially. That's the biggest offensive round to take, man, because that's the first round of the map where you don't have any trophy systems. You're somehow, some way able to walk away with the attack. You don't get it done in the segments, so you will put yourself up by four. But just winning attacks on control on every map besides Garachi is basically impossible. They get it done in round number one. Now you're going to the defensive end, but you could potentially put them in the trap nice and early, earn some cruise missiles to make your game easier going forward. But now you have to respond if you are five media. You got to yeah. make up in the segments and potentially make up on the attacking round because you don't have a lot of success on that attacking side on a map like High Rise. No, not often, but we can at least say yesterday they did look particularly good on it. Yeah. That's a whole day ago, feels like. Zukri up top, denied. Super, Rancor from a little bit further range to provide enough eliminations to at least keep things neutral for now. Super, maybe a chance to do some more work over towards A, but doesn't want to give up his position over towards this outside portion at blue. Classic up top just trying to scout what he can. Somehow didn't get finished right there. Uh, it kind of felt like maybe someone didn't finish their food. <laughs> it looked like he should have been dead to rights, but regardless, the kills come through, and now five media are all over the A zone. Yeah, they find three in defeat, so now a bunch of players coming off the respawn. Super going to put himself in a business to at least find the first. 
Everyone else from Lord Gold have to ice up, use your attacks, try to get them off the B point, and don't allow Super to be a nuisance behind enemy lines. The trade does come in. Now you can eliminate those players in the back of your spawn and start to contest over towards B. Dak with the second. Gunless finds a double. Now all the five media off the reset. Yep, Dak will also get almost all of this second tick fully depleted. Gunless making sure no reinforcements can come over by way of this elevator alley. And 04 kind of trying to do the same thing over towards A, but gets surprised here. A little double hit comes out from 5 Media Clan. A lot of lore were so focused on towards B that now you got, uh oh, progress being made on both zones at the same time. Second thing of progress done, third on the way at A. And simultaneously speaking, 5 Media had kind of reestablished some progress over on the B zone, but the cleanup kills do come through. So it's a three life advantage for 5 Media, but they're working out a spawn again. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure they're all tied up in segments as well. So now if you are Lord Gold, you have to try to trap him in. You don't want to lose an attacking round. A team kill is not going to help, but at least you still got a couple players pushed up towards this right street side. Big gunfight on our hands. Super is able to take down Dak. Now there's an opening for 5 Media to push that through that left window. Yako taken down towards the A zone. Gunless up top. Yeah, good help from 04 across the map as well again. So this is where Lord Gold can really start to establish that defensive line of scrimmage right down the middle of the map with some good elevation to play around. 04, I don't know, you and I are both looking at the peak outlines, but he's focused on what's coming across, so he's going to be challenged up top through Hellion. This guy doesn't lose gunfights, man. Oh my goodness, now four in a row. Sees one climbing over the top of the railing, but can't finish off the elimination. Gunless now, he has to be activated, and he will only get one before being traded, but Classic right there to secure his own trade. So back and forth we go. 40 seconds on the clock, 8v6. And this might be back-to-back -back rounds where it just simply comes down to the lives remaining. If you are low gold, you need a two to three dead clean, so you can put them in a little bit of a trap. Rancor gonna assist you, at least with the team kill, but Dak now gets it to the point. He's thinking someone is gonna be on it. No one there. So they're able to pause that game clock. Second segment is about to come in, and there's only two lives left for Lord Gold. Yeah. What a great first round it was on the attack. They are responding. They're not trying to give that third segment. Let's jump off the map. And there at least gets completed five for five media. So they should be up by one. But yep. if you are Lord Gold, that's one you definitely want back. You cannot lose defenses on high rise. They just couldn't get it clean two to three dead at the same Agreed. time to put them in a trap. Agreed. And to be fair, that, you know, is a lot of credit to 5 Media because, like we kind of saw there, as soon as the A zone was captured, they're not just saying, okay, A is done, we're just going to go straight to B. They still like to get a player deep on that long over extension just to try to give Lord Gaming something else to think about. And it kind of keeps them from moving across the map rapidly. I mean, the furthest they got was top helipad, essentially. And then Gunless there at the end through the offensive side at the underground pit, but not much else to speak of in terms of defensive dominance. So, like you mentioned, 5 BD Clan do have a one-tick progression advantage. Lore Gaming have Dak deep and around, but Yako's seen this. Doesn't matter. <laughs> wow, clean shots. Super does confirm the trade, but 0-4 gets on the hard for the hard in the zone. And, well, can't quite win the gunfight versus Sukri, so things will continue to tally up as Classic is the last one standing at A, and as he gets taken down, now it's a two-life advantage for 5 Media defensively. Yeah, Lord Gold now have to figure out which point they want to go to. There's a lot of map control currently in favor of 5 Media. They're winning some great gunfights now. They're starting to get activated. Yakko finds himself on two in a row, but super on four. Lord Gold do not have any segments on the round. You have one player who's pushed out, but everyone else trapped in the spawn. You have to get past these lines of defense, and they just can't find an yeah. opening kill to do so. This is where Super can be a major okay. menace. Five in a row. Sixth for free. There's the cruise missile alert. Gunless trying to trade him out. Uh-oh, tough gunfight. Does at least secure it. Classic on the other side. Has Rencord down to a bullet. No! A lingering trophy system. Takes Classic out of the picture. So Gunless has to step in, stop the clock at 30 seconds. Yeah, first segment is about to be in. Gunless has to win a one-on-one. -on -one. He gets it done. That first segment is going to be complete. And this might be one of those rounds where 5 Media, you might want to invest Wait. that cruise missile, but one player is going to jump off the map. That goes to a clean four dead. And all of 5 Media now shooting in their spawn. Something has uh, to have gone wrong. What could have possibly happened here? Everyone's moving. So, all right. Not really sure. I mean, everyone was moving. I mean, even the yeah, admins in here like, what happened? I have no idea. When we get a note on what's going on, you guys will get it as well. As you come to a stand, obviously going to be discussing with the ref. Going to figure out what went wrong, but 
At least guarantee the game is tied up at one. So we'll see what the final call is. I'm on pins and needles right here. Because it looks like everyone's leaning back into their monitors like they're going to play this round out. What? What the hell just happened? Were they trying to get rid of their remaining lives before they could capture the zone? Dude. There's no way, like... <laughs> there's no... I, I don't understand that. I don't understand oh, it. They're just whoa? right back into the game, so... Now, all of a sudden, they're down to one. We'll get the final answer of what actually happened later on, but Lord Gold find themselves up to one, back on the defensive side, walking away with two attacks somehow, but now you just have to stay strong on defense to walk away with a 3-0. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. I don't know, Alan. I don't it's know, just man. one of those things that make you go, like, what <laughs> did we just witness? Wow. Okay, five media play. Back on their offense. Clean kills across the board from really both sides. For Lord Gaming defensively, it's good towards B, but five media are now all over the A zone until 04 gets here, and that seems to be the case. As soon as he gets involved, it feels like things start to turn Lord Gaming's way. But I'm not going to lie. I'd be demoralized. <laughs> I would so be what, absolutely dude? demoralized if I'm five media. I'm thinking, like, something went wrong. We're going to have a reset on the round. No, nope, we're going right into the next round like nothing happened. You still have a cruise missile. You're currently down by four lives, and... To win an attacking round, at least two on high rise is basically impossible. Three in the feed for a lower gold. Only 30 seconds left. And, uh, yeah, five media tucking their spawn, man. What the heck just happened in this control? Okay. Cruise missiles are out. Oh, they used the UAV. <laughs> That's what they're oh saying. Oh, my God. Brothers, like, is this the first time we voted in? Like, change your score streaks. Oh, my God. No way. There's no way that's actually it, bro. Like, we should be locked in. We're talking about the <laughs> only streak you can use in this game is the cruise. You have to take everything else off. I think that was what got me a little bit scared yesterday because a lot of these teams had that UAV strap. It's when you're in the heat of the moment, yeah. you have to go from holding your D-pad down, using it to a different direction just to call in the cruise. And then when you're so twisted and so turned mid-game, you accidentally call in the UAV and cost yourself a round. Even yeah. though they're showing life here, they are dominating on this attacking round so far. I don't know what the hell <laughs> just happened. <laughs> this is the craziest rounds of control I've ever seen what in my the life. Hell? And you got to remind us that we oh. have seaside control for a full year. 5v3 situation. Clock still paused. 57 on the clock. Rencor stepping off the zone to get a little bit further forward. Seeing if he can catch a couple of kills out of spawn. Second ticket progress. About to be locked. No more respawns, but the kills come through. Jay, we got a 3v3. Oh, my God. For the series right here, if you are lower gold, somehow, some way, trying to walk away with this defense to close this series out. 40 seconds left. This basically turns into S&D, turns into TDM. You got to play your kills. You cannot afford to drop, but that time is going to play a factor. A classic with a double might have just called game. No way, dude. <laughs> What was this game, bro? Super's still alive, by the way. He can still do this. 1v2, both players isolated. He's got information on both. Dak will step off. Classic, no need to go until Super commits to being on the zone. And he's going to have to commit soon. 10 seconds on the clock. There he goes. It'll pause at 10.2. Now it's just down to hitting this together. Super's got to watch everything all at once, and the kill comes through in the direction he's not watching. And Lore Gaming are just like, all right, cool. No words to be shared. <laughs> Dude, what happened? <laughs> I don't know, Alan. These guys show up late. They somehow walk away with a 3-0. They're getting the opposing team to get so twisted and cracked that they are calling in UAVs and have to give up a round for free. But, wow, I'm not going to lie. I'd be so checked right now if I'm 5 media. We're talking about not playing our best Call of Duty in this series. We're basically shooting ourselves in the foot to even give ourselves a chance on the fight back. But that's going to be Lord Gold moving on to the Grand Finals in Challengers at Miami. With only one week of practice, they are continuously getting it done. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, an interesting way to complete a series, but it completes nonetheless. Lord Gaming into the Grand Finals, they will have the advantage in the best of seven of being able to kind of pick and choose their map selections, especially for the control. You can also see the other stations are starting to get cleaned up a little bit. We were hearing that FaZe Black did 3-1 over Team War, so Team War will finish at the top six position. Uh, I don't know what happened with the Boston Academy in a mid-game. They lost. 
Okay, they lost so, just now. Yeah, 3-1 for EU over Boston Breach Academy as well. So, okay. Those were pretty much simultaneous finishes across the board, which means that we're down to our final four teams. But another absolutely great showing from people that, you we again, we don't normally look at in the roster and say, hey, this guy. Dak, great year last year. Beautiful performance here in map number three, including getting that last elimination. Yeah, 31 kills. Obviously, you walk away with two attacking rounds. You get blessed with a free round as well. So everything was in fruition for this Lore Gold squad. And they just walked away with a dominant series. You show up late. You still got the gunny hot. 0-4 started off the series on fire. Dominates in map number one. Continuously does it in map number two. And then in map number three, you walk away with two attacking rounds. One defense to close out the series in three. So Lord Gold looking great on a championship Sunday. Five media clan have to hit the hard regain, dog. I'm telling you right <laughs> Yo. now, when you lose a series like that, especially with them just basically throwing map number three, you are so damn checked. They better go get some food, go get some new energy drinks, figure out what the hell is going on because this isn't the same team that I saw yesterday. Yeah, totally different level. And it's not even, again, like we talked about this, the individuals, that's one part of it. But these guys are playing some great team Call of Duty yesterday. And that really was not there in a lot of regards. I mean, the one phrase we said was that five media clan were comfortable in every single map versus Boston Academy, which no one had been able to do throughout pretty much the entirety of season one of Challengers Elite, nor it felt like in the bracket until that matchup. But yeah, definitely something you need to kind of reset with. And, you know, maybe it's one of those things like, ah, shoot, guys, sorry, but translate that to Spanish. No. Use the UAV, you know, okay, well, yeah, this series hasn't really gone all that well. Let's just regain, get ourselves ready for whoever we play in the lower finals. But I'll tell you, that's a lot of time off there to kind of have to mentally let that stew, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, they got, a, what, about an hour and a half before yeah, that next series happens. So they have to wait for that loser semis to go down. Then after that, they will have a dance again. Hopefully, they're able to hit the hard regain because that's just unacceptable. That's literally unacceptable. Yeah. The call on the UAV at this point of the tournament on a championship Sunday where you're one game away from making it to that grand finals, that simply cannot happen. Yeah, the, the case. But with that, we are done with our upper bracket final, which means we've got our lower semis to come up next amid EU. We're pulling up against FaZe Clan Black in that matchup on the backside of the break. Don't go far. We'll be right back. Bring your gameplay to the modern era. Boost your connection with exit lag. Enjoy right now all the birthdays promo. Subscribe and happy hunting.
Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Call of Duty Challenges live from Miami. The bracket is upon us and only four teams remain and we'll be saying goodbye to one more in this one. Two story teams, FC Black and Omid EU, have been called the number one of both regions. But which one makes it out of this one, Stud? I have no idea, man, because obviously <laughs> I watched FaZe Black yesterday. They fell short in a bunch of maps. They were down 0-2 versus Lore. They fought back in the control, but they lost both HPs. But I think today's a different story because they came out versus Team War. What was it, 250-24, to 24, Bryce? Oh, yeah. those guys are twisted. They are ready to go. Yeah, that's a, kind of a crazy scoreline for anything this late in the competition. Yeah. <laughs> Team War, I'm sure, have uh, probably got some reason that they got that slow going. It's not really to be expected, but maybe... FC Black just had a really good night's sleep and have come in with all their cylinders firing ready for this tournament. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they're able to bring today. I think one player who I really put a lot of focus on yesterday was Dylan Rex. He didn't have the best performance yesterday versus Lore Gold, and today has to be a different story. So when you look at this FaZe Black roster, they are back-to-back -back cup winners. They are one of the most winning teams that we have in Challengers, if not the most winning team that we have in Challengers, on the back of Brack and XC. Those guys have been able to figure it out. You add Joe Deceives to the roster, who gets dropped from LAT back down to Challengers. He's 30 per poor respawn. And then you also added Dylan Rex to the lineup, who is currently the top AR in Challengers, potentially going to be picked up into the CDL. Didn't have the best performance yesterday, but I'm expecting a lot more out of him today. Yeah, me too as well. And I think uh, this is what we've been talking about realistically CDL is calling for some of these players and they've got to make a name for themselves at yeah. this point and move forward. For me personally, I think Joe Deceive should still be in the CDL. I think he's got the talent to make it. Uh, the only thing that people have really been discussing is difference in play style. Obviously, yeah. the CDL being a bit slower. Joe Deceive seems to thrive in challenges with a very high pressure, high octane gameplay. And that wasn't as evident when he was in the CDL. He had to slow down a little bit. But hey, lessons learned and let's see if we can get back into it. But of course, you have to get through all these teams first because otherwise other names might get to the top. Yeah, and I think if you're Joe Deceives, obviously when he was on LAT, it was just a tough situation to be and the formula wasn't the best they were sitting at like one in 12 in hard points in general and if you're not winning hard points you stand no chance at winning any series so the formula wasn't the best he's the one that ends up getting dropped and he's making the most out of his opportunities in challenges like you said when you have two different play styles you're going from the cdo where everything's a little bit slowed down you can't take all those calculated risks and challenges you can definitely get away with a couple scams <laughs> You certainly can, and obviously that's FC Black. And going up against them, Omit EU. Both of these two teams have found themselves in the lower bracket at this point in the tournament. Still made it a decent way, but Hixie, Mythics, Vodix, and Wee Man will want to go further. They've already outplaced their counterparts from Europe in Team War. Their the, the kind of rivalry has gone through, and otherwise they would have been playing them here. But now they have an opportunity to go even further. Still more European teams actually for them to face if they keep going. But it's been an interesting story for these. Obviously, Hixie infamously came top two at championship last year yeah. and somehow found himself in challenges. Yeah, no, it was tough, man, because obviously Hicksley, he was the reason why Toronto Ultra were able to at least win one championship in the CDL last year. They make that roster change to swap him out for Standy, and it worked out to perfection. And he also ended the year getting second at champs. Obviously, it wasn't the best performance. You got 5 0 You walked away in that series with a 45-minute. Yeah, you don't want that, but now he finds himself on the challenges scene, and I'm pretty sure it was... Hixie on Team War before we got to this tournament. They ended out the Cubs. They added Hixie to the lineup. They booted Real off the roster. And I think Omid EU, since they were our elite EU challengers winners for Stage 1, they're feeling great going into this matchup because it was great plays always from Vortex. He somehow, some way, always figures out how to play at the top. And then alongside Wee, man, those guys have been playing for a long time. But I think the most surprise for me has been the, this Mythics guy. Like, I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've ever seen this guy play, at least this season. And he's been a really an X factor for this Omid squad he certainly has i mean this is kind of the the difficult pill to swallow for omid eu and the, the bias is about to come out here yeah i know yeah these are your guys bryce go ahead let me hear like, it yeah well I, i'll be honest with you it's just a difficult one to take i think if you took the players that we are talking about on omid eu and if they were in north america pulling off the same results they would have been in the cdl some time ago steve Vodex has been bullying challengers for like the last four or five years yep constant wins over and over again and has not been pulled into a roster because people doubt he could be a superstar change wee man is also incredibly talented i think he should have been in there for a while 
he's made big runs at champs in the past with certain teams everybody knows he's a talent in europe and again still not pulled into the cdl or given the chance he should be i think that might change as they do the business here this weekend we manage definitely some a player some people are looking at oh the yeah. same thing with hicksy again you know he was doing the dirty work he dropped a, a, a what a point nine most often yeah but still putting up the skills they they need and it's it's kind of ridiculous i'll be i'll be honest with you i think it's kind of ridiculous it's kind of ridiculous that this much talent isn't recognized you know if if i'm being perfectly honest with you okay and and hopefully that can change sooner rather than later it's it's disappointing to see players of this caliber pull off results do the things that some other players basically build a career off and then still not get given the opportunity they should be. Oh, I could just feel the passion. I could just feel the passion. You're I was getting irritated. I had to dial it back. Yeah, these are your guys. <laughs> right? You're EU brethren. You want these guys to stand strong. And I feel like they have a good opportunity to potentially catch a couple of players into the league. We're talking about always consistently being the top team throughout the elite. They win the elite stage one. Now you find yourself currently in a top four. You're going up against one of the top NA squads. And the way that you get your name out there, obviously Steve Vortex, he's been around for quite some time alongside Weeman and Hixie. But you have to continue to win. That is your best opportunity to make it in towards the CDL. So this match versus Faceback is going to be a big one for them potentially getting picked up to the league. It certainly is. Both these teams really looking to make a name for themselves and get a little bit further forward. Obviously, this is just a step on the journey. And here are the steps they need to take in this one. Sub-base, Hardpoint, High Rise, Search and Destroy, Karachi Control, Rio Hardpoint, and Rio Search if we make it that far. But enough of me uh, waxing lyrical about how much I want to see these players in the CDL. I'll probably talk about it again <laughs> at some point. But the truth being told, I think FaZe probably have the advantage here against them. They have been a very strong team most of the way through. Uh, and Omidy, you will be the underdogs coming in. Yeah, I feel like FaZe Black, they're really looking at that high-rise search and destroy, basically locking that one up because that's been their bread and butter. And I don't know what it is about challengers. These guys don't play any skid row. They don't play any terminal. They don't do anything. It's basically the same maps in every rotation. Sub-base, hard point, I've seen it all weekend. High-rise S&D, I've seen it all the weekend. And even the Rio HP, I've seen it a couple times. So these challenger players love to get into the mixy maps. And I feel like sub-base is a good start for both teams, man. It's a lot of AR dominance on both squads. So you can already feel the pressure on both sides for that sub base hp to game one yeah let's see it's gonna be an interesting one for these teams but they are well they should be settled down but the players are missing <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say we were we were expecting it but there is a, a very obvious player not there on the left hand side of our screen I'm entirely sure what's going on we were told that the lobby was just about to get underway so i think they're uh either I don't know what's going on. Apparently, we're just waiting. I was yeah. I was told it was ready to go, stud. Probably a you know a late minute bathroom break. Hey, you see Vortex? He's making his way back to the station. Had to go give it a little bit of a tinkle. We're gonna zoom in to make sure. Steve. Yeah, that's the young man that we are looking at, <laughs> Mr. Vortex. Welcome back to your setup. There we go. Headset on. <laughs> Say hello to everybody. Do a, do a com check. Pick up the controller. The controller's up. The coaches are in. Hey guys, I need you to play well. Play better than the other team. You're going to be great here. That's what. That's what. That's what. It's basically the gist of it. Making sure, although the, well, the player hasn't got a headset on yet, are they still checking a setup? Yeah, I guess so. I guess. I, no, I think it's the the coach definitely pulling off one of the players' headsets to give them all the rundown. Obviously, since you're the closest guy at the headset, you're going to be able to listen to him Jace, based off of your voice. But the communication, everything is going to fruition for this old mid squad. They are ready to spawn in on the sub base HP. This is a battle for top three. Who wants some more, Bryce? Wow, that is exactly what we're going to find out. The best thing is both these teams are actually warmed up this morning. Already had their games played. So there are no excuses for coming in cold. Hell no. They have to play well. They have to make sure they keep moving. This is only one of the games today on the path to glory. They've already got one through. They've got to beat this one. They've got to go into the loser's final. And then they've got the grand final if they want to go that far. Just a couple series away, man. One full day of Call of Duty is all it takes for you to walk away as your champion. $40,000 richer. You want to be that team to come out on top. You get the W. You walk away with the money. and You also get a better rep to your name. More possibilities open. More doors open after this couple of series. If you can get through the day as your champion. But I'm just really focus on someone not calling in a UAV, Bryce. That really killed my vibe <laughs> in the last series. And the good thing is, I got the pro players in my back pocket. Dan Ghosty, shout out to him. He gives me the info that 
it's currently the CDL rules that sometimes it happens that when you spawn in, you put the rules on, you don't really manage to change any of the normal ones. You just go in with the CDL preset and sometimes it resets your streak. So that's very difficult to deal with because you got to keep in mind when you're in the heat of the moment, when you need that cruise missile come down at this moment, you might accidentally call on the UAV. And that's what happened to five media last game. So big shout out to Dan Ghosty for giving me that info. Obviously, Call of Duty, we got to fix that issue. We can't have that going forward. But I think both of these teams are going to be ready to go. As here we go into the map number one. All right. This is going to be a good game. I can feel it in my fingers. I can feel it in my toes. Both teams will be looking to just play for a bit of positioning around P1. Took as much time as they can. Basically, just knock the rust off and make sure everything is going smooth. Already, Dylan Rex. And uh, an interesting thing about Dylan Rex, we were talking about him yesterday. He really did not have a great time against yeah. Gunless. And uh, looking to obviously kind of improve that. And certainly has in the game we played earlier against Team War. Well, I can tell you right now, phase black in black is very difficult to see in that kill feed, but... <laughs> <laughs> they are getting a couple kills around the hill. They're also controlling the spawns as well. And all of Old Mid EU now forced to try to break in towards P1 and try to flip these spawns towards P2. With only 20 seconds left, Phase Black are now going to back up a little bit. Play it safe off that rotation. All right. Well, let's see as they go for this. A little bit of a stack coming in. And they're trying to get onto the point as many bodies as possible for Old Mid EU. And they will get the scrap time, but it's not really about the scrap time. Hicks is going to be the first man forward. Regening health coming through. Not going to get it before he ends up going down. And Face Black will have first control. Yeah, Face Black are going to be the team that at least win these initial gunfights off the rotation. But you can already see two players are spawning out. So Omit have the numbers. They just have to locate where Dylan Rex is. He's able to take down one before falling. That might give his team another opportunity to get back into the point. But you see those spawns for Omit EU towards the back end. They are soaking up the time. Currently only down by nine. And with 35 seconds remaining, phase back. You have to try to break this again. Uh, you can see they're trying to make a little bit of a push here. And I uh, will just apologize a little bit if you are struggling to see some of the colors on here as well. It is a, a little bit difficult to always make out what's going on. But we will try and keep you as updated as possible. It's even got the uh, the player silhouettes in, in black. It looks like some <laughs> shadows right around behind the walls. Yeah, no, this is tough to see, but... Currently into the game, Omen EU doing exactly what they need to do. They were able to flip those spawns, put Phase Black towards the backside of P4, and now have that rotation over towards P3. A very difficult hill to try to break on in if you don't have top snow control. So Sam Vort Steve Vortex is in a crucial position. If he can get a couple kills here towards the top, God hell, he's going to go for the one-on-one -on -one child versus Delorex. Puts down a couple shots, keeps him at bay, but the nade is good enough to take care of him. Now Phase Black have some opportunity to take some power spots, and you also have a player in Exceed working around the back. Those spawns now flip. Yeah, they've got it at the moment. This will be the first little hold for it. Mythic's going to try and make a little bit of trouble through the tunnel. Vortex going for top control. We all know how important this is. It really puts the other team on the back foot. But Vortex is not going to see the plan to his right and will fall straight away. They're still trying to make a bit of pitch through here in the middle, but Wee Man can't get it. Hixie looking for a slight move forward, but there's nobody here for them. They've lost the lion's share of time onto this one. The benefit being, of course, is now they can rotate. Yeah, you got to rotate, but you also have to do the same thing at trapping them in towards the backside of this P3. We Man trying to at least find the double onto Dylan, get some assistance from his teammates, but that's a really early break coming in from Phase Black. If you're set up, if you're on mid EU, you have to make sure that setup at least gets you a 25, 30 point guaranteed. And now you have to have a response over towards P4. They're, they're sort of playing real tight on the back end. You lose a couple gunfights on this backside, you could potentially spawn on out, but at least you have the reinforcement in Wee Man still trying to cut off through the mid map. It's becoming a problem for them, not allowing them straight through, but he might have called that one out. Joe Deceives, has he slipped the net? He gets the kill as well. Dylan Rex gets another one, and now Omit are in trouble. They're backpedaling. They are not getting time. They are just trying to get the kills. Their teammates spawn out. Vortex, the last alive back here, can't really do much. Yeah, nah, he has to try to get a lot done if he wants his team to have another opportunity to find the break over towards Water. But once he falls, the spawns now towards the backside for Phase Black. But actually, it's going to be Hixie finding a triple onto the point. The spawns don't come in from Phase Black towards the back end because Hixie finds a triple. And that final 20 is going to go back to Omid EU. They're going to be able to take the lead. But now over towards the P5, it's about the rotation. Brack's able to find a double. So it's going to be Phase Black set up early. They have it. Mythic's going to have to run straight into that one. A slow peak isn't going to work because Brack just knocks him back completely. More points here for Phase Black. And they have the opportunity to take the lead away from them again. We man will get one. And the pressure will start to mount from both sides. Yeah. You got Omid EU at least control currently of mid-map. They also have top snow, so your hands are full for all the players from Phase Black sitting around this hard point. 
But Brax still is alive over towards the propane side. He's currently on a four streak trying to make it a five, but Wee Man is able to cut him down. So it's currently Omid just simply keeping them off the point. But here comes the route by Joe to see through the back end. You're not expecting a player to flank through Warehouse, but that's going to lead to a clean four dead. All of Omid EU spawning over towards P3. And this final 25 is going to face. They do have this locked. Omid, the callers come in. They're stacking hard all the way out towards water. Brack trying to slow them down, but the best part about that is Brack is going to send these plans cut out to his teammates, and the distribution on the minimap will change. They are looking to try and fight for P1 control here. They're not committing too hard on it yet. Yeah, they have to just get out, because you don't want to get put into that trap phase. Black have the opportunity to potentially chain P1 and P5 together. If they find a double, but where the hell is Vortex? Great read out of Joe Deceives. Finds that kill. Does get taken down before earning that cruise missile. But FaZe Black were able to stabilize the map. Hold the rotation of that left street. And now get some much needed time at this P1. But that's going to be omitting you. At least finding a break early on with a couple kills through bottom comms. Oh, well, they get some time here. It's what they're looking for as well. But last time, the rotation of P2 wasn't very good for them. They're still trying to fight this one out, but losing a little oh bit my. of the slaying. But fortunately, Hixie, another three streak when they needed the most. Face Black still controlling the tempo of this game. You can already see on the minimap they are looking towards this P2. Only one player, Mythics, from Omi EU will be over there ready to contest. Oh, but that's a good re right there by Wee Man to find that first kill off the rotation. That's going to be three also in the feed. So FaZe Black look good off the rotation to set up for P2, but don't find a single kill in that sequence. Now you set up Omid EU to chain that P1 to this P2 HP. Try to take the lead right on back with all FaZe Blacks running over towards the warehouse. Oh, they got a good few kills here to open up the map. They're now trying to get through again. Go straight through the window, but the nades and the crosses are coming through, and Mystics will find three. The stuns and nades and the plays complete wow. wipe there for Omen EU. You just don't expect that if you're phase black. You just get a clean three death in the middle of the map. Everyone from Omen spawns through tunnel, so they're instantly able to reinforce on that crossfire. And it just catches FaZe Black off guard. Now with 30 seconds left, they're going to be blessed with those back spawns. But you don't really want it in this situation. You have to try to walk away with this final 20. They have the numbers. You just got to win the fights. They're able to do so by eliminating Mythics. So they're going to be able to take the lead right on back. But this is where Omid EU have to have a better setup this time around at P3. Wait, man, already pushed out towards silos. But Brack is going to be here looking for this original fight. Wondering where the people towards the back are. They're going to wonder if they caught him. I think he's been seen as well. Keep on, Mythics has just gone all the way to the walls of back to find him. He knows exactly where he is. Looking for him on the stun. It's a big fight towards him. And they will eventually get it. Omit will now have control. Yeah, that's a big read right there out of Mythics to win that one-on-one. -on -one. You spot Brack. Don't allow him to influence those spawns for your teammates. Now you're able to hold down to this P3. It's so far been 20 uncontested seconds. Phase Black, everyone conga lining through the middle of the tunnel to try to make a break happen. And they're doing a good job of just keeping this one scrappy. You're still spawning in toward the back if you are Omen, but it's Phase Black finding a majority of the kills to just simply keep you off. And they managed to get the spawn out as well. Just pushing this with tempo and getting the slays has actually worked out for the Wee Man. Now trying to hold the line isn't going to do it. And that will change possession of that hill as we look for the rotation. The benefit for Omen, of course, is they're now all the way over towards that back sub base. But Dylan Rex is going to try and make a difference on the fourth street. Yeah, he already made a difference at that P3. Finds a couple kills through mid-tunnel. He's instantly off the rotation, trying to make another individual play. He finds a double through P2. The spawns now for Omid EU. Over towards that P3 side, phase Black again. This time, find the kills at the right moment to win the rotation over towards P4. And now you got a cruise middle to work with as well. They're putting themselves in the advantage spot to try to take this map number one. Just huge plays with Dylan Rex. Also has that cruise missile. And they'll be looking to use it if they lose control here, but not for a second. And Wee Man's gone all the way deep into the water, and they will find the kills. One player left onto it. Omi EU have a potential for a break. Now, when they get a little bit closer, this might be the time for Dylan Rex to call that in. Yeah, this might be an opportunity to call that cruise missile in, but with only 25 seconds left, you might want to save it because you know they're still going to get those back spawns. You don't want to at least call that in for nothing. And he actually does invest it. Nothing's going to be able to connect, so... Would look like to be a great break coming in from FaZe Black. At least you have one player working around the back end in NXC. They find a couple kills to at least take them off for that hard point. Keep the lead in their favor. And they also have the advantage off the rotation towards P2.
Oh my Tim god! Picking up an absolute free two piece just because he spawned behind them when they spawned out. I mean, you having no luck here. Vortex actually really struggling. Nine and twenty-one in this series. Oh. Still a close game, but with Phase Black now fully in control of this next hard point, it could be over. Yeah, Dylan Rex came to play today, man. He is shutting me up nice and early. He said, "I heard what you said about me yesterday, stud. I'm gonna make use eat your words today." Already twenty-five and eighteen to start this one off. He earned a cruise missile on the game, but it's still a very, very tight fight here at P5. Trades go back and forth. Wee Man trying to do everything he can to soak up this time and find a couple kills. He finds himself on three in a row. All of phase back spawning towards the back side of Warehouse. They can basically tie the game up with all this time. They're just staying there waiting for it over and over again. Wee Man trying to get his own cover. He knows players are going to be on him as well, but they don't get it. Mythic's now just holding them off before they can get onto the point themselves. The benefit being, of course, is that realistically, Face Black can technically win on P1. At the moment, Omi EU cannot. And they were also able to flip those spawns. So if you are Omi, you got to do two tasks at once. Flip these spawns and keep them off of this P1 time. You have a player, a couple players who were able to slip the net. We may come behind him, but he's not able to find the kill. Now you just got to take care of Joe Deceives. He's able to find a double to at least give his team another opportunity. But it's Omi EU currently in the hill. And this is where Phase Black, they are just a little bit ahead and just ahead enough that they can play for positioning and try to keep P1 neutral. That's all they really want to do. Hold down P2, not overcommit. Over to you, they'll try and get as many points as possible on it, but they know they have to play both sides. Yeah, with 25 seconds left at P1, you got to eliminate them off of that point. Vortex does a great job of at least lining up that kill. And if Vortex is off to turn it around towards this later half of the game, Omid you have a chance. He found himself on three before getting taken down, but this final 15 is going to go in their favor. One break is all you need. One set of kills off the rotation of spawn phase blackout is what e Omid you are looking for. They are just so far away. They're going to burn time just getting to this point. The push has to be good. Phase Black just have to hold. They're already waiting for this one. They are in the new point. 35 seconds left to go. And Jonas Seed is going to find a kill with Dylan and Exceed. And that push has already faltered. Vortex will now have to wait. He needs reinforcements. He needs this forward positioning to matter. Yeah. He needs to wait for the reinforcements to come on in. Maybe you can open up with a kill or two to make it happen for your teammates. And Lee strikes at the right time. Him and Hixie combined for two. Phase Black currently not on the point, but Omen and EU, they can no longer win it here. You have to contest this. You don't want to give Phase Black the opportunity to win this game at P2, but you have to be doing two things again at once. You have to win this rotation fight over towards the next. It's going to fall into the one-on-one -on -one between Wee Man and Dylan. He's able to win it, so Omen and EU are going to be able to take the lead if they walk away with this remaining time. And Phase Black, they're not going to contest it. They're all trying to flip the spawns, and this is playing perfectly out for Omen. Exceeds going deep. Phase Black. This is their opportunity. They've burnt time. They lost P2. XC trying to get through. They know he's here already. Trying to get through. Jonas Seeks finds one as well. Jonas finds a second. The trophy's going to go down. The pressure from the back. Mythic's oh. looking for his second as well. Isn't going to get it. And Hixie now has to hold the fort. He won't be able to do it. And FaZe Black have broken the hill. 20 seconds left for both sides. They just need one set of kills, Bryce. One set of kills and the game is going to be theirs. We Man starts it off with the first two stops, Snow. So it's still Omidy. You with an opportunity to find the break. Well, they've got another kill. Hixie will find one as well. We man over the, the top and they're back into it. They've managed to get this one at the same time. And Brack has to be a hero. Needs to find something for his team. Vortex is looking for him. And Mythics will get that trade in the end as well. It's now going to be a tie game again. One last shot again for Face Black. They broke, got broken. But now they must do it one more time. Exceed will slide in. Vortex holds the tunnel. Wins against two, three. It's done. And that'll be Omen EU taking map number one. What on earth was that ending? Woo-wee! Yeah, you got to stand up and chirp a little bit, man, because Omen EU, they did not have the best start to this game. Actually, the whole game, it was Phase Black in control of the HP. But these final moments, Omen EU had to do two things at once. We had to first start off by keeping them off of P1 and trying to flip those spawns to P2. Do a great job of doing that. But at the P2, even with players dropping right off the rip, it comes down to Vortex, the only player staying alive towards top three. He makes a kill happen at the the same time Hixie finds a double so you keep the p2 scrappy but i think if you are phase black in that situation you have to be able to push through old you can't go for the overextension around the back end because you have players from omen who are pushed out towards warehouse who are pushed out towards the middle map they are getting all the info on where the pressure is coming in it's just that route was just too damn long for phase black to try to execute any couple of kills through the backside and omen eu 
Just getting it done multiple ways at the end of this game. 250 to 243 is your final score. With, Sam, with Steve Vortex not having the best start, he was able to turn up towards the very end. Ends the map with 20 kills. And that eventually leads to Omidu having a nice, great comeback in map number one. Well, sometimes you need a little bit of luck, a little bit of spawns, and uh, a lot of good gameplay. And that's basically how it ended up going down. Face Black had the opportunity to win that for about three hills in yeah. a row. Unfortunately, weren't able to get the time. Over to you, able to just lock in and be a little bit icy when they needed to be. And sometimes that's just the way it goes onto this one. But over to you, did not look like the better team for most of that. I'm not going to lie. No, they did it. Face Black were in control from start to finish of this game until the final couple of hills. We're talking about that P1 where they were the team spawning on the preferred side. You have all of P2 control. You have to do a better job at contesting the old or at least showing presence through the middle of the map. You give Omit a lot of space to work their way up, to potentially find one kill and spawn you all the way across the map. And that's just not how you're going to play winning HP. You have to be able to create layers that makes it a lot more difficult for the opposing team to even get close towards that HP. You give them too much space, the kills don't go in your favor. And then Omidy, you were able to prevail in those situations to walk away with a very, very tight game number one. Now you're going into a high rise search and destroy where obviously you're feeling good if you're face black. You have multiple reps on this map. But if I can remember yesterday versus Lower Gaming, it was all about those BG fights right off the rip. Dylan Rex cannot be getting consistently first blooded on that long range gunfight. Yes, you are completely correct. This is exactly what we'll be looking for until this time. And for those who did watch, essentially, Lord Black just had control of all of B Street. So keep an eye on if Face Black are adjusting for Omidy U, or if they've just uh, woken up and feeling like it's another brand new day and they don't have to. That's got to continue what you were able to do in that map number one, as they're going to be the team on defense. No trophy systems to work with, so you want to make sure you don't get nated right off the rip. But Exceed is able to get out with his life with only 33 HP. They gain a lot of info that Omidy U are playing this one safe in the back of their swamp. Go to Sieves. Just waiting. Looking for this one. Man up top as well. He's going to see Exceed tries to throw the needle. Isn't going to be able to and has to back off a bit. Will now be Childs. The timing. Just ever so slightly against him and still cannot get that one down. We'll probably call for reinforcements here. You can see it on the minimap as well. Yeah. Hixie is swung in for it. Hixie will get called out and killed before it. Oh. That's just an amazing timing for Brack. That might have been the best movement I've ever seen Brack hit. Is able to find a double Dylan with the snap for the triple. Now it's Vortex left in the 1v4, positioning now known. And that's just Phase Black dominating on the map control aspect. If you are Omid EU, you got to continue with that momentum, get pushed out, put them in a couple better situations because you didn't have any presence over towards the B bomb, no one into backside towards A. There's a couple players in your spawn. You get at least somewhat control in the B street, but you get overwhelmed on that side of the map to lose that first round. Well, great round there from FaZe Black, and they just managed to get everything they needed. All the timing, all the gunfights. The team worked just a little bit better. We saw in the minimap, Hicks, he tried to reinforce Wee Man. That timing actually went against him. He just got caught, and then Brack found the second, and that was basically round over then. Now looking for Mythics, though, will take Exceed straight out of the game. Big first blood to take down Exceed. He's one of the more aggressive players, one of their playmakers on the side of FaZe Black. So now you have the advantage on the attack. You also gained info that Dylan Rex is somewhere close towards the propane. He was able to rejuvenate his health, but info is now gained. Do we try to solo him out? He's just going to try to get out with his life. Try to keep this 3v4 still manageable. Oh, looking for it, Joe. That is a long range gunfight wow. to take with the rival nine. Fortunately, Dylan Rex will back him up. Does get traded out. Joe Deceive stays alive in all of this somehow. And they are still waiting for him. Brack is now going to reinforce as well. That's a slow peak for him. Joe Deceives goes for the peak as well. Wee Man fighting demons here on B Street. And you can just see Wee Man is trying to set up his teammate in Vortex to try to potentially go for a flank, but Brack repositioned himself back towards the middle of the map, so that opening was cut off. And with only 30 seconds left, Joe Deceives is able to find a timing and at least force it to a 1v1. They don't know where Brack has gone, and he won't have seen this either. The timing. Vortex will get that bomb down shortly, although I think he's helping him drop off the top. Really going for the plant. Brack may wait just to see where he has to retake. Yeah, he's going to try to get the info on where he tried to decide to exit that bomb from. But the timing from Vortex is going to be better. As Brack has gained no info. Time is starting to tick on down. Brack is jumping up. 
His best parkour movement. But Vortex is all the way across the map. Oh, this timing is going to be unbelievable, by the way. Vortex with a long flank through blue all the way back in a spawn. Comes around and Brack is like, where has he gone? Yeah, you just couldn't get a read on it. You're sitting at the mid, mid side of the map where you're, you're watching that angle if he crosses out through middle. But Vortex hits the route, jumps back through underground, reflanks up through blue, and catches the timing on the Brack. You saw where that bomb was planted. That's exactly what Brack was trying to locate if he was playing through the backside window for the clutch spot. But Vortex, great in the one-on-one, -on -one, is able to secure the round for Omen. Back to the defensive side they go with a couple trophy systems to work with this time. Well, all tied up, and this will make a little bit of a difference this time. You can already see the trophies going out very early from the teams. Trying to deflect it, trying to see if we'll see Hixie cross, though. Information for both teams. They've got this stack. The stun will go out at the same time, but it is going to be a crossfire. Hixie not able to find the second, but it is a three versus three. Wee Man trying to nade exceed here. As more kills flurry into the kill feed. Yeah, Dylan gets isolated right there. The nade keeps him stuck, but he also got hit by a stun, so he was going to fall. Turns into the hands of Exceed and Brack to try to clutch on up. Exceed getting it done in the one on one gunfight. And Brack across the map is able to line up Vortex. We men now left in a 1v2. Worried about this. Can see more players through it, but unfortunately, he is going to be outnumbered. Can he get across? I think he's seen Brack there at the top. That is a difficult gunfight. They're going to try and challenge him at the same time, surely. And Wee Man must just be frustrated. Cannot get these kills going in his way. But he has the info. He has the info. And he's able to get to the snap. Exceed gives him a freebie. But the read on to Brack trying to go for the double chow is just simply not enough. Wee Man takes a wee wee in the 1v2. <laughs> oh, well, that double snap was crispy. Like I said, probably a little bit frustrated. They were just playing shoulders over and over again. But Wee Man hit him with a hot two step. And that's just something, Bryce, that FaZe Black had an issue with all throughout the Elite. Whenever they have the numbers, they somehow, some way, put themselves not in the advantage, but the disadvantage. And that doesn't make sense to me because the bait and switch just simply has to be better there. Unfortunately, Wee Man makes them pay for it as Omid EU starting to chain a couple rounds together. Wee Man trying to continue that hot streak. Now finds himself on three in a row. Another first blood for Omid. There we go. Can they convert it this time? Does give him the benefit of just locking down this a little bit easier. But if you're Omid EU, you have to find these trades now. You have to get this back into a reasonable position. Slowly, surely. I don't think they've read this yet either. So this is all going to be on Wee Man. Yeah, Wee Man's going to try to make the play here. Where's the way through underground? Is anybody going to be to get, find a freebie on to exceed? Sets up Vortex for the second. Now it's Brack left in a 1v3. Finds an instant trade on the Vortex. But still a tall task ahead because that bomb is getting planted at A. And he's moving fast. He's not slowing down. He's going to see the first one as well. Down all one versus one. Knows Wee Man was all the way back in the spot. It's going to be a chow again. Wee Man not losing his ones in this scenario. Goes straight for it. He's just getting the better of Brack, man. Brack had a read on him, but the different angle of approach out of Wee Man. And find another double on the round. Starts off with the first blood. Finds a second onto a seed. Actually finds a triple with that final kill. So he was on a three. Ends that round on a five. One kill off of earning that cruise miss. So three rounds in a row now for Omen. Well, let's see. For phase black, they're finding the number advantage and they're never converting it. There's got to be an issue that must be addressed. Here we go. B Street, Brack laying down. Nobody challenging him yet. Here going to be a little bit of info for Joe Deceives as well. They got a hit marker. If you are face black, they know that this is a round that you have to walk away with and exceed finding that first blood onto Vortex. Now forces Omidu to change their defensive setup. Someone has to now be watching over towards that blue side. And unfortunately, Mythics falls off of the map. Pixie does take down one, but we man, you can see the way that he's playing. He just needs one kill to earn a cruise. Just backing up Pixie, already taking up Brack here, but they are outnumbered to We're face not black. They'll just be looking to trade. I don't know he's there. I don't know he's there. They're waiting for him, but doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> Who's all the gunfights? I think Mythics is a bit upset about falling off the map there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're definitely upset because you could potentially open up a deep flank route that can catch FaZe Black off guard, but 
They do a great job of just isolating these last two players. They knew that Weeman was playing for that cruise missile. Was able to shut him down before earning it. And was able to win that final gunfight. So now FaZe Black able to stop the bleeding. A much needed round at that. But now they have to have a response for their defensive side. Maybe we slow down on the aggression. Don't give up a free first blood omen. Well, they're trying to do it again as a few flurries go through. And it looks like... Some what the hell is going on? So, I've kind of seen this. There's something going on with high rise at the moment about players bouncing. Yeah. When they hit that, that low wall run. And it seems to be a, an issue that some of the players have been having this weekend. So... Maybe stop doing it. Yeah, it's the ledges on high rise. It happens to be all the time in rank. It's like they're built in with trampolines on it. So it definitely just bounces Vortex off of the map. But at least his teammate is able to even up the numbers, making it 3v3. Still a lot of time left to work with, but Omid EU still in the back of their spawn, just trying to gain any more information before they make a play. And receives in a very forward position, looking for the first to snap onto the second, gets it as well. And that'll probably shut it down as he gets oh, the oh, third oh, with a turn and burn. Oh, and you got to chirp a little bit if you are, Joe. You get some assistance out of Dilla Rex, but you walk away with the triple to close out the round. Snap onto the second, the read onto Wee Man. With only five bullets in the clip. That has to be perfection, and he gets it done. Three with one round. Joe deceives. Ties the game up at three. Wow, it's been a great reversal here from Face Black. They've got the rounds on the board. Omen to you, two rounds in a row, though. They've lost players to going off the map. Cannot happen anymore if they want to take the search and destroy. Yeah, let's just avoid those side wall runs. It's not playing a friendly friend to us. But let's just stay, do stay on the map. But our two feet planted. But they're on the defensive end, and they're getting a lot of information that Face Black are applying a lot of pressure over towards blue side. You can see how aggressive they already are on B Street. They basically have the whole map cut off. And with all this pressure down B Street for Omit, they're a little bit out of position. Just trying to hold it down. Everybody basically cut the map a different way. Only Mythics left alone here. Basically, Mythics is the anchor. If he goes down, they lose control of that side. Yeah, but at least the only thing is, is that it's very difficult to plant that bomb over towards A. Omi to you have all B street control, so they know they can't attack over towards B. But that time is starting to dwindle down. Phase Black gained that info. We can't put this bomb over towards A, so we have to try to fight these gunfights around that B point. Already done, Steve. Found one. Let's see, we'll get the first blood, though. Xe trying oh. to get that one. Hasn't managed to get it against Mythics. The laydown works. And they've burnt time and found nothing on this so far. Brack will eventually find one. He knows Wee Man's going to be up here. Wee Man knows as well, but back down to a two versus two. You got to get the bomb planted, though. There's only 10 seconds left. You had to start to get about that objective. And unfortunately, your bomb carrier is going to be sitting underground. You just wait too long right there if you are phase black to develop your play on the attacking side. But once Omit EU were able to dominate that B Street, they basically called the round. You, it's never easy, Bryce, to plant that bomb over towards A. There's so many different angles that you have to be accounted for. And once they get the read that we can now push out towards blue, they currently are pushed up on our B street. Just didn't have enough time to work that objective over towards B. Omid EU secure the round. Yeah, also, I mean, I mean, they went for a counter on B street and essentially it kind of caused a problem for FaZe Black because they couldn't transition over yeah. once they'd given up complete control. And on the other side of it. First Bloods have been so far in favor of FaZe Black most of the time. That's where they're beginning their rounds. How many you? Looking for B Street, and there's going to be Exceed already taking down Wee Man. It's a perfect angle to find that First Blood. Another man advantage, but Mythics wins that one-on-one -on -one gunfight versus Dylan. Makes it back to a manageable play in a 3v3. Gains some more info on to Exceed. Is able to get some team shots to back him on down. Yeah, you might just want to work this objective while Vortex is working the pinch, but he gains the info. Yeah, let's just stay alive. Oh, it's a three-man push. Vortex is going to die here. Can he take one with him? He will. But that thing's down to a two versus two with bomb down. Now, Phase Black had to try to clutch on up all the information gained from Omidu on where they were. Last time Vortex was able to spot him, but Hixie gains the info. So does Exceed. Exceed gets the info on both. So, it's going to turn it into a one-on-one -on -one gunfight. You get the team fires out of crack to make it a 2v1. I think he's already got one. Super weak, though. Will stay down. Will Brack chow this at the right time? And he's already sitting behind him. Mythics will go for the reach out with the Renetti. Renetti versus MCW. The MCW will win all day. 
And FaZe Black will take the round. Well, that's good stuff for FaZe Black. More specifically, out of XC to gain that info early on on where both players were for Omid EU. You set up Brack to at least set up the team fires onto Hixie. Then once it turns into a one-on-one, -on -one, there's just no more ammo left in that MCW for Mythics. He doesn't want to have bad timing going for the reload, so he tries to commit towards a Renetti gunfight. But Brack was ready for that one-on-one. -on -one. Finally comes on top. Out on top in one of these rounds in the 1v1 to close it out. And that ties the game up at four. Either way, could change anything in this one. Like, there is just such a narrow margin now. They're both at 4-4. Four, four. No more mistakes. No more jumping off the map. <laughs> there goes aggressive push again. They are going straight towards A. Did this last time. But this is actually more aggressive. They're out. Yeah, they're already out. So Mythics is going to have his hands full. But Hixie finds that first one. The player's trying to get aggressive up through the crack shack. We men with the second. Instantly a 4v2 in favor of Ole Miss. It's just like whenever you're playing on the defensive side, if you dominate the B street, it's very difficult to win attacking rounds. If you are face black, you have to be able to contest it and not give up basically all map control. Uh, last one left. Brack is going to go down. Not a single kill to be made there for face black. Second time they've tried that strategy yeah. hasn't worked out for them. Yeah, that don't make sense. Like, you just did it in the round previous on your attack, and it didn't work out. It went down also all the way to the very end, but you just simply did not have enough time to play the objective. Now you get super aggressive, but you still don't have B Street control. Crossfires are set up from Omid EU, and Mythics was on that back left window, just basically giving the info. They're already at our crack shack. That's two rounds in a row right now where FaZe Black try to attack towards A, but no B Street control, you're not going to have a lot of success. Omid EU, now at game point. How do they play this? Gotta be careful. Hixie looking for the information. Will the scene exceed there? Slide across. Dylan Rex already on Overwatch. They are stacking B Street. Just trying to take a play out of Omidy U's book. If you dominate this B Street, you're basically going to secure the defensive side. But you have Vortex slowly is murking his way up through the middle of the map. Exceed is able to find the first blood, but Vortex instantly there for the trade. Another 3v3. Man is weak. He's going to wait for it. They're both going to go dominate bottom blue here. So, Joe to see. This is timing for him. It's going to call one. Vortex laying down as well. Has to back off. Get out of there completely. Do not give away the kill. Reinforcements though piling in. Oh, Joe to see is at least able to gain the info that the pressure's coming in towards B and able to play his life. So now it's all about when do you decide to commit for the bomb plant. We main gains info on two players through underground. That bomb is now going down. 3v3 on the retake. I'm trying to get Dylan Rex will find one though. Advantage to them. Oh! The three. Dylan Rex will find the second. Hixie will get one back in their favor, but he is still outnumbered. And he knows where he is. This is terrible. He needs a little bit of a break here. And that's where Brack is going to be as well. Brack just completely whiffs. And now Jodeci is behind him. But Jodeci catches him before he can get away. And they will win that round. We're going round 11. Oh, 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 oh. round 11. Great plays coming in on phase Black. More specifically out of Dylan Rex to find that double through underground. What a perfect read. What a perfect snap to find that second kill. And then once it turns to a 1v3... Wee Man was able to line up Brack, but the good thing is that Brack had that player absolutely one shot. So Joe deceives just send it and is able to hit one bullet before he turns that corner. We got around 11 for the map. Well, we'll be face Black on the defense. Omidy, you will attack. Tense game. Also, I will just point out at this point, ignore the scoreboard on the map that you're seeing. That is not accurate. It does not update unless you win the round on that player. Rex, a lot of pressure down B Street. They've given up a bit of control here, but I wonder you won't know this yet. Yeah, no, nah, this is scary because usually you're expecting Dylan Rex to push up towards more pain, at least get a little bit of assistance to try to control that B Street. But now, oh, many you basically have the entire map cut off. Just work your way in towards B. You got to go for some team shots. You don't want to get ISO in towards this site, but they got to be thinking about that objective with all this map control. And then just checking the corners they go for this. The nade's already raining in. Trophy. Worried about a push. Let's see if he gets Hixie. Bomb will go down. Wee Man stuck in the site. He wants out. Vortex. He just heard a oh player right next to him. 3v3. 3v2. 2-1 down low. Show to see. Show to see if he's going to chow this as well. 
They're going for it. Double. Oh my goodness! How has Vornex slipped the net here? Still alive, still running. Oh my god! Vornex like smoke in the night. That is outrageous movement to escape, but it's maybe too much movement in the end. Face Black will get the round. The numbers not on his side. Even with Vornex looking like he's 18 again. Whew. He was dancing with death right there, Bryce. But they're able to clutch on up and the search and destroy. Face Black are happy as hell that they were the team on the defensive side. But if you are Vortex, all you're asking is for your team is to simply play their lives. Try to potentially win a couple one-on-ones with the way he was able to dance around that bottom helipad steps. But it's just not enough with all that finesse to secure the round 11. Phase Black able to ice up on the search and destroy. Walk away with the round 11 ice. And now tie the series up at one. That's a much needed map at that. Just a crazy ending for it as well. Vortex trying to do everything he could, but his teammates dying a little bit earlier. Gave him no more options. Yeah. And that is the conversion. Phase Black, they tie up the series one to one. The question there for him and you will, of course, be, maybe if we didn't throw players off the map in two <laughs> successive rounds, maybe it could have been different. Yeah, maybe it definitely could have been different because it's two manageable rounds that they do it. Like, we're talking about on a 3v4. The objective still wasn't getting planted for Phase Black on one of their defensive round. Unfortunately, Mythics falls off the map. And then in the next attacking round, Vortex jumps off the map on the attack to give them the free first blood. So it's not the way you want to find success. Obviously, those trampolines are not treating them right, but... A great SD that was back and forth between these two teams. When well, you have two of the top teams on both the EU and the NA side, it's always going to go down to the wire. A seven point hard point game around 11. We have now have a series on our hands. We really do. What a great SD that actually was. A little bit of a mistake from some both teams. Some strategies that they will look at when they come to play this map again, but they won't be in this series. But who takes the next one as well? We've had a nail-biting hard point and a nail-biting S&D. Only bodes well for the control. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure the control is going to be Karachi. This might be the deciding factor, whoever is going to walk away with this map. Because Karachi is all about the pressure that the SMGs are able to apply with their ARs. Just winning some good gunfights from those power positions. We're talking about top three. Trying to dominate top red and consistently always pushing out towards junk. That's where the game starts to get away from a couple of these teams. When you don't have a player always blocking that close red spawn, you're allowing that avenue of attack to, for them to sprint right up to that B point and just make the game mixy. So I think the, play, the team who does the fundamental part a little bit better, when you talk about blocking the spawns, forcing them to overextend a bunch of times over through Coop's side, is going to walk away with this W. Well, let's find out then who gets the advantage in this next map. Well, that's all coming up after the break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Call of Duty Challenges action.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Call of Duty Challengers in Miami. We have an absolute stormer of a game on our hands. Over to you and FaZe Black are trading blows across the map set. A very close hard point and a very close S&D as we now head into the control. I'm excited for the control, man. I feel like whoever's going to be able to win this map is going to walk away with this series because we're talking about non-stop pressure on Karaki's control. And then we're guaranteed a map number four, so that means that pressure is going to continuously go on through the rest of this series because map four is going to be Rio HP. So I feel like whoever wins this control right here, Brycey, is going to be victorious. Well, we will certainly find out. The players all sitting back down, all getting ready, hydrating, geeing each other up, and just basically getting their game plan ready for this control. It all becomes fluid in the end, but right now, both off the back of two very close games. From it, they'll want to forget that last round in the S&D. For Phase Black, they'll want to forget the hard point they threw away. But who takes the lead? Who makes the difference here on this slightly different game mode? It's an interesting one for those of you who've seen Control. It's not like Hardpoint and it's not like S&D, but it's also both. Yeah. It's a little bit of different, man. You can't proceed to go three to four dead in Control because then you get put in a trap. So I'm really looking at the battles between the SMGs. Joe deceives on one side. Potentially going up against Vortex on the opposing side. Those guys have to be trying to set the tone early on because those guys make it go make the world go around on a map like karachi which team is going to be the attacking squad right off the rip because keep in mind you have no trophy systems to work with but to win a karachi control it's all about the fundamentals not letting anyone slip on by making sure you're accounting all the players and doing the things that make the game easier like blocking the junk spawns forcing them to overextend even if they capture that eight point you can have a great two-minute stellar defense if you're just consistently blocking over towards red and trading efficiently. That has to be the key factor. You cannot go down two to three dead, especially when you're the team on defense trying to put pressure over towards B. Yeah, and it really does come down to a little bit of teamwork. You are right in that regard, realistically. A little bit of team shooting, but also kind of keeping that stagger on the map, right? Like, you want to make sure that not only can you make concerted pushes, yeah. but you don't want to kind of go in that one by one, lose the trade, and start losing map control. We talk about it. It's not a specific area of map control on this map most of the time. Like, top three is useful by A. Having the back alley, obviously, is useful by B. But it's more just opening up the alleyways for your teammates. So when you yeah. do make a move, you don't have to check every single corner. You don't run into team shooting. You don't run into problems as you make that push. Kind of the same thing for the defense as well, especially with the way that this map plays out over towards that B control. If you start going down by too many players or lose map control, you'll be thrown into the choke points and it's almost impossible to come back. Yeah, so you have to make sure that's in the back of your mind. We cannot afford to lose two to three dead at the same time. And then force ourselves for the team on the defensive side to just consistently jump over the dumpster. That's not a recipe for success. But one thing I also got to be making sure is that if you're getting a two or three dead, make sure we stack the damn point. That's the only thing about it. That sometimes <laughs> teams play for a second wave of kills when that's not the best play. Think about that objective in the back of your mind. Here comes the standard opening. Oh. Going straight on to A, though. But Dillerex take those mythics very, very early. We man already looking for the player towards the back here. And a slow burn onto A. Exceed, though. Finding a little bit of opening. It's going to throw a bit of chaos now into the Omen EU ranks. And they will lose bodies everywhere. Vodex has to stay out. Oh, but unfortunately, Brad gets a read on him. Great movement to locate Vortex to top red. And now all of Omen EU stuck in the back of their spawn. They're consistently pushed out towards Junk, so they have to overextend through Chicken Coop. Vortex with a big kill onto Joe Deceased, but where the hell is the rest of Phase Black? We at least were able to locate Exceed. We're able to trade efficiently onto Dylan Rex. So now you're able to put that, that game clock to a pause again. Looking for a Brank, just trying to get a, a few kills here off of it. Staying alive, they know where he is, and they are actually going to ignore him yep. for now. Now they've got players out. They can just keep on moving forward, get that A control in their hands. Hixie, though, coming under fire from multiple angles as they've lost control of the map. Yeah, this is perfect for FaZe Black. You're consistently having Brack doing the fundamental part correctly, forcing Omen EU every single time to overextend, and they've just not been able to find any kills through this chicken coop side. 24 to 16 in lives remaining. Stuns and Nade is not going to slow down Exceed. Now it's Brack's turn to have some fun. He finds a double off the respawn, earns himself a cruise missile. And with only two segments completed by Omit, you have to try to commit... First gunfight goes down onto Brax, so now an avenue of attack over towards B is now open. 
Captain Rex will see them on the cross here. Finds the first, looks for it, completely nails it. The chow comes through. Wee Man's actually going to be up top red, and they will be into B at least for a few seconds, but already the kill's going against them. And while they will stop this clock with a player called Vordex in towards the back, there are too many bodies, too many bullets, and they are just being beaten back in a spawn Ooh. over and over again. It is 20 to 4 lives remaining. It's a slaughter. Yeah, no, nah, Omit just said no damn chance on this round. It was just non-stop map control for FaZe Black. They were making sure they weren't giving those close red spawns. And even when Brack drops, everyone is reinforcing on that left side of the map. That was just utter dominance right there on the FaZe Black first on the defensive side. You usually find a lot of success on the attack. But if you're not finding any kills, it makes it a lot more difficult. Because now if you are FaZe Black, you're going into this attacking round with a cruise missile in your back pocket. You only allow two segments to go the opposing way. You have taken advantage heavily in this map three. All right, let's see. How many you? Not what they wanted. They went for the slow burn on A, and it soon turned into a conflagration of just pain. Hixie finds the first, not the second, though, and they are out towards B. Off to the races here for phase black. Yeah, you got to go if you are on it. You cannot give up these segments at B. You have to try to contest them, and it's not even a single player even close towards this point. You have to win the gunfight. Lease onto this player and towards the point. That first segment is going to be complete. Exceed reads the player jumping over the dumpster. Now the double stack is going to come in. And I don't know what the hell Omidy you are doing. We got to move. They're still into it. And they are in the blender over and over again. Just kind of got forward. And Brack is going to find another kill on the Vortex. B is almost gone already. Omidy you are floundering here under this one. They cannot get the kills. They need to lock it in. And while they have a contest there, Exceed looking for it, finds another one as well. And B will go against them, surely. Only Vortex left alive, but he is outnumbered. Yeah, it's only Vortex. He's trying to at least finesse dance with death a little bit, but that's going to be B out of the way. And they might have just been able to call around, because now you have to hit that rotation if you are Omid EU. They still know that there's one player around the cafe. Brack is dancing, but unfortunately cannot win the gunfight versus Hixie. But now you still see FaZe Black around the middle of the map have a lot of control. Omid EU have to try to hold down this eight point for two minutes. Yeah, good luck. Well, they've already lost control over towards it. Joe Deceives is gunning his way through. Ten and five on a three streak. Dylan Rex will get Mythics as well. They might just pile bodies into A now. They have complete control. Vortex towards the back. Won't get out with his life either. Still two stack in the point. Yeah, what are you doing, Joe Deceives, though? Come on, we can't continue to play for kills here. This is what I'm talking about, that stack factor. A cruise missile's coming in from Brack. Gonna relieve some of that pressure. You cannot jump out and contest our teammates. That's another two in the feed. And that is going to be the round. Omid EU were not ready for that beginning break off. It was all a phase back. Calling the audible. Not going over towards A. We're gonna try to get the more difficult point out of the way first. They get success right off the rip. Able to extend time for two minutes. And the stack comes in with all the kills as well. Now up 2-0 on the control. Potentially going to walk away with three. Joe DeCease finds himself on a five. One off a run in the cruise. Well, it's been a very fast control so far. For Omen of you, they now have to win their own attack just to keep this game going. Straight into it straight away. Pretty standard again, but they've got two players over towards B. I wonder... They're going to try and bait them out here. Mythics will be on Overwatch for Hixie in the point. Vortex looking up top red, right, but he's going to fall before he can do anything. And now Joe Deceives almost takes down Hixie as well. Dude, the fact that Brack is able to walk away with that gunfight, that guy is shooting right now. But the first segment is going to be complete for Omid EU. Slowly but surely working on the second. Great read out of the Mythics to catch Dylan Rex on the overextension. But now you're going to read anyone on the flank. Brack with the timing is able to push through. Sitting at 17 and 4 so far on this map. He is just dominating right now. It has just been very one sided. The only benefit Omni U have Hixie inside the point, and that'll give him the time to recover. At least for now, it's been a little bit better than the first attacking round. That's another kill going down. Joe Sees has to do something here, but already been stun-checked. Yeah, the good thing for Mythic is that he takes down one player over towards the junk side. So now that avenue of attack is now open. You also already have players in Hixie watching the jump over. He's only able to take down one, but the read pinch coming in from Vortex and Exceed gets the read on it. So now Vortex has to try to play his life behind enemy lines, but he's going to be trapped between a rock and a hard place. Joe Deceives and... Dylan Rex are able to combine for two, trying to reinforce that pressure over towards red. So 
slowly but surely losing all of this space. How many of you happy to try and break out any way they can? Phase Black setting up the blender, but Wee Man finds two and cracks it wide open, but still a long way to go. Reinforcements will be there for Phase Black before they can get back into this point. Exceed's already been found, but it is going to be a crossfire. Yeah, there's a crossfire setup, but who needs it when you're shooting like that? Same to find the first call. So Wee Man, Dylan Rex with the trade, Dylan Rex with the double. And now this is where if you are phase back, you start to push out towards junk. You read Vortex again on the deep pinch. And Dylan Rex is starting to hit a different level. 14 and 10 on a 5 can potentially earn himself a cruise missile. And call game. The Semtex is good enough to earn it. And now all of Omid EU with a minute left are now forced to overextend. Wow, this is unbelievable. Just continuously putting them back into that blender. Anytime you think they can break out. Actually, Hixie is going to be out. Hands up the clock. He's not doing it yet because they've still got enough time to play with. He's looking to catch them whenever he can. He need an opportunity. Oh. He's been found. He's yeah. been taken out. And all that waiting, all that time is burnt. Yeah, he was setting up for the perfect play. He was just hoping his teammates could find a couple kills around the junkyard area. But Dylan Rex knows. We did not account for Hicksy. He has to be trying to play a credit corner in our spawn. And he reads it to perfection. Now with only 25 seconds left, you might just make it rain with that cruise whistle to make sure you're still in control of the map. 18 seconds, one last push, one last opportunity. Oh my! But somehow finds a kill! Should not have found it, does anyway! And Omi EU have been bodied on wow. this map. It has not been close, it has not been fair. They have been destroyed. Yeah, now this wasn't even close. I'm really curious to see what the scoreboard looks like at the very end because they just got slaughtered from start to finish. Yeah, you better throw a couple of fist pumps out, try to keep the energy flowing. But you see Exceed and Joe to see, they're soloing out players. They're chirping that chirp. Talking a I little think that was actually talk. the dance move called the sprinkler. Wow. If I'm not mistaken, Exceed uh, actually just having a little bit of a dance here <laughs> and maybe so inviting Omi EU to come join him. I think that's what I don't think it was trash talk. I think it was just he was trying out the sprinkler. And if you've ever seen that dance move, give it a quick Google. Yeah, you're hella old, Bryce, just for that, bro. Like, <laughs> I can tell. If we're going out to the club or a dance hall, you're hitting the sprinkler. I might just simply walk away. But <laughs> that is a dominant, dominant control victory for Phase Black. Hixie sitting there with his jaw dropped to the ground yeah we can't believe that that map just went the way that it did but we're still far far away from losing this entire series yeah we take a look at our final scoreboard everyone's sitting there negative hicksy was the only one able to breach at least 13 kills with five captures to his name but they were just getting out slayed heavy better game plan from phase black from start to finish brack dominates show deceives dominates and now you have hella momentum going in towards the next hp well Interesting one. Certainly not good for Omid EU. Weren't able to get going at all on either side, really. And that was probably one of the faster controls you will see. But it has turned from two very close maps into one that can only be described as incredibly one-sided. Yeah, and if you are Omid EU, you got to just completely forget about this one. It was not close from start to finish. Brack... Everyone on the side of Phase Black, which is taking over when they needed to. Multiple clutch kills, consistently doing the fundamentals of blocking that close junk spawn. And just reinforcing their map control every single chance that they got. Was also doing a great job of leading in the communication on that side. Because every time someone slipped on by, they got a read on perfectly on where that pressure was coming in from. And now you're going into a Rio HP where Omit. Obviously, your backs are against the wall. You don't want to go home in this situation. And if you're phase black, you just got to continue to build on what you've been able to do. But you see the lower third right there. The sprinkler rhythm was popularized in the 1970s. Bryce, is that when you were born, right? Like, you're dead. No, you're so no old, it wasn't. Bro. Look, just sometimes I know about old dance moves. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and so apparently it does exceed. So that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's where I'm putting it, all right? We'll, we'll leave my age for a different time. But speaking of age, the age-old question is, can you regain after a map like that? Yeah. That's the biggest thing, man. It's that you have to completely forget about the last seven minutes of some Call of, Duty that, Call of Duty that you have played. And now you're going into a map on Rio where it's going to be nonstop progression. You saw how fast Joe DeCesar was playing alongside Brack. Even Dylan Rex at moments was picking up that rival nine. 
You have to be feeling really good going into a re HP, but if you're face black, you have to do the fundamental parts correctly. You cannot give up a lot of these rotations to Omid EU. That was the way that you lost map number one. And then also create those layers, man. Don't give up. Don't put yourself in such a tight setup to where one or two kills happen. You're spawning all the way across the map, and you're basically chalking up that old hill. Setups have to be a lot better if you face black early off the rotation. They certainly do, and well... With Rio upon us here, many people talk about Joe Deceives and Rio and, and how much pressure this favors him on this map. I don't know, man. Like, for Omid EU to have what was essentially a great comeback in the first half point. The S&D back and forth. They could have won it. They had a few issues there with the dropping off the map into a control that might as well have been a different team. It genuinely may as well have been, but they still have an opportunity. It is not written into the stars. It has not been put into the history books. This series is not over. Yeah, it's far from it. We have to first get through this Rio HP, where we know how fast-paced this map can be. And if you are home at EU, your main focus is just to simply keep a count of the SMG players on the opposing side. Don't allow them to hit those pinch routes. And make sure you are training effectively around those gunfights, but... Into the map for we go. Face Black trying to close this one out to move on. Now, let's see. The regain between maps and into what can only be described as point blank warfare. One of the only maps you see multiple rival nines. Should be three aside, probably with one AR somewhere, but everybody will be pushing the tempo and hitting some serious speed. You can already see the play call coming in from Phase Black. They were just waiting patiently towards their bottom side of the Eskies, trying to set up Exceed through that deep pinch, but it does not work out. Omidy used Slay through the top of the middle. They get the read, at least the trade, onto a seat on the deep pinch. So that first attack had a break into a P1 instantly gets shut down. Already we man coming under some pressure. Those are going to be players both sides. Eventually does break out for it as well, but players going to be behind him and all over. They are still putting the pressure on and rebuffing them completely away. Omen are you actually doing a great job of taking the lion's share of time off P1. Yeah, this is good stuff for a moment. They traded effectively, and now you can be aggressive to try to flip these spawns. Because if you face black, you have to iron up. You have to make these kills count, or you're going to spawn all the way across the map. Exceed with a double through the back end. It's going to keep those spawns in favor of phase black. They're going to be the team initially set up for the B2, and Exceed still doing a great job watching this over extension. Here they go now. Hard break. How many of you have nothing? They have no flanks. Nobody to go forward, but we man just managing to pick pixels out of the sky and almost takes down Brack. It's not going to be enough, but it might open it up if they can find a kill <laughs> somewhere else, which they can't. Jonas Seeds finds the second, and it's back to square one. Yeah, back to square one if you are Omid EU. Gotta try to hit your tacks, hit your nades, throw your stuns. Try to contest these players out of these power positions. Brack has been standing alive towards these pillars. Basically the entire 40 seconds that this HP has spawned in, but it's still phase black, trading effectively. Going to walk away with this final 15. They are able to respond after a terrible P1, but over towards the rotation at P3. You have Joe Deceased and Dillarex, who are currently on a little bit of a streak. A cruise missile can go a long way. Well, it's now a game of rotations. Phase black, they took P2. How many of you will be first at P3? They will be in it as well. Here comes the stack. It's a three-man boxes push. Ah, Wee Man is not going to expect this, but he's going to find one, but no trades there for his teammates. They're now going to have to kind of adapt to this. Weren't expecting all the pressure to flood through. Oh, and they're able to win some insane gunfights. I hate teams who set up a break that at least send three players through boxes because you're getting all the info if you are on EU. The pressure's not coming from men. It's not coming from Bridge. They just cannot win any of the gunnies. But at least they are still holding on towards that back spawn. It's all about mix fest, actually, between both of these teams. And Phase Black are able to come on top in the engagement, flip the spawns, and potentially walk away with the final 25. Oh, they've done another great job. And now, this is, again, they're going to be about the rotations. Omen you are falling further and further behind. They will chow the scrap time as they look to push through old. Can they find anything? This will give them a little bit of boxes control, and they're going to go for the back as well. There's a big pinch set up. Oh. They're finding the kills as Hixie gets two through boxes, and now they're in the point. And that's another situation where Phase Black, you're early off the rotation, but the setup is not the best. And it's Hixie who flies right through boxes to find a triple that leads to the break, but instantly they respond with Exceed, finding three of his own right through the top side of that P2. Just jumps right to that white car, finds a triple, and that leads to Phase Black getting a much needed break. 
And they've managed to get it, and now the pressure amounting once again. 35 seconds to go, and somehow they haven't held a single gunfight. Omni U break forward once again. It is back and forth like heavyweights, just slugging it out in the middle of the ring. And you can expect this for the rest of the hard point as well. Hey, you usually find a lot of success when you're the team early off the rotation at P4. Because there's only one avenue of attack. You read that player that at least sets up for one pinch play, then all you have to do is put your sole focus onto the front. But I'm guessing neither squad had any trophy systems to work with because those nades, those stuns, everything was hitting. And eventually this is the Omit EU. Growing himself a nice little leap, almost up by 20. But off the rotation, it's Faze Black again. This time set up, but the setup is not the strongest. Brack drops in the hill, and now someone has to fill his spot. There they go. They're waiting for it. Trying to get into this one next. The points are only slightly in the favor of Omid EU, but it is burning down time and time again, and they are losing kills here. Joe just on a four streak himself. Make that five. One more for the crews. Pressure not really mounting on the net. Omid EU have not got a concentrated push, and Hicks will be the first to fall. There's the streak. Looks for the seventh. Isn't going to get it, but great time here from FaZe. Yeah, that's good stuff from Joe Deceives to hold down top mid, because you saw Omid EU. They don't want to attack right through the front end of that street hill. They want to try to take top mid control, and finally they have a little bit of that. But it's only with 15 seconds remaining on bridge. Hixie here on the one-on-one, -on -one, trying to dance with that. Joe Deceive is able to find a double before he does get traded. And now it's only a 12-point difference. If you walk away with this final five, you're going to take it all the way up to 15. But FaZe Black this time around have a nice little lead, and they're the team early set up for P1. Yeah, last time around, Omni U, they got the lion's share on P1, but kind of faltered at P2. This time, no P1 for them yet. Losing the kills, losing the control, losing the bodies they need to make this. We may not find the first. Should be traded out. Brack is looking oh, for man. him, finds it at the same time. And then when you just cannot crack this fortress. And we got to slow down. We can't continuously go one by one, even two by twos, because FaZe Black currently have control of everything through top mid. You have to try to find an initial gunfight. They see starts it off. Brat with another double. So the last two players off spawn had to try to make a miracle happen. It's still not leading to the break after they find a couple kills. As FaZe Black have been able to hold this one down basically for a full 60. This has been great for FaZe. Well, just continuing to get it. And the best part about this is that they have not flipped the spawns. They're still going to be here for P2 to begin with. Just an unbelievable amount of time. Lengthening that lead for Omidy U. It's panic stations. Yeah. It's off to P2. A P2 they must grab control of and hold. Yeah, they must try to get some time in towards the P2. But FaZe Black still had those back spawns. We saw the way that they were able to hold it down the first go around. Not finding that brick early on can really cost you if you are Omit. But Hixie trying to get it done. Only player puts up to the point. Has no ammo. Got to try to reload it. Throw your stuns. Throw your nades. You also have a grenade in your back pocket. Relying on the cover fire for your team. But at least if you're FaZe Black, you're doing a great job of just... Keeping the hill white. They're looking for this one. Dylan Rex versus Wee Man. He's got the Renetti out. He's not going to get it. And this is not what Omni U want. They are trying to keep it as neutral as possible, but they need the time desperately. Yeah. But cannot find the kills. Exceed find three, including his teammate. The lead is getting further and further away from Omni U. Phase Black holding everything they can. You just got to remember that Joe Deceives has a crew missile as well. So this final 20. It's going to get FaZe Black a nice little comfortable cushion to potentially hit a couple routes over towards the rotation or just flood their way on through with the guns that are hot. Right up through the box's side. A couple kills go in favor of Omid. We Man still trying to hold down his power position on the right side, get some assistance from Vortex. But this needs to be a full 60 hole for Omid to get back into the game. I'm going to be trying to. Hicks, trying to hold this as well, but loses the gunfight. Not having a great time here against Joe Deceives. Exceed really is going to be their X Factor, though. Continuously uh, yeah, finding yeah, yeah. kills he shouldn't find. Turning and gunning. They get two back onto it, but they don't have the time here. Already going to be a bit of another one. Exceed finds Hixie towards the back. The spawns have flipped. It's advantage to phase black once again. Yeah, this is tough, man, if you are Omit, because you need to find a break here. You can't give up all the time to phase black. They are still spawning in towards the back, but at least a couple kills go in your favor, and now all of phase spawning across the map. But now you have to do two tasks at once. You have to get this remaining junk time and try to get a full 60 at the next. But you have to account for that cruise missile that Joe he still has in his back pocket. And they're waiting. Pixie knows he's the only man who can make a difference at this point. Stays alive. Won't find the second on seven health. And this is going from bad to worse. Phase Black are making a mockery of Omen U. They cannot find the kills in the kill feed at all over and over again. There is nothing for them onto this one. 30 seconds away from a victory here for Phase Black. 
pin. If your face black, this is the victory lap right here. Let's invest the cruise missile to make sure no one's going on a deep pinch. But with Exceed dropping, Joe Deceives gains that info, but he doesn't expect the second. So potential break coming in from Omid EU. You just got to take care of Brack, and they're able to do so. Also shutting down that cruise missile. But it's only 17 seconds away until FaZe secure a top three. There we go. Joe Deceives, get out of the hell. Manages to get one, and then Brack will get a second. There's still bodies here for Omid EU, but they can't really afford to give away anything anymore at any point. We've had a fine two looks for Brack. It's a massive chow from him in the end. Always going to be difficult to get it, but now we're off the bridge, and it's still FaZe Black who have this game in the palm of their hand. Yeah, they're already finding a couple of gunfights off the rotation. I see just keeping everyone at bay on the side of Omid. They're getting closer and closer to that 250 point mark. The break has to come in, and it has to come in quick if you are Omid. Man, we'll find one. They get him off the point for now, but Exceed will find another one again and just kills flying everywhere for them as the trade's still going in favor of FaZe Black. They can bleed this out just a second at a time. Oh, we now have to commit. This may be their last push of the map, of the series, and of this entire tournament. They have to get in with three seconds to go. Back on a five killing spree. Hixie throwing bullets at nothing, but they are going home. And FaZe Black will move forward. Phase Black just came out and took care of business. A very, very tight search and destroy to at least put one on the board in the series. But the last two bats was an absolute masterclass on the side of Phase. You were out slaying them heavy on the control and in control of the map from start to finish. And then when you get to the HP, you just have such a hot start. Every single time off the rotations, they did a great job of responding at P2. But every time Omit were set up off the rotation they were getting instantly broken in by the pressure that phase black were able to apply that's exactly how you want to continue to your dominance so far in modern warfare 3 another top three placing guaranteed at the second major on the year phase black are no pushovers man exceed 30 and 22 dylan rex even though he's sitting at 19 and 19 he almost has two minutes in the hill just another situation where you're getting outslayed heavy the only one positive on the side of Omit was we man 32 and 19 get that young man some help no one came to play in that map number four and that's going to be phase black moving on it certainly will we say goodbye to Omit EU at this point it's a good finish but not the one they would have wanted for phase black it went from two very close maps to two that were not the control in the second hard point were firmly in their favor and they found a different caliber of team they will not have long to wait they'll be playing right again after this game i'm pretty sure who they're playing five media clan yes so if you're phase black obviously you're feeling fantastic five media they just called in the uav in their last series they just got hit with the swift 3-0 like you are catching these guys on the downwards like hopefully they were able to you know have some time to regain make sure that even in the panic moments we're not calling in a uav but just the ways that phase back are playing after that map number one. There's a lot more teamwork aspect. You're also getting a lot of individual plays out of the SMGs. But then even in Brack in that control, he had that takeover ability. Phase Black just looking good on a championship Sunday. They are certainly turned up when they need it the most. And there's the story of it. Omit Squig got to win the first hard point, lose the S and D in one round. Control was a blowout, and that 3-0, we talk about it sometimes, the 3-0 doesn't represent how the game went. Well, that one does. Yeah. It really was one-sided. And then Rio, hard point. Face Black started in control and never really lost it. And now they continue to move on. As we take a look at the bracket of the remaining teams still in, obviously, Lord Gold is sitting nice and comfy in that grand finals. But we just got through to that loser's semis. Now we're going into the loser's finals. Only two more games left for the challenger scene. As we're going to have FaZe Black going up against five. Five man clan, dude. I just really hope that they regain. I just really hope that they regain, man. Five media, they got to be ready to go. And FaZe Black look like they're firing on all cylinders right now, Bryce. Yeah, they certainly are. And they're going to keep warm as they head into this next one. Well, speaking of the next one, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, of course, our losers final. We're down to the top three here in Miami. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you right after this.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Call of Duty Challengers in Miami. We are down to just three teams. This is the lower bracket final. One of these teams will go home and the other will progress to the grand final shift. Yeah, I'm, I'm pumped about it. I'm actually kind of like very selfishly hoping we get an EU NA grand final. Just going to throw that out there. <laughs> I think the scene needs it. But I think the overarching point is FaZe Clan Black is coming out with some fire behind them right now after a dominant map number three, map number four against them at EU. So I, I'm, I would be a little terrified, I think, if you're a five media clan going up against the strength of this guys right here. Certainly will. Well, if you haven't been watching and need a little bit of a reminder, this is the Phase Black team. Black, you see, Joe receives and Rex. Or Dylan Rex to give him his uh, full title, I suppose. <laughs> They've had a great time. The only real loss coming against Law Gold, who currently await them in the final themselves. Yeah, that would be a hell of a rematch as well, for what it's worth. I mean, we talked a lot about that Lore Gold team kind of being a bit of a surprise, considering the recency of the roster being put together. But at the same rate, you got to think there's other things on the line here. It's not just a potential chance for a rematch, but Face Black are looking as a kind of organization, if you want to call it that, to go back to back here in the first two opens that we've had after winning Boston uh, with Brack and Exceed still in the picture. It would obviously be a first championship for Rex, and then Joe Deceives coming out of the CDL would like to try to find his way back there. So I think overall, you know, they're playing way better uh, here today than what we kind of seen them in the playoffs during North American Elite. So some good news there, I think, if you're a FaZe Clan Black fan trying to get this back-to-back -back going. Well, we'll see how they do here, of course. On the other side of them, 5 Media Clan have had a, a pretty decent run themselves. And they'll be looking to try and go a little bit further. Sucre, Super, Renko, and Yako. Maybe a surprise to some making it this far. They were never considered the number one or two team, actually, in Europe. But right now, the highest placing European squad left in this tournament. That's back-to-back -back events that they're going to be the highest placing EU team. Uh, I mean, like you said, it, I wouldn't even say they weren't just the number one nor number two team coming in. A lot of people wouldn't even consider them to be number three, considering how Clutchrain had played over the course of Season 1. So... It's one of those situations that, hey, they found their success on land, and it's continued, not just from what they did at Boston, but you kind of see the run that they went through. They were able to 3-0 Boston Academy uh, in the winter semifinals matchup, which was super impressive. Uh, the thing about it was, as they started today against Lord Gaming, it really didn't look like they were ready to play. It started to kind of get more towards what we saw yesterday by the control, but... I, Lord Gaming just put him in an absolute blender. So for five media clan, you got to find a way to get yourself going and hopefully get your game plan, you know, ready to go right off the get go here because this phase clan black team is dealing with some momentum, like we've already said. Yeah, they certainly are, and we'll find out. Of course, I mean, uh, for phase clan black, obviously they've gone through a little bit of a lower bracket run themselves Ooh. and looked pretty heated and pretty excited. But this is how this one will break down. Skiro Hardpoint, High Rise Search and Destroy, High Rise Control, Rio Hardpoint, and Invasion Search and Destroy are the maps that we will see. Yeah, and we've seen Face Clan Black uh, play High Rise, both Search and Control, quite extensively in their run. The Skid Row Hardpoint does take me a bit by surprise. Haven't seen it at all this weekend, and we rarely saw it much, I would say, kind of thinking back to at least the North American scene when we were playing through Challengers Elite. So a bit peculiar to see it come through, but it's also, I think, just a byproduct of Phase Black are actually vetoing out sub base against Five Media Clan, which it's not often we talk about the vetoes, but you know we saw Phase Black look, I would say, really particularly great on sub base, generally speaking, across both the Elite and as well throughout the time we've had them on broadcast here this weekend. Maybe save just the little bit of. Uh, mishaps that kind of happened in their recent matchup but it is a bit peculiar to see that face black are looking at that map and saying we're vetoing out one of our most played yeah maybe that was it maybe it was just uh, losing that map last time and family felt a little bit lost on it didn't really uh, enjoy playing as much as they could do so yeah maybe just a bit of recency bias in these vetoes coming through from them they've decided to take it out completely and that does mean we will see a bit of skid row moving forward the high rise session destroy that is definitely one we have seen over yeah. and over again uh, I, I think, you know, realistically, that Karachi ban there, a control from uh, Five Media Clan, was certainly a good call considering what we just saw in the last series. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of recency bias for sure. Uh, I, I think it's also well merited as well, just kind of watching FaZe play it, not just in their most recent matchup, but in the past. They're just so quick to get around the map. So uh, High Rise being the control point, is, is, I think it's going to be fine for both teams. Like we said, we've seen it a number of times. Uh, on phase black's perspective but five media are obviously no strangers to it as really no structure team should be at this point in time in the game's life history so yeah i think the biggest thing here is five media have to come out and just have a good first step in map number one there have been i think a number of things that have happened over the course of their winners finals that just was like whoa this is not the same team we saw yesterday so we need to see glimpses of that you just can't start off slow versus phase black especially in a map like skid Row.
You certainly can. Oh, well, speaking of starting off slow, we are getting this one underway. And we'll see these two teams now eventually throw down who comes out on top. Is it going to be a hot phase, black or a cold five media clan? That is the question. And only time will tell us. Yeah, absolutely the case. I mean, I think importantly, you know, looking at the sub base from both these teams' perspectives, both like to play rotations very similarly. You know, get one player to kind of make a rogue route happen. If that creates the opportunity to flip spawns, then great. If not, then try to use your ARs to manipulate some of the sides of the map that could eventually get you good looks at moving spawns around. So when you look at a map like Skid Row, where you put a lot of your attention and focus towards P2, towards P5, that has to be the case. And Exceed has already stun checked Tunnel, hiding into a corner over towards Checkers. He will also be stunned in return. But the prediction, maybe not as perfect as you would think from Yako. Trades are decent and 5 meter are playing for spawns right now. See, just going to soak this phase black. I know they can get the lion's share of time here. They don't have any P2 control, so they will set it in. Sucre, though, so that, hey, if there's no pressure coming over towards P2, we can certainly make a play for this as well. Renko's going to find another kill here. Jonas Seeds has to stay alive. He knows he's outnumbered. Find the first. And just bleeding time. Actually, just benefits here, 5 yeah. Media Clan. Every single second, they can take away from phase black. The thing is, as that kill comes through, look at the movement across the map. Phase Black are trying to move the spawns around again, and they have forced Rencore to spawn out, but the kills that follow are not there. So 5 Media will be empty from time on P1, but perfectly set up, largely speaking, in terms of how you get yourself going for this time here in the second. Yeah, and this P2 hold, if they uh, do it flawlessly, will actually give them an advantage, but Tunnel's been left open. Garage has been blown completely as well. They've invested heavily on Ticket side, and no way. now they can lose this almost instantaneously. That is not how I saw that going, Bryce. <laughs> I mean, it just looked like like you called. Five Media were expecting the hit to come down towards Ticket side, and no one even looked that tunnel. I mean, they didn't just not guard it. No one was even looking at it in any regard, but Rancor up top, Exceed has no idea that he's being shot at, which is a bit unfortunate. He had a lot of things to worry about, but I mean, all things told, even though FaZe get counterbroken, it really doesn't feel like that much of a loss considering how quick they were able to break it in the first place. And now you're letting 5 Media really only get about 35 seconds of the time here. I don't know what happened on that P2, but it wasn't pleasant from both <laughs> sides. And now we go into the next set of rotations. Realistically, FaZe Black did a good enough job to break it. They will have a little bit of control here, but keep on that meme map. They were outnumbered until Joe Deceives took that kill. That's a good point. Yako also, just for what it's worth, another slow start in the opening map ones. That has been the case every time they've been on broadcast to this point. Rex just trying to finesse a little bit. Is Super stuck in the map? He is like so far down here. Okay, there he is. Finally pops back up. He was so far down below that staircase. No one was able to see him, but kill still come through. Yako hitting the same route. Joe deceives the next one in line. Those are impressive shots. This face black will hold on to the hard point. They've got another kill the lines a little bit. Got to be careful because, of course, Joe Deceives, that is an outrageous rival. Nine shot, and Exceed will come through as well as they're hitting the rotation on both sides. Exceed, a little bit of timing there. Did not see the player from 5 Media Clan get through. Looking for Yako. Nades exchanged. And neither able to get even a hit marker on it. Yeah, this is not the worst-case scenario overall. I mean, you're dealing with 50-50 splits, and that's just not going to be good enough for 5 Media. Just how the map has gone to this point, the trends and patterns are turning up in favor of Phase Black, not just because of the weirdness from P2, but that was a very complete hold here on 3. And again, the status around our new hill is turning up in favor of Phase Black. Great start here for the North Americans. Yeah, you're right. You cannot allow rotations to keep happening like this. Phase Black now looking to lock it down. Frack deep into the apartment. We'll find one already. Oh. Not the second. Yakko will get him. Little bit of pressure now, building for five media clans as they look to use these numbers to their advantage. This is all about what Brack could do from this spawn, topside god stairs. He's got to try to hold on to this tunnel push because this 2-2 hit, very difficult to deal with. And wow, not a single kill. Finally, Super gets involved, but that was a 4v3 situation, really a 4v2 to start. And five media don't find anything until Super's the last one up. Now, this is the most important part. You already see Face Black, they've lost a couple of bodies into this rotation. But for 5 Media Clan, they have to hold it all the way towards it. Sucre right at the back here on top of the crates. They know the pressure's about to hit them as they go for this across. Exceed will get close, but they need the trades to go their way. 5 Media Clan are struggling for points here on this map. Yeah, this feels like P2 all over again. Heavy investment over towards the ticket side. Nearly a free route through tunnel. The only difference is Rancor kind of spawns out, and he will use that as a chance to pinch up the play and keep 5 
media at least somewhat involved around the hard point. Not comfortable enough, though, to jump in for any time. And now you've got Joe Deceives <laughs> beaming over the top of the heady. Exceed, getting into the hard point. He will clean things up. And even though five media were set up on rotation first, it's phase getting the early time. Five media clans just having no luck at all. They are giving up rotations to get the next one and then getting no points from it. Face Black are wrecking them completely and totally so far. It will be Echo who tries to get in here to try to stop the bleeding, but they've got to get the trades in a bit of a better position. Sigur will go down. Rinko will get one, though, but still timing Unreal. control of Phase Black. Unbelievable. I mean, it's borderline one of those moments that you walk away maybe not as impressed as you are kind of embarrassed a little bit for five media. That is three rotations that they were set up for first and came away with less than 10 seconds in the early time. It's just not something you would often see. And for a game, honestly, Bryce, that's like outside of Joe DeSeed's kind of having his way, you take him out of the picture, they're not getting terribly outslayed. Not by enough to think that this is a nearly 100-point game. So, I mean, it's just, wow. I don't I don't know what to say. This is just not the five media club we saw yesterday. And then they've got to worry because they need all this time on P1 and then got to hope for a miracle onto P2 for Phase Black. They can play this pretty much however they like. Contest this for a little bit. Try and take the time away or go for that rotation. Right now, it looks like they're just going for the contest. Maybe a tunnel push coming down against Sukri as well. As the players dance around, Renkor is looking for it. Isn't going to find it. Yeah. Still bodies on both sides. Yeah, a little desperate in nature, it feels like, but it's going to have to be. I mean, you're dealing with 200 to 63. At least, again, I, I hesitate to bring it up, but 5 Media, first one's rotating to P2. Yako, good trigger discipline. Cleans up ticket. Okay, we don't have to heavy invest with numbers if Yako can double up like that. So, this setup looks much more complete. The only thing is, for FaZe, they will have a little bit of space to work with, as there's really not anyone particularly forward on ticket here. It's just down to, what does Super find off of this off-spawn behind the play? They're waiting for the players to be behind them as well. Super will clean that up and just... Breaking the concentrated effort Unreal. for them, but Joe finds too, and now all that pressure will just jump straight onto them. Look how far out they're putting them. They've already called this face black. No, they're coming behind them as well. But bodies flowing towards this point. If they can get this even, take it down there at the top, and Dylan Rex will do it. That takes even more time away for Five Media Clan. They only got about 32 seconds on P2. Inexcusable, just flat out inexcusable. I, and maybe this was just a good heads up veto process play from Face Black. I mean, 5 media, I'm sure we're thinking, hey, we got phase in our t in our sights. We know they like to play sub base. We're probably going to get it. I don't know. But this skid row has been miserable for 5 media clan. And again, it's outside of Joe Deceives. You look at the scoreboard. It's like they're not getting heavily outslayed. Like they're down almost 160 points, essentially. I just, wow. It, it, this is a blow away map for phase. Unbelievable start yeah. for them. That's the problem. Faze do have a Joe Deceives. <laughs> Joe Deceives is pushing the tempo over and over again. Most interactions on his team by quite some margin. Still has the same amount of deaths as everybody else, but just 10 more kills. By Media Clan eventually getting to the point. They have a chance to lock this in for some good amount of time, but it will have to be back to back to back yeah. in terms of rotations if they want to come back into this game. At least they're getting a lot of guaranteed time here. This allows an opportunity for them to kind of stretch over the middle of the map, feel out where Phase Black are. You win a couple of individual gunfights, maybe. Maybe there's a chance to get yourself early set up over to this rotation into Butcher, but the problem is Brack is already kind of playing this back apartment position. He will lock in spawns for Phase Black over towards his laundry side. And yeah, all face black members will spawn up ready to go here for the fourth hill. Yeah, you see, doesn't even check the position that they thought he was going to. Now players coming through tunnel will eventually go down. Yako will find two and Yako will find three. Brack last one alive trying to stay here and just play his life so his teammates can reinforce him easier than they could do. But it's been a great rally here from Five Media Clan finally turning up into the series. And it's Yako on six that's been maybe the biggest catalyst so far. Super on the cross. Checked it over towards small tunnel. You gotta win one of those. Oh no, three for one goes the exchange. Now it's just down to Sukri who nearly does it himself, but the break is in. And with that, Phase Black will reinforce the chance to win the game here, Bryce. Yeah, and it's almost certainly game here with eight seconds left to go. Rencor will find two, but it's going to be a dive for the point. Just have to get in. That's all you got to do. Pile through. Yako, how do you make that kill? He was behind you at the time. And they pull it out of the fire with three seconds to go, but the rotation is already in. Phase Black looking to put the dot on top of the eye in this win. And surely another miracle can't happen for Five Media Clan. Yeah, and as I say, you need to call the cruise missile out immediately. The problem was the couple of Strail kills that came through allow Phase Black to essentially 
mitigate a lot of the pressure that Five could find with numbers on rotation. This is still an even battle over the top of the fifth hard point. Brack in the back has already collected one. Joe deceives through mid on the chase, but Yako puts him to rest. 23 and 15 now from Yako. Again, lighting things up late in this map, number one. Five Media Clan haven't really started playing until the second half of this one at all. But they have started playing, and that is the difference. Oh! They are burning them out of this at every single stage of it. Only three seconds to win here for Face Black. Five Media Clan are holding on by bleeding fingertips. You just Surely can't. they cannot continue this level of pressure. And you can't panic here if you're Face Black. You can win this in a multitude of ways, and okay. Good patience there. <laughs> I thought for a second they may have let it go a little bit too long, but... No, they had so many opportunities to win that map. You just can't let it get out of sight in terms of, hey, well, all we need to do is rotate once if we absolutely have to. But heroic efforts there from 5 Media to at least keep it close. You kind of thought for a moment just watching Yako and Sukri dance around in P4 that, hey, wait a second, these guys aren't done yet. And I'll tell you what is really telling is the end of that map. The celebration wasn't really evident on Face Black's face. We've seen before them stand up and shout and kind of get loud when they get a win, but they were certainly feeling a little bit of stress. It was more of a relief for that map to be over than a jubilant victory. Yeah, no, absolutely the case. I mean, it's one of those things that <laughs> whenever I see Exceed load up against the Spanish, I think of one clip, and it was from Boston, where Exceed likes to say the words, I always run the Spanish. Every year, I run the Spanish. <laughs> but this time, it is Joe freaking deceives. 28 and 22. And that's a slowdown, right? I mean, he slowed down there in the last couple of hard points. It was largely Bracket Exceed that got the job done over the top of P5. But like you said, at one point in time, we were kind of exiting away from the murals over towards the barbershop. And Joe DeSeeves was like 26 and 12. The guy was just all over the place. Top engagements for his squad. Still getting over a minute worth of hard point time as well. Yeah, he's definitely feasting in this challenger's environment. Wow. It was a, a very interesting hard point. It just, like I said, it didn't seem like Five Media Clan were even in the same level as Phase Black. And you have to give them credit for really turning back up in that series. You, you just have to. It wasn't a good showing. If it had ended as early as it could have done, we would be talking about Five Media Clan not being great. But they finally showed us the reason they had made it to top three. Yeah. And it's just, again, it's I, I hate to keep bringing it up, but... You just cannot afford to have a slow start versus a phase black squad that's just coming off of a hot win like that. And it was just too slow. I mean, we're dealing with another 150-point gap at one point in time. So you take that away. You hold one single rotation, which they won a handful of them. I mean, they were set up first for like three straight hard points and didn't come away the victors of the hill in any of those instances. So you go back to that first rotation of hard points and you just hold one of the three better between P2, 3, and 4. You probably win that map, which you don't want to sit and you know mentally do gymnastics around for too long because you got to load into a tough high rise surge. But it is one of those situations that it's just a slow start that kind of costs Five Media a chance of taking an opening map. Wow. Let's see if they uh, are fully feeling themselves now. Of course, they rallied late into it, but now maybe just carry that momentum on. See if you, what you can do in the search and destroy. And for goodness sake, please stay away from the edges of the map. We've had far too many people fall off today. Yeah, I was sitting watching that match last time. Oh, yeah, like three or four people that just like bounced off the side of the map. Yeah, it's too comedy. Stuns and aids over the top as Face Black are thinking about moving to A, but you can stay on the map or you can stay off of it. There are threats on both sides here. Bryce says the propane tank will explode. Take Yako out. There is at least fortunately a trade, but Face Black have essentially ruled the B part of the map at the moment. Yeah, Face Black have had some struggle as well coming towards this B side, or at least dominating in the last series. Super decides to uh, get out of there. <laughs> he's in bodies everywhere he's gone. Going to back off. Face Black might be looking at an A plant here. Doesn't happen that often, especially no. with this many players still on the map, because you can be taken off it very, very easily. But they've taken control of the enemy team's spawn. And that's the big key, right? I mean, Exceed can just pepper shots onto both players and just keep them far enough to allow the bomb to get planted for free. So now it's just down to raising the alarms. You know that one player was seen at propane. That's now over towards the elevator, but you don't know 100% where Super's gone and he may just come around the back of this play. Yeah, and have an opportunity to break this post plan apart. Problem that Five Mini Clan are going to have is that it's hard to plant here. It's also hard to defuse. They need to find the kills. Super checking his corners. Joe Deceive, though, realizes the danger. Rencor's going to go for it, but Brat gets that cross kill. 
And that is the danger. If that bomb goes down at A, it is a horrible retake. Yeah, especially like you called out very appropriately with Exceed getting into your defensive spawn like that. It's just, it totally eliminates your ability to rotate. Like you have to go all the way through the underground to even have a chance at fighting back over. So, I mean, at least fortunately, they're able to trade things out to make it manageable. But once you clean out that part of the map, then it's like, okay, they could be top heli. They could have rotated over to the other side of the middle of the map and played it from top propane. There's just so many angles that you can watch that post plant from. So, now you're absolutely right. Face Black just finding themselves a gap and very aptly push through it to allow the vacancy to plant in the first place for free. Oh, here comes the B fight. Echo will get that first blood. You see, he's coming under an awful lot of pressure. Tacticals and nades just exploding all around him. <laughs> Propane tanks, explosive barrels. This time, a much more traditional gunfight. Yako will drop, so 3v3. And it's one of those engagements that you kind of look at from Yako's perspective and say, well, well, why? There's no need to have to keep bouncing in and out like this, especially with the focus happening over towards Beast. And now your flank is wide open. Shots from Joe Deceives also pressuring top propane. So now it's just down largely to face it black. If they can find success off this flank, they'll be surrounding this site pretty quickly. Now Brack just checking every single angle. They don't know exactly where 5 Indy Clan are going to be, but they find the first one. What? And the second, Sukri dives into gunfire. And now Renko's been found alone and, and picked out. That's kind of not great. Where is he going? I mean... If you're going to double stack elevator like that, double stack it. Assume that they don't know that two of you are there. But again, I think it actually all proceeds before that play even happens of, I mean, Yako, if the, if the plan is to go over towards this B site, there's really no need to push out into lower blue or even even to take a look into A. If your whole intention is to watch the flank, then watch the flank because as soon as that opens up, there's no one even close for five media to keep tabs on that double hit that pushed through. And then the the baffledness of Sukri pushing out right there is beyond me. It's just a, a big misplay, and FaZe Black will punish the mistake every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Well, five media clan have had opportunities, but they haven't gone their way. Phase Black, another attack, and Exceed will get that first blood onto Super, and it looks like they're going for this one very, very aggressively. Mm -hmm. Could be trouble for them. There are bodies going to be in here. That smoke works both ways. Yeah, the problem was Sukri, who was in the site, kind of misses a window as he was right in front of two phase members, but did not have a clean angle because, like you mentioned, that smoke was such a deterrent. And now, all of a sudden, Phase Black, you can kind of feel the strategy is a we're just better. Running it down mid, running it into B. Rancor had been seen previously. He's trying to just delay, kill a little bit of noise, create some doubt, but this is still a 1v4, pretty impossible situation. And yeah, he will be dealt with by Brack on the flank. Wow. I've made the clan really struggling against what does seem to be a phase black ready for Championship Sunday. Yeah. The difference between these two teams, it just it just seems to be that phase black seem to jump on every opportunity they are given they get a little bit of luck a little bit of gun skill and the rounds end up just keep going their way 3-0 now to phase black by media clan really struggling to get on board yeah it's just nothing is going their way at the moment and the thing about it is there's it's not that they're just being completely blown out that last round sure but the first two are very winnable rounds for five media just comes down to a couple of lapses in the setup or the decision making and Sukri, this time, looking to take the SMG down low. Hard to say if that was a phase stun or not, because there's really no one nearby defensively to read this, except for Joe, and yeah, he's pretty alert. So that stun must have come from his right hand. And now Phase Black kind of are aware that this pressure is over towards the B side at the moment. Here we go. See with the first blood. My media clan need to find something different. Cannot keep giving up these first bloods and try to come back into the search and destroy Right now, they are just waiting. That bomb will go down. Dinarex will check this for the nade. Doesn't fully connect. Exceed. Plays top heli. Everyone knows that, but this time it's Brack there to assist on it. Sukri does well to at least counteract the trade down low, and Yako follows up. So, 2v2 we go. Exceed on the hunt. Joe Deceives playing top window. Both they are is playing both SMGs at the moment, but Exceed kind of slips the net, finds the kill. Now it's just down to Yako for the 1v1. Great job to recover here because now they have to find him. And they do not know where Yako will be. Many places he can slip the net, but maybe it's the perfect bit of timing and he won't get away. 
An exceed on a four streak. We'll find it. A defuse comes in. Phase Black get another round, but it was a great regain there from Five Media Clan. Oh, it really was. I, I mean, again, it's just one of those situations that you know, Jay's probably sitting here and wiggle shots away from either perspective. The tally what could have been first blood, but Five Media will still turn out in favor. After the first engagements come through, Joe trying to free force the gunfight versus Sukri. Not going to work out. And defensively, Five Media, whoa, so much better. And a lot of that, just that long range, taking good AR gunfights. And that's what they needed. Got the first blood, capitalize on it as well. Able to hold off Joe Deceives, who's trying to just take the players off the headies. And finally, maybe a little bit of life here. Slow to start in the hard point. Maybe just slow to start in the S&D. Yeah, it's, again, just, I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> it's just one of those situations that the trends keep popping up in favor of FaZe. And, you know, that's a good kind of regain moment for 5 Media to get something established, saying, okay, you can't just run through us like FaZe Black did in their prior offense. But still need to see something of conviction to start turning the trends around. And this time it's a three-man hit through B, at least the bottom part of blue, to get to B. And Rex is in position for it. Joe Deceives is also playing a very similar spot that he had been previously. And FaZe Black defensively really not too stressed out about this hit. Echo has been found. Didn't really get anything out of it. Does have some reinforcements here, but they both know at the moment you cannot play that A site. They do not have the numbers to get over here to make it safe with the trade. They will be going back to B. The thing is, those shots do pull face black over towards this A site on a passive route, though. So it does create some opportunities here at B. Just due to the fact that FaZe had to at least respect the fact that A was really not all that well contested. So now all of a sudden, with the hit actually developing towards this B site, Yako's made his way up the stairs. It's an MCW in Rex's hands versus Yako with Rival 9. The awareness is in, though. Shots come through, but Yako's out of there. Somehow escaping with his life. Rex is going to challenge as well. They get that one back into it. Advantage to five media clan. Exceed. Being aggressive. Timing might be perfect. Does. Uh -huh. Gets him down. Run for his life. Someone will have to jump onto that bomb. Ranker's going to try to stick for this, and he may get gifted the chance to actually get it down. Brack, can he contest the exit? Sure can. Now 1v1 with Super. Not 100% confirmed on where Super had been repositioned to. But Brack, again, just takes a sneaky long route. It's exceed from a couple of rounds ago. Brack here, and the self-proclaimed duo get it done in two different 1v1s, and now Face Black's up 5-1. Yeah, it's not going great. I mean, 5 Media Clan, they lost the first blood into that one. Got the numbers back in their side. Still lost the round. Timing is not against them. Coverage is not against them. They are being broken down piecemeal across the map. And now this map could be over in one more flurry. Oh. It's just another masterclass from Face Black across the board, right? I mean, the individual plays, obviously really the only moniker of success in a couple of these rounds you already mentioned exceed and brack winning the 1v1 those are rounds that very well could have gone the other way but the aggression out of phase black has also been very difficult to deal with oh my goodness does it get worse than that barrels smoke and barrels on fire yako tries to get through the offensive spawn gets blown up on his way through the door unreal oh secret Let's get a second here. They have numbers again. Wrinkle's been seen. General Rex is waiting to see if he makes a mistake. Oh, the timing is not for him. Wrinkle will take him down. Frack now desperate for one, but surely... I mean, Wrinkle actually stuck the challenge out. Didn't even need to. Could have played shoulders. Yeah, Brax has just got nowhere to go, though. That's the only issue here. Just kind of dancing. He's getting shot at from behind. Super, is he going to give him a look? Surely you don't need to here. Just use the clock. <laughs> you just, just take this one home the safe way. Rancor also feels out, and wow, Brack just nearly got a chance at the isolation, but now the time is too much of an issue. He's also getting surrounded. Rancor has had enough of this. He's just going to hop the ladder, find the free kill, and that'll be enough for 5 Media to put together another well-constructed defense, all things told. Yeah, and good credit 5 Media Clan there as well. Didn't overcommit to the gunfights. Didn't have to could keep just shouldering it and then super eventually does commit because he knows rencor's behind him and there wasn't going to be a chance of a, a miracle happening on the elevators yeah just don't give him 1v1s at that point day one card right there 
Still a long road, though. And the problem has been, what does 5BD want to do offensively? Because they have not been successful in really in any front. And on top of that, Face Black defensively have put together a very stock defense. And it's not really been to a point where they feel like they have to adjust or make any modifications. Although this time, they will play something a little bit different. You've got Joe playing a bit further forward this time over towards B. Smoke at the middle of the map, and Sukri's not going to get any connections off stuns here. They may get baited in, thinking B's more open than it actually is. Here we go, first blood. Go to Sieves. Has found one. The five meter can. They are trying to work bottom. They're trying to get in towards B. Sukri will find Joe to Sieves as well. Dylan swung this wide, but already finds just the gap he needs to bring it back to a two versus three. Worried about where this player B Street was, and I don't think he's caught it. I think Rencor might get him. It's just out of the timing because Rencor is more focused on Brack. I don't think Rencor knows how close Rex is. So it's kind of shoes on the opposite foot for both these two players. Now Rex takes the mantle route up top to Propane. Still hunting through the middle of the map, but 5 Media are all over this B site. Plant comes through. Rex will see the exit, find the freebie. Rencor just below him would have to go 1v3. I'm wondering where on earth his last player is going to be. Renko will have to make a move. That bomb is being defused. Bodies already here. Finds the first. Not no going to chat out though. So that's going to be an easy ending. Ninja under his face. Doesn't check it. And that'll be FaZe Clan Black taking map number two. Nick Seed letting them know it was a very good game. And I appreciate you guys showing up. <laughs> There's one thing you can count on from Caden. His trash talk is unlike anyone else's. He just gives you a very <laughs> matter-of-fact statement of, you're not good. You're not good. You need to get better. Like, that's just the, all he does. And, and that seemed to have been maybe some of the words that were shared. But, wow. I, I mean, it, it all starts back with the slow start conversation again, doesn't it? I mean, map one, that was the case. We're dealing with a 150-point gap plus in map number one. And then here again, we got to a point where it was, I think, 4-1 at, at best for the side of uh, five media clan. And, and you, again, you look over the course of the kills and the deaths, it's pretty much even. It's just... A couple of 1v1s don't go your way. A couple of mistakes in decision-making, playing around the post plant don't go your way. And, you know, those rounds could definitely go, you know, the opposite direction, depending you play it just a touch better. It's, it's a really kind of forehead statement for me to make, but that's the big difference maker. And it's just, again, surprising to see a 6-2 scoreline on the scoreboard considering how close the KDs were by the end of it. Yeah. And I think, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think. I mean, that one was egregious, by the way, just going through it. The oh, movement yeah. there was not the time. Already knew the player was overwatching. Just jumps out straight ahead of it, but it, it almost felt like FaZe Black had more reps on this map. And it's a weird way to put it, because obviously 5 Media Clan would have played it quite considerably, but sure. it, it did seem like at times they just knew how to work the map better. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think it's actually more highlighted by, we kind of saw it in the replay clips of Exceed with like 12 seconds left before he needs to actually play for the Diffuse. He takes a long route around the back of the B site, and then Brack almost does the exact same thing, but on the other side of the map around a B post plant, whereas for 5 Media, they're just assuming, hey, the clock's running down. I just got to play over the top of this bomb, and they get just surprised by it. So, yeah, just that little bit of subconscious knowledge, knowing that we've got the time to make this play happen, it's likely going to catch him by surprise because why would anyone check this with 11 seconds to the clock? You'd, those little things can definitely give you that feeling. So I, I think you're right to call it. It's definitely a map that we saw Face Black play a ton during the group stage and playoffs in Season 1 of Elite. Their biggest issue it really just came down to they weren't playing with their numbers all that well. I, I will say that that has not been a problem, though, for the last couple of weeks, and that was reflected there as well map number two. It really wasn't. Five Media Clan, they find themselves with a very uphill struggle if they want to make it to the grand final here. One more map potentially left in their tournament run if they don't turn things around. Well, we're going to have to find out how the control plays out between these two squads after the break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more challenges here in Miami.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Call of Duty League Challengers here in Miami. You are joining us in the lower bracket final. The only three teams remain. These two will be looking to knock each other out. Right now, FaZe Black are doing a very good job <laughs> of it. Five Media Clan not had that much fun the last two map shift. No, none at all. I mean, really outside of the possibility of a comeback in map number one, where they ended up getting within 50, it's really been the only thing that Five Media can look back on. Again, the slow start there, and that was followed up by a pretty slow start in the search and destroy. Leads us to a control that I wouldn't necessarily be feeling much better about. Uh, the only thing that we can say is we have seen both these two teams play this control. Face Black played it quite a bit back during Season 1 of Challengers Elite, but Five Media have put on the spawn trap a couple different times here in this particular event in Miami. So this would have to be where they find their success. And you would hope to be able to do it dominatingly so to try to regain a little bit of momentum jumping into the rest of the series if you're five media. Well, let's see if they can do it. Haven't really shown us as much as they would have liked to so far. But this is their last chance. If they do not find a way over phase black in this map, they will be going home. Wow. Not the way you want to start. <laughs> Propane blows up and Brack gets you from across the map. Now you're doubled up on towards B. I mean, there's just, uh, wow. I mean, this five media team looked unreal yesterday and now they look like, I don't even know what. It just, it's just, they're completely outmatched. Uh, Brack and Co are just running through them. Five are trying to get in towards the front of the spawn, but not really working out all that well. Good patience for FaZe back onto the B zone. All right, so here's an interesting, the only reason that five media clan were able to recover that so fast, by the way, is simply because there aren't trophies on the map yet. Oh, true, yeah. But if the they thing were about it is, onto this one, they wouldn't have been able to just barrage it, and it probably would have been a far stack by Phase Black onto that point. Yeah, absolutely. But it's one of those things too. You kind of look at the discipline for Phase Black, and you know they're not stacking on with full players. They're still just holding onto this back alley. You keep your eyes up towards Heli Stairs, and you know it's been still very successful. Five have regained nicely. They stopped the second tick of progress, and they've reduced the life lead just down to two. But I say that, and Phase Black right back into the action, trying to get back onto B. You see, knows where Super is going to be. He's waiting for it as well. He's going to see the pixels, but not going to be enough. And Super gets away as well. You see, he gets stunned. Still waiting for reinforcements as just the barrage continues. And eventually blown out of there, literally. And now Yako can start to get forward off this. It's a great route hit by Yako. Yeah, a good for two. Saw that Exceed was nearby. Stun will delay the regen a little while longer. Semtex will finish him off. So... Good play here from FaZe Black to avoid the spawn trap, but the problem is the clock still not able to earn this second ticket of progress. Exceed will jump on and it stalls at 26 seconds on the clock. Trying to get back onto it now. That's what they want. Have to wait. You can see those trophies working overtime. I mean, kind of going for this. They are stacking it. Yakko misses miss the jump. Let's go around. Now extra 60s in, but the life lead only marginal and whoa big gunfight win there by yako keeps it to within two and i think the biggest problem here is that 12 lives not a tremendous amount when it comes to being able to use that as a chance to win this a zone so lots of focus here towards brack on one side sukri on the other both are trying to play spawn traps there we go slow peak brack wants to get as many as he can here at least open up the map for his team you see them now rushing to reinforce Five Media Clan will be working the angles, trying to get him out of this point as well. He finds the first. Can he find the second? No, but reinforcements have flooded in as they get onto eight. That bomb, though, has gone off and maybe stopped Phase Black for a few seconds. Oh, but they know Exceed has gotten through the back line. It just comes down to the timing here. You've got a 5v2 situation with 43 seconds on the clock, and Phase will jump on the zone. This will force Five Media to have to deal with it. Brack able to find the first. Sukri with the pistol out will convert, but he's got to do it all himself, and Joda Seeves will win the last gunfight. I don't think a full tick got secured at A, but regardless, a huge first offensive round win. It just comes down to cannot keep. You can see that the back line cannot keep the pressure up on them. That's a huge first win, realistically, for Face Black. If they can now just hold them a little bit or at least put them in a spawn trap, it could be curtains. Yeah, get it, coming away with the first offensive round win is surprising to say the least not often you see that and like you mentioned the trophy system makes it very difficult or lack of trophy systems make it very difficult 
to capture either zone. So the fact that they were able to get full three ticks at B plus the win by elimination, pretty significant. Definitely calls for 5B to have to respond in kind, if not do it a little bit better here. And not the greatest of starts. Two for one favoring phase black. And now they're on their way over towards the offensive spawn. This is all they need to do. Continue to put the pressure on phase black. Continue to try and get it, but already lost a couple of kills across it. And Frank looking to take up a bit of a power position. And they are still winning this. Yako has really been the difference maker. It doesn't show in the kill fee, uh, in the in the scores, but they've been very important kills he's been making. It just comes down to can they follow up off of it? Because, like you said, the space is nice. Progress at B is starting to come through here. But you can see what FaZe Black are trying to do. Is try to regain this helicopter control. And wow, that's the way we get back in? We just slide through mid? I mean, talk about just the utmost amount of confidence. Redcore's still alive, though. Keeps the play open here for five media. Second ticket progress. Sure, they're going to get locked as he gets on to three in a row. Back out, though. Back again. And Dylan Rex will find one. Just needs to find another. And they're still going to just lock them down here. And Dylan Rex is a great call. Just completely send it on him. Out of the gap, Sukri now trying to work blue. He's going to find one at least, and nobody to pick him up either. Eventually, will get taken down. This is where it balances now for 5 Media Clan. They have been pushed back all the way into their spawn. They need to get out and get onto B. Good shots from Rancor across the map. Maybe a chance to deal a little bit more punishment over towards the face spawn. Not fully able to convert the kills, though. So the clock continues to take away. Third tick of progress. Still needs to be work on, but Super's in a great spot. To just jump right on it. The thing is, he hadn't seen Brack on the staircase below him. So now Brack kind of steps up to the elevated position. Lots of damage into the first. But can't quite confirm the kills. Extra 60 seconds gets tallied. And again, Bryce, we look towards that life count. 12 plays 11. This could come down to eliminations again. Oh, there's a big two as well. They'll be looking to strike into this. Trying to get some more kills off of the rip. They see the fine Yakko. Super just throwing bullets as well. They know this is the crucial time. Face Black, they are vulnerable coming out of their spawn and they're looking for it. Sucre will find Exceed. Dylan Rex is desperate to find out whoever's down low. Hasn't found anyone yet. Big 1v1 win. Just as we swap away. Keeps the pressure on to 5 Media to have to find success with this play from Super. I mean, he should have Joe Deceives for free here. He's just wanting to check if he can get more than that before he alerts his position and he's got Rex at range. Not the cleanest shot, but it still works out nonetheless. Oh, and Brack, who's gone up top, doesn't fully get seen. Now Super's kind of stuck in a bit of a corner, but he's got a little bit of assistance. The shots that are coming through keeps Brack at bay, and still the isolation has to come through, and Super's done well. Three kills straight for five media. Now they can stop the clock at a 6v2. And it's just the shoe is on the other foot. Five media clan have maybe just ran through and done the exact same thing that Face Black did to them. They've been standing up after that round, all tied up. Wow. Good heroic play coming out of Super. And this is kind of when Super plays like this, you start to feel like 5 Media have a chance no matter how long this series may go. I mean, obviously, it would have to go 5 for them, but he's always been kind of that X-Factor catalyst for this squad. Him and Rencor both in 18 and 11 on six in a row as Super through two rounds, one of which obviously didn't quite go their way, but here he's the hero. And that puts us into essentially a deadlock as well, by the way. I mean, the tick progression is just about even. So, 5 Media doing what they needed to do. Well, let's see. It's been a big A push here. They're going to go for this one early. Doesn't mean 5 Media Clan can kind of get B control and go straight down the street. This is not an easy thing to hold at the best of times, especially when you lose that gunfight. Now too many angles to hold. Dylan Rex tries to get out of there, tries to stay alive and push hut, but will fall at the same time. And 5 Media Clan find themselves with an opportunity of pushing them into the spawn. Oh, big time. You called that absolutely perfectly, Bryce. I mean, it really is down to the fact that if you get that B-side control, you trust your teammates to clean up on the individuals that had still existed over towards A. And maybe there's a chance to put in the spawn trap, but the kills don't come up at all for 5 media. So now we're in a 25 plus 25. Joe's gotten free entry towards B. Brax in your spawn, at least for a small time. And that's enough pressure for Super to have to call out the cruise missile just to clear the zone. They found it. They managed to slow it down. Dylan Rex is the only player out now. You see 5 Media Clan. They know this. They're looking for him. Ah, this is such a tough gunfight. Whoa, dramatic fall off the map with the ragdoll afterwards. And following up, Brack now all of a sudden has a chance to kind of create pressure on both fronts. 
Steps onto A for a moment, but is more focused on trying to get in towards your spawn. And 5 Meteor are very aware that this is the play. They're going to have to chalk up the majority of this B zone unless they can find kills immediately. Rack doesn't even get one this time, though. And now that opens it up, you can already see FaZe Black. They're a little bit worried about it. They're not putting bodies that deep onto B. They're just waiting to see if they can find the kills first. Oh, they've pushed Rancor off of really one of the only challenging angles that 5 Media could have used at a safe distance. And yeah, Rancor just doesn't wait for the regen. So not much of a chance there to actually give that much of a contest. Super back on his normal super nonsense right through the middle of the map. Try to get a little bit of pressure onto FaZe, but largely pushed off without concern. And now the focus for FaZe with an extra 60 seconds can purely go over towards the A zone. All leave caught in lives. A minute 25 on the clock. Two there, though, for FaZe Black. And Rex looking for him down low. It's a very awkward gunfight, and Yeko will get away with it. Onto the point here, but Brack is alone. Reinforcements are not close. He needs those reinforcements as well. There are too many angles to check. Still, though, the contest is in. Not a great set of angles here for FaZe Black. Ooh, ah, Brack. <laughs> Player right on top of him on the boxes. Just could not quite find the lock-in with the hip fire pistol also comes up empty so two life advantage now for five media they don't get across the map too much but they're working on it exceed up top at helo will scout out sucre it's enough for dylan rex to find the free kill and now once again with the kills coming out face black can take their attention onto the zone still balanced these two teams lots of time for face black a little bit down the lives Rack. Just looking for them, but not able to get it. And give away his position. Can't get Sucre either. Will fall. This is a game of inches as everybody is flying oh. around the map and making split-second decisions over and over wow. again. But Exceed with two could have been the difference maker. 6v6. 44 seconds. One tick. Rex off the regen as well. Paul, oh, but not enough. The trophy systems don't get placed. So five media save the round for now. Stop the progress, deplete the third tick. This is likely another one of those rounds that comes purely down to lies, but Bryce, we've got a time limit of 30 seconds to find it. You missed steps first. Five Media Clan are digging in. You can already tell Super's laying down. He should be able to get at least one trade from here. They won't see him. It does eventually do it. Three versus five. Phase Black do not have the numbers anymore to carry this if they need to. It's a two versus five. Exceed now has to make a god play and a one versus five, and he falls. And five Media Clan hold on. Yeah, clean from five there at the end. Again, bailed out a little bit, if you want to call it that, <laughs> with the nades that land. No trophy system down as Rex was getting some really significant pressure and presence done to try to even get the third tick of progress completed. But the nades land, bail him out of a tough situation, and then after that, it's just... Too much map to cover for FaZe Black to get back over to the zone, nor find the kills. And now, all of a sudden, it's not just Super, it's Sukri as well. 22 and 19, 24 and 16. And pending that the scoreboard is, you know, reflective of that, it, those two waking up in these last couple of rounds, definitely a key towards 5 Media, because, of course, the scoreboard is not tracking kills correctly, but those are two players that have had two great rounds back-to-back. -back. Yeah, seems going to continue to push the tempo here. We'll eventually fall down and... Face Black, they just need to hold on. Get this to this next round, but that's what they're trying to do. Neither team really able to get a very successful spawn trap on either side of this game so far. Yeah, and that's been, I think, credit to both squads knowing what it looks like if you're going to be put into that spawn trap and making sure you create at least one avenue of exit. So it kind of forces this scuffle at the middle of the map, which at the moment, Face Black are currently winning, but Super has hit a route around through the bottom side at pit, and he's just going to take that right up the stairs in towards the mid. So now that forces succeed to again change his focus back towards this A zone. And once more, Face Black not quite able to really dominate the middle of the map, leaving opportunities for 5 BD to still keep this offense alive. Yeah, either team just continuously finding kills. The trades are just flowing like water. There's neither side really able to get a lock onto it. Rencor just waiting for Brack, obviously waiting for a little bit of reinforcements. Going for the tower as well. Rencor stays alive for as long as he possibly can. But five minutes of the clan are already out. They're looking for helipad control this time. Yeah, this is a big 1v1, and Sucre just doesn't really have a chance at the gunfight. So now, all of a sudden, pressure's on. Yako has to be a bit of a hero here at B. The rest of his teammates mostly being kept at bay because of Rex's position. Gets caught maybe with a Semtex out, but Brack and Exceder right there for the crossfire. So now the kills come through. Super, maybe a small lifeline here in old. They predict the wrong corner for Yako. Brack able to confirm the kill. First tick getting depleted. Clock still ticking away as well. They're holding it 15 seconds. Five Media Clan, this is all about now. Just rushing to the point over and over again. 
And that's where the problems come <laughs> and exceed a turn of burn and a propane on fire. As they will just rebuff all the Fire Media Clan and with six seconds to go. Surely there's no way back into any of it. They're going to dive eight. And that might stop with a second to go. Yeah, but 16 plays eight. Kills are just not turning up for Five Media. Wow. That little snap-on drop shot double from Exceed across the map. Yeesh. And that will definitely guarantee the FaZe Clan Black will be starting on the round five defense. But again, it's just one of those things that mental warfare starts to come into play after what had been a very back-and-forth affair. This round four was anything but. And that's going to have to be something in the forefront of Five Media's minds as they try to go to this next offense. Wow. Here we go. Pressure on Five Media Clan. They must get one more round of control just to stay alive in this tournament. And it's an attacking round they will need. The phase black, they can end this as a 3-0. But they just have to hold the pressure at bay. Wow. What do you got up your sleeve? Nades over the top at A. Full focus goes straight there. Exceed is just playing in the jump corner over towards the outside at Shaq. Brack able to take care of a trophy system, but you still have Yako on. Super trying to play towards top helo. And actually, Super kind of gives himself up here for a moment. Go to Seems just walks on into the zone. How has this been allowed to happen? Super also caught backside blue. He does at least keep the life differential close, but the opening set play for 5 media gets swarded back. Still got a little bit of map control, though. Been waiting for it. Super. I guess that's going to down just in time to get away with the nade and still finds the kill. 29 and 20 so far in this control. Looking for it, but just not getting it. And this is where it gets dangerous. It's still going to be Super, who's the furthest player out from 5 <laughs> Media Clan, waiting to try and hopefully allow his teammates to flow out. Yeah. And he will get behind two face players. Oh my goodness. Hold on here, friends. There is a chance. Super's on five, one away from a cruise missile. And you just feel like if he can get into a position to play a spawn trap corner, he should be good for six, but Rex takes him off the streak. Just when you thought five media had an opportunity, everything gets reset, and now we're down to 30 seconds again. Five media clan, they need onto it. Sukri will have to commit just to stop the clock. Finds one as well. No reinforcements, no opportunity for a trade. Face Black pushing up B Street as well. They know where Super is going to be, and he will be chowed. And he gets taken down, and surely the bodies aren't going to go for them. Dylan Rex is looking wow. for it. That's a huge snap on the Yakko, and it might be the end of the game as they are all the way back into their spawn. Yeah, just nowhere to go. Brax right in front, making sure that this window stays safe, keeping his focus on both sides. Pistol out. Doesn't quite get the job done. Maybe one more heroic effort to touch here. Can Rencourt get there in time? No, no. it's a nade from Seed. Oh, not like that. That's the way it ends. Unreal. And yep, Exceed's got a little song for them at the end. Continues to just dominate the Spanish on land. I'm sure he had some words to say that sounded just like that. Certainly did. Handshakes it towards the end, but FaZe Clan Black have been moving different on Sunday, and they have bought themselves a chance at redemption. They will go to the grand final. Five Media Clan will go out top three. It's set up for a beautiful reunion between these two squads. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to step into the ring with this face black team the way they're looking right now. I mean, that one looked like they took advantage of a squad that just was not necessarily ready to play at the same level this morning as they did last night. And that happens. You know, the day yesterday was like 9 a.m. A lot of the call times for a lot of the squads that had to start off their runs. And sometimes you catch heat and you just feel like your game gets better and better and better and better. But then you've got 10 hours worth of downtime. You wake up early in the morning. You don't get the chance to kind of rebuild that same feeling. And sometimes you come out a little bit cold. And there definitely were some slow starts, both in the upper bracket finals for 5 Media as well as here in the lower finals. But regardless of those kind of strung together moments that we can kind of insinuate on, you still have to give a lot of credit to the fact that 5 Media continued to be the best team in Europe on LAN after last year... The Spanish didn't show up at all. I mean, top 12, I think, was the best placement either squad got. More often than not, it was top 24. So to go from top six to third is still really impressive for a squad that coming into it, we didn't even consider to be the best in Europe. No, certainly so. And it just kind of bodes well for them. I mean, there's been a, a little bit of rumblings about some of the five media clan potentially going to Heretics if Heretics' uh, bad run at land continues the way well. it has been. So keep an eye on it. We spoke many times about 
this basically be the, the CDL's fishing pool. If a team is not doing well, it is the halfway point in the season. Could be big changes afoot. Yeah, and I think the thing about it that's really curious, and not to spend too much time on that talking point, but historically speaking, this group of four has not really ever played with the other players that were on the Spanish teams from the prior years. Uh, Super and Sucre have had some experience in the past playing with them, but it just never stuck. I mean, Sucre in particular was part of that Heretics roster way back during the Black Ops 4 year, but they had some kind of bad blood moment that happened in Modern Warfare 2019, and since that point, they really haven't played together at all. So if the Miami Heretics, who, let's be candid, Bryce, they should make a change. You can't go without winning a map on land in two straight events, but... If you're trying to stick to this purely Spanish-speaking roster, there very well may be some personal gripes between some of the players. But I think just outside of whatever may exist, Super should be an option. This guy is nasty. He knows how to play the game at a very high level, and he can take over, which is something that Miami, I think, desperately needs. So really good showing from him uh, as they kind of finish off their run, finishing in third. Yeah, certainly does. But sometimes uh, a good kind of finishing but never the one the players want unless it's going to be first well speaking of first we are going to have an opportunity to find out which team will make it law gaming and of course our wonderful phase clan black have made it the distance now they will face off in our grand finals which will also be a best of seven shift yeah that, that should be a really interesting one because i think if you're looking at this from lord gold's perspective as a newly put together roster having an extra veto on the control could be massive you get to essentially pick and choose where you want to play phase black and i think if i were to be guessing you probably want to get rid of the high rise based on what we've seen from them over the course of this weekend but that's all for another time it, it should be a really interesting best of seven i'm really curious to see if lord game lord gaming can actually uh continue on from about three hours ago when they played their first match <laughs> Well, let's find out. Of course, it's been a long journey, a long few days, and beautiful, beautiful Miami. But it is upon us now. One more series. A best of seven, a grand final, and a champion will be crowned. Don't go anywhere. All that and more coming up after the break. See you right after this.
Hello, one and all. Welcome back to Miami and our Challengers Open Grand Finals. Lord Gaming Gold out of nowhere representing out of the winner's bracket. Now taking a shot at FaZe Black for the second time in their bracket run. I might hold shift. That's, of course, study. Uh, I know there are games that are going on and elsewhere, but... <laughs> There's no more pivotal map than Challengers Grand Finals, baby. What are yeah. we talking about? I'm excited to get into this one. Obviously, if you're phase black, you've only taken defeat to one squad, and that was Lord Gold. Now you have a chance to right those wrongs and take them down all the way into Grand Finals and complete your perfect Sunday with a victory, trying to go back-to-back -back major champions. And on the opposite side for Lord Gold, man, these guys just get it done on one week of practice. Sometimes the honeymoon stage lasts a little bit longer <laughs> for one squad than it does for another. But these guys have been playing great so far today you show up late to your first match you still walk away with a clean 3-0 0-4 had himself a stellar performance and now you just got to do it again for the second time to try to take down phase black who have been on fire on championship sunday yeah they've looked really really good the two times we've had them on broadcast at this point and of course they also took down team war off broadcast while we were watching that upper bracket final so for phase black here is the roster brack exceed joe deceives dylan rex and Bracket Exceed are the two that are in particular trying to go back to back. In fact, yeah. I think if they win this event, that's four straight challengers events that they've won when they've played in them, dating back to Vanguard. Wow. Yeah, Toronto, Champs, and then they played uh, Boston and now here. So that would be four straight events that they've played in challengers together that they would have won. So pretty unreal stuff if that ends up coming through. Man, that's a recipe for success, man. These guys always know how to get it done. So Brack and AC, they're trying to add another one to the tally. They can walk away with this victory here. But I think if you are phase black, you know what it was like in that first go around. The ARs just didn't come to play. More specifically, Dental Rex. But today, he's been playing a lot better. We're in a situation where we haven't seen more than a map four <laughs> on broadcast all event long. So, yeah, very possible to see at least a fifth here, I think, with especially how both these two teams are playing right now. It just gets a little bit here for me because the way that Phase Black are coming out swinging today, when you get to that high-rise control, when you get to that Rio HP, they are definitely going to love those two maps. And then you follow it up with a high-rise search and destroy. So I think if you are Lord Gold, you have to come out swinging at least in the first two. You have to be able yeah. to take that invasion HP, shut down the AR presence on the opposing side, and then chain that into an invasion search and destroy because your best bet is potentially going up 2-0 because if you allow... Phase Black to steal one of these first two maps. That middle of the pack maps is all their favorites. Yeah, very much so the case. Uh, it's just one of those things that, again, I think the control bands, you know, that's where things kind of are, I think, most interesting because we've seen Phase dominate in High Rise and Karachi. But yeah. Lore have the benefit of choosing what map gets vetoed. Yeah. And so they must really not like it how Invasion has played in control. So definitely curious, to say the least. Also, just another point, you know, we've seen Phase Black really prefer playing sub base in a number of their series uh -huh. that's now two straight series where they vetoed it out so maybe some considerations there in terms of how they're feeling today yeah because they've lost it the last couple of times they have played it they've had some really really tight finishes but just allowing a player to slip on by you're losing one set of fights and you're swanning all the way across the map so you're going to force that to get out of this rotation you're going to throw a little bit of a different take on this invasion hp to start us off but this is the grand finals alan please please let me see at least a game five <laughs> Chances are in your favor, brother. <laughs> but I'll tell you, we've seen just absolute dominance in pretty much every single series from one team or another as we've gone through the entirety of this bracket, which is super surprising. I mean, we often have these events. They go we into the late hours of the night just due to the fact of map fives constantly happening. Yeah. Has not really been the case this event so far, and none of it really at all today. So, yeah, best of seven definitely gives us the best look at possibly getting a map number five, but... I don't want to bite off more than we can chew early here as another really fun fact. This is, again, a kind of a rematch in certain regards between at least the organizations in terms of making two straight grand finals. So yeah. we'll see what happens. And I'm pretty sure at least for the challenges event, this event, they've just actually been on time with time. Like, we're talking about well. all these <laughs> rosters, everything not going over time. You don't have to play at until 12 a.m. in the morning or 1 a.m. Everyone, like you said, it's been a swift 3-0, some map fours, but... We're staying according to the schedule, but the fist bumps are coming in. We already saw the fly through. We might be able to see it again, but both of these squads going to lay it all out on the line. Yeah, let's make sure we're hydrated, make sure our mouths are working, 
And just make sure we're all locked in for this final series. Just one set of four maps is all you need to be your champions. Should be a fun one, without question. Talk about a rise to fame again. If Classic and Gunless were to find themselves in a championship position, Classic was able to do it back, uh, what was it, in Vanguard? He played with Toronto Ultra Academy? Am I mistaken there? I want to say that was the case. Yeah, that's you, Mr. Challenger. I, I don't know that deep in this Challenger scene. Most likely, <laughs> all right, we'll take it. Dang. Yeah, Classic was definitely there. Um, yeah, Call of Duty Challengers Finals. There it is. See, you can never with be the wrong, guy across, With the guys across the screen from him. How about that? Sometimes I second-guess myself, Jay. I'm, I'm not as young as I used ah, to be. Yeah, but you're that is... damn good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I wouldn't expect <laughs> you to ever pull out a wrong stat, you know? Wow. That's some premium gas right there, tell you what. So... That's what's kind of on the line here. It looks like, well, not really sure what's going on. Admin's waving hands in front of faces here, so looks like we'll be delayed a little while longer before we can jump into map number one. Oh, oh four's not happy about that. <laughs> I mean, he just like, what, bro? Like, what happened? Vibes are a little bit murdered. Classic sitting there like, what the hell is going on? I just want to get into the lobby, shoot my MCW, shoot my rival on a little bit, and potentially walk away from this series a little bit richer. They are just preparing for the battle to be upon us. Yeah. This is going to be a good one, man. I'm just excited to get into it. No, me too. And like we said, there's a lot of familiarity with each other on, the, on this stage in particular. Yeah. But it's one of those things we often talk about it. It's, I would say, appropriately mentioned is, hey, we had some teams that absolutely pooped the bed in the CDL over the course of not just this event, but the entirety of this major qualifying stage and this stage in general. So you have to think that, again, the results could go a long way because you think about the players that have been picked up. I mean, Geo, Asim, those boys have looked in particularly really, really good for yeah. their squads. And there are surely going to be teams looking to make more changes. So, I mean, to that conversation point, do you have to have like a career series here if you're classic or gunless to kind of get back into the league? I guess the same can be said for Joe, Exceed, and Brack at the same rate, right? Like, yeah. what, what does it take to get looked at again? For yeah, for all, for all those guys who were formerly in the CDO, obviously you want to go out here and have a great performance. You want to make sure your name is still being heard around the venue, heard throughout the players, and just making sure you're one of those potential pickups for one of these CDL rosters. But I think those guys already had a lot of their shine. I'm more focused on these young and up-and-comers who have yet to make it into the CDL. We're talking about Dak. We're talking about 04 and even Dylan Rex. They are looking yep. for an opportunity to make their way all the way to that pro scene. And with this one match right in front of you, I'm telling you, if 04 comes out and plays the way that he did in that last series, he's definitely going to be a name that jumped up high on those AR rankings. That would be one of the most, I would say, like rapid rises. If he gets picked up after this event... First year in Challengers, played two events, that would be unreal, flat out. Mm -hmm. I would have to look back to see who would else would, I mean, kind of, not really ghosty because he played a full year of Challengers. I would have to think of, like, players that are currently in the league that have had similar rides. Like, Sib comes to mind. Like, he played all, but he played all through the Modern Warfare year. Yeah. I mean, that, this is two events. I mean, that's that would be unbelievable. The only, one, unbelievable. The only one that kind of threw me off when he didn't enter the CDL because he didn't really have a lot of success through Challengers was Capsule. That was sure. a guy who yeah, was yeah, sitting yeah, around, yeah, you know, yeah. like a top 12, potentially a top 8. But you want to try to walk away in this series as number 1, so your chances are a little bit higher. Here we go into the Evasion HP Classic, finding that first kill onto Dylan. It's one of those things we talked about when we were watching this lore team earlier. When Classic has a good respawn series, it's hard to beat his squads, whatever it happens to be on. It was the case back in Vanguard when he played with players like Exceeded Brack, and that's been the case so far today, based on what we've seen to this point. Dak stunned up, can't quite get away. Phase Black only empty on the first handful of seconds, but are right back in, able to counteract and get this thing back to a near level game. Yeah, with 25 seconds left, you gotta start thinking a step ahead. Start thinking about that rotation over towards next. And at least if you're lower gold, you are on the preferred side initially. But you don't want to lose these couple of gunfights and then continuously spawn over toward the back side of Palace. 04 attacks one with the nade, but he also takes down a teammate. So now Phase Black have a lot of map control already. Joe to sees off the rotation, is only able to take down one. But 16 seconds to one squad, 10 off the rep to the other. It's going to be a lot of these fight over towards P2 now. Yeah, decent setup here for Lore Gaming. 04 could be a major influence, though, if he were to open up some space through mid-map where he's winning the transition and maybe even securing this a little bit further on. Does force a team kill, so not all bad. Classic 
Backside tank almost doubles down, but now face black. Have the numbers. Hitting this from the front very rapidly. 04 trying to get into place to watch the cross and Ooh. not able to take care of Brack. And with that phase, have a chance to get in for this back 30. Yeah, that's a perfect clean for dead. And if you are phase black, you just want to try to trap them towards the backside of Palace for as long as you can. So XC trying to cut off through the middle of the map. Is able to win his one-on-one. -on -one, actually finds a double. And Joe deceives on the opposing end. Is able to find the last player in Dak. So FaZe Black holding on strong for the remaining time of this P2. But with those set of kills that they were able to find, they're going to have an easy rotation over towards the next. Interesting enough with Floor going oh, yeah, four yeah. down with only 12 seconds. They're just pushing through the old time here. Not even bothering with the street side, at least as of yet. That keeps us at just marginal differences between the two. 31 plays 29. Opening up the third hard point. FaZe Black in control to start. Practice delaying. Playing his life out and... Really just making sure, Lord, don't feel comfortable on this approach trying to break this new hard point. And you see the setup for Phase Black. Everyone's spreading out. They're not allowing any openings for around the entire map. But now when you get closer and closer to that score line, and with the hill starting to be already 35 seconds into it, you have to get closer towards your teammates. Lord Gold able to find a couple kills to at least alleviate that pressure in towards the point, and now it falls into the hands of a C. Yep. Can he find anything? No, he does not, but the teammates are still here. They're soaking this time. Yeah, good exchange across really all four members. Only one more to deal with is 0-4, and he almost doubles up for the scrap time. Not quite able to confirm the last onto Rex. He's had a much better start here than what we saw kind of at the end of last night. Still hard to say with only being 6-5, and five, but a couple of the key kills from him has allowed this rotation to come through and has built our first sizable lead of the game. Yeah, now if you're lower gold, you have to play for at least some time over towards the P4. You're currently down by 40. You're more focused on maintaining this map control. You have players pushed out towards DVD, overall over the mid tank as well. So a couple of players from Phase Black are going to spawn towards the backside of Palace. But still, not any time towards any squad. They're more focused on maintaining the map control. And finally, with those couple of kills, Lore potentially is going to get into point. Yep. We often say it, this fourth hard point can be an opportunity to reset how the game has gone to this point. In fact, it's even been a good time for a number of squads to actually get some good hard point score as well earned up to get back into a game that's kind of getting out of your hands a little bit. Not to say that either of those things have come true to this point, but Face Black definitely went out in the kill feet. And well, with Exceeds Double, this will largely stay a neutral hard point throughout the majority, which means we're still dealing with a 30-point game. Yeah. P4 is basically white the whole time, but you saw the play on the minimap out of Brack. He wasn't engaging towards that middle map. He was just staying alive over towards Mannequin's side, hoping that his teammates were able to find a couple kills to flip those spawns with all of Lore spawning towards Back Palace, and it works out to perfection. You're still up by 30 points. You have the rotation over towards B5, but you're going to be a little late. You have no right street control, so Lore were able to sprint right forward and get onto the point. Yeah, big moment here for Lore Gaming. Gunless will shut down after getting onto three in a row. Joe Deceives has found himself in blue. And is just kind of looking for a gunfight. Lots of action around him in oh. 04. Had the gun up ready for him the entire way. Dak also responds playing from topside blue. Dealing with the close proximal spawns from FaZe Black. Still a chance for FaZe Black to try to play through this scrap time. Not a trophy in sight for 04 to stay alive. But he's avoided a lot of the nades just by staying in cover. Eventually, FaZe Clan will get him out of the point. But still, not a bad hard point at all for Lord Gaming. Just 15 seconds of scrap given away. Yeah, not at all, especially holding it the way that they were. They were the team laid off the rotation, and they were able to find the kills at the right time to at least walk away with some good time at that P5. But now we go back over towards the P1. If you are low gold, you have to make sure you soak as much time as you possibly can here. But this time, you have to try to flip those spawns. You want to try to set up phase black to spawn over towards the backside of Palace so you can try to trap them in for that Ooh. P2 to P3 chain. Back nearly able to create some dominance for lore over the top of P1, but phase client black fighting their way back into this hard point a couple of the kills coming through hard point goes neutral and face black will actually have enough favor to get on for a little bit of early time here still 40 seconds to fight for rotation towards p2 still largely the focus on the macro side for both of our two teams gunless trying to find the player contesting but shut down and that's three straight kills face clan black they have a chance to blow this game wide open oh and the spawns do flip though so face black get a read on it you already have a couple of players off the rotation and with that spawn coming in from dental rex you know where the pressure's coming in that is from behind can you clutch up and at least a couple of these engagements to soak up more of this P1 time. As eventually Lore with that double. Able to work their way back in towards P1. But off the rotation, it's a two-on-two -two fight. Joe sees takes down one. And now to the two classic V Exceed. This gunfight can be a big factor to who's going to win yeah. this rotation. And Exceed is able to come out on top. It's not even just that, Jay. It's also the exit kills that come through cleanly for Face Black on the old time. So now it's just down to trying to read where Lore Gold are spawning. 
Joe Deceives nearly gets to the power position topside plaza, but doesn't quite fully work out. And with a split spawn situation, oh boy, here we go. It's that mix fest around the back lines at this back palace position. And FaZe Clan Black will come away the winners of all the 1v1s. A chance again to really grow this lead. Yeah, they get a read on those split spawns. We know it's a parallel when you're spawning towards the middle side of Fountain at Palace. So a C simply just turns left, is able to win the gunfight, and now FaZe Black are starting to pull away with this game. You have to get a good rotation if you are low, though. Try to contest this, not give up all this time, but that P3 needs to be guaranteed if they want to fight back. Yep. Ay, ay, ay. Ah, big double from Joe. Oh! Follows up with the pistol. Five in a row for Joe Deceives. And Lore Gaming, who continue to try to play through the scrap time at P2, this time have to concede it, sacrifice off the losses, and just hope that Joe Deceives doesn't go on to a six spree because a cruise missile very well be the first nail into a coffin here. Lore Gaming do get the rotation to three, but they have to get a full 60. Yeah, this has to be a money hill. You have to try to withstand the pressure coming in from FaZe Black and also shut down Joe Deceives before he's able to earn that cruise missile. Great shots from 4 great movement. To hit the bounce off of the balcony. He's also able to take down a double as well. So, so far, Lord doing a great job of holding down this bat from Hill. That's been 30 uncontested seconds. They are answering the call to fight back into this game. But at the same time, you allow Brack to earn himself a cruise missile. And with 2 minutes and 27 seconds on the game clock remaining, you best believe that P4 is going to play a big part. Yikes. I mean, just you think FaZe Clan are feeling themselves right now? Pistol Chow's all over the place coming through. Rex maybe even gives this one more go. See if he can try to take the last player out of the zone. And wow, one bullet was classic. So the kill comes through. A little bit of extra tally time here for FaZe Black. And another player working towards streaks is maybe the bigger story here. Is Lore Gaming again just have to hope and find, pray they can find time here on the fourth hill. Yeah, you have to be able to get time. And you also have to be able to maintain that mid-map control. They're able to find the right kills. Now force all FaZe Black. At least a couple players on FaZe Black to spawn over towards the Palace side. But this is when you invest that cruise missile. You force their setup to get scattered a little bit. It's not going to be able to connect onto anyone. But Exceed finding that kill through the back end. Now you have to focus on him to make sure you maintain those spawns if you are lore. Before well, just trying to hold on to this tree. Do what he can to soak up every single second possible, but Face Black take him out of position. Classic with the double mail out gunless to jump right back in. And this is good time here for lore. Trophy system also trying to keep him safe. Plus, keep in mind that the P5 rotation is to the back of Lore Gaming right now. So, decent moments, but uh, Joe Deceives again, being a playmaker. Wins a 1v1 opposite side of the map, and now FaZe Black are starting to stretch across the map with an opportunity to get the 5 first, which may have just been confirmed with Joe finding that second elimination. Yeah, Joe finding that double through the overextension is able to spawn a couple players from Lore all the way across the map, but it's a 20-point difference currently, and it's going to fall into the hands of Classic. He's working his way behind enemy lines. He's hoping that his teammates can get the party started through the front end. But not a single kill is going in their favor. Finally, 04 is able to take down one. Classic does get traded, but now it's Dax attempt on the flank. Yeah, and he's kind of caught. Doesn't know where exactly these phase block members are. Very wisely and very fortunately slips away. Kind of resets the engagement of the back line. But every second that gets tallied here for phase block is a dangerous one and a very punishing one. Dylan steps off the hard point. Well done to create... An opportunity for his teammates to help him reinforce if he even needs the help. Are you kidding me? Rex off for four in a row. Exceed there right in the nick of time. And FaZe Black will get past the 200 point mark with still more to tally here at the scrap time. Oh, this is good stuff for FaZe Black. They were able to withstand the pressure coming in from Lore through the back end. You find all the kills through back gas. And now you put all of your focus through the front side. Dylan Rex with that double was able to secure that final 15 to 20. Currently up by almost 50 points again. But... It's all about these next set of fights. Third rotation, we go back to the P1 lore. Need to make up some time. Yep. Have to have a clean P1 and a cleaner rotation towards the second at this point. Stretch and kill is starting to really favor that of lore gold, though. Rex, 22, make it 23 and 17. Continues to win these individual long-range battles. Now into the hard point he goes. Predicted, though, by Gunless. Big double out of Pierce. Exceed really can't challenge. Just trying to keep his life. His teammates are nowhere nearby, and more gaming have bought themselves a bit of a lifeline here. Yeah, this is good stuff. This is good stuff from Lore, but the nades are going to be able to connect over the top. No trophy systems in the back pocket to keep that secured. But FaZe Black are getting closer and closer to that 250 point mark. If you are Lore, you have to get them off of this P one time. I know you're going to be the team early off the rotation over towards next, but one break, and FaZe yeah. Black are going to call game. And I don't know if anyone's going to predict this long hit from Rex who's going to wait for Brack to clear things out and whoa 
We see it in the kill feed. That's a really across the map win from Brack. That now frees up Rex to try to hit this from behind. But the thing about it is, Classic will actually still spawn behind this play. So he's able to trade things out. Lore Gaming do have a bit of a buffer. You've got Dak playing forward. Another spawn for Classic in the back to keep the pinch safe. And Lore Gaming are coming out on top of the trades. They're starting to do what they need to do. And that's slay and hold down this P2 to the T. Great AR crossfires being set on up. They're going to be able to breach that 200-point mark, but now you have to do two things at once. You have to find the next set of kills and push through to try to force Phase Black all behind you at Palace so you can win that rotation Whoa. to next. And Dak is able to get it done with the Renetti. He finds a triple, at least if you are Phase Black. You have a couple players who still spawn on towards Blue, but it's going to fall into the hands of the final two players here. And you got a little bit of a conga line over towards the Water Street as well at the same time. Brack wins his gunfight, and now he's got the pistol out sprinting towards the hill. New life for Lore Gaming. Oh, the shots from Gunless are perfect! Oh, aye, aye, aye. Help from Zero Four as well! 237, 220! Rex, the only one in the way! He's able to take down two, but it's not enough to stop Lore from getting into the hard point. They're able to get in. They're able to relieve all the pressure through the backside of gas, get a clean four dead, and now put all their focus through the front. All you need is a couple kills, and the game is gonna be yours. They're gonna be able to at least tie the game up here shortly, but Jonas Seeds is trying to make stuff happen through Cafe. Exceeds route deep through gas as well. Rex, Might be it. he's got to look at one. Takes down classic, stays alive. Exceeds oh! deep through gas station, finds the double. That clears out the hard point. Trophy system down. Keep your eye on Joe Deceives. He's the first man up. Lord Gaming have no idea that he's here. He's finessing his life for probably long enough. Last one to hit would have to be Dak, and he's not going to get to the hard point. Wow! The heroics to Rex to stay alive for as long as he did, but then exceeds double. Unbelievable. Man, it just came down to that final moment. You only had one opportunity to execute the break, and usually when this scoreline is like that, you get a couple players to get a little bit overzealous. We're going instantly at the hill. We're trying to win those gunfights up close and personal, but exceed no sweat off the brow. He takes the long route about around back blue, finds the opening, at least from his teammates, to get the opening first kill through the front end, and then it's time for you to strike. You win the gunfight through the backside of gas. You spawn the opposing team all the way across the map, and then at the same time, you're able to find the double onto the player on point. I thought Laura Gaming, they set themselves up for the W, but no one was watching the deep pinch. Pretty sure Octane always says it. Kenny always said it. We cannot <laughs> lose off of the pinch, man. And unfortunately, that's how they for sure in game one and phase black. They get it done to go up 1-0. Unreal start to this series. 34 and 28 for Joe Deceives. 30 and 23 with nearly two minutes in the hard point for Dylan Rex. Wow. What an unreal start to this series. And for, again, we talked about Lord Gaming just kept themselves in it for just long enough. But a couple of early rotations not going their direction definitely felt like the difference maker here because when it mattered most, they were providing the plays needed. It's just tough to do that over and over and over again when you're playing up against a squad like FaZe Black on the other side of the station. Yeah, keep in mind, FaZe Black are coming off hot over that last series versus five media clan. So their guns are already warm. Lord Gold, they had to be sitting back waiting to see who their opponents were. And they definitely got out slated in this map. But they did have opportunities to close yeah. out towards the very end. But now if you are phase black, you have taken full control of this series. You open it up with that first HP. Now you have the Invasion Search Destroy as the game two. But when you get to that game three, four, five, and even six, phase black are feeling really confident at least taking this first one. Yeah, I'll say. And again, just based on how the map veto process works, I'm not mistaken, that should have been Lord Gaming's hardpoint pick. So, yeah, it's another thing to kind of tally up as now we look over to an invasion, search, and destroy. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jay, this is not a map that I normally attribute to seeing a lot of success from FaZe Black on, or even really that many reps on when we were watching through yeah. uh, Challengers. A lot of it was on either High Rise or Terminal, it felt like. Yep. Yeah, high rise terminal, a little bit of real at some times. I don't think we've got the chance to watch them on Invasion Search and Destroy. So there's only something different in their playbook going into this best of seven. You know, there's a couple more maps you got to add to the pool. So making sure we're at least getting the bed and brothers towards the very end with that high rise search and destroy and the real. But Invasion, as this game number two, this has to be a response from Lore. It was not the best performance from everyone on that side of the map. I told you, they were sitting calm, cool, and collected. Everyone goes negative, and 
Now you have to respond on an invasive search and destroy. When you're definitely looking at 04 to have that takeover ability time and time again every time they spawn into a search and destroy. Yeah, absolutely the case. I mean, there's just so much that could happen when it comes to a search and destroy, especially an invasion. Uh, I think probably, at least for me, I don't know if you're on the same wavelength, you're thinking about all the SMGs that could kind of go rogue on one side of the map or the other yeah. that can completely open up maps. So maybe that will happen here hard to say but like you mentioned we have at least seen that diverse team play quite a bit of invasion when they were uh as listed as such playing with neem and, and and all those guys and there were moments where 04 was kind of the guy he, he was it he was the one guy who kind of carried them through maps that like that looked like that but at the same rate there's also moments that i'm thinking back to where invasion was just kind of like wow these guys are in the blender because they yeah. rely so much on their smgs to kind of do the work for them so it's kind of you know two sides of the same sword here uh, when you look at it in terms of possible predictions in terms of the individuals on on stage for us but we don't have to wait much longer to figure out the outcome we load on in it's invasion search for map number two lore gaming looking to bounce back into the series and i think you hit it right on the head when you talk about this map number two it's all going to be about the smgs if you are lore we're looking at 04 to try to shut down the playmakers on the oppose again in Jodeci's and exceed. I don't know what the hell has been possessed with Jodeci's ever since he's entered challenges, but he's just been a different player. You can just tell the confidence in that young man. He's getting it done with the MCW. He's getting it done with the rival nine. He has a great understanding of how you need to be playing this game. And he's been a big factor to why FaZe Black have been having a lot of success. But here we go into the search and destroy. Off whoa, the rip. Whoa. 04 already setting the tone. Great shots onto Dylan Rex for the first blood. I mean, we, it just sounded like Rex barely even had a chance to fire back right there. Yeah. I heard two, two shots land, maybe, at most. So 04 continues to be that guy. Exceed. Not slowing down, though. And wow. Has he just found the space? No, not quite. I'm sure 04 had seen it, transmitted it over to Gunless, and the team shots are perfect. So, try to create something out of nothing. Doesn't really work out here for FaZe, and now they find themselves in a 2v4. Yeah, make it a 1v4 as 04 finds a triple on the round. Potentially find the ace, but no, Dak is going to steal it from him. And that's exactly how you to come out in that first defense. Just hold strong. You get the first first blood on in five seconds into the round. Yeah, you're basically calling GG. Even though there was no trophy system to work with on the defensive end, Exceed tried to be the playmaker to catch the timing over towards B. But the team shots and the crossfires were set up perfectly from Lord to secure the first defense. Good use of numbers. Everything else after that really just reinforces the point that you just don't give FaZe Black anything to work with. So 4 sitting on three. Lots of nades thrown down B lane. Brack will get through. Where did that smoke come from? Was that a... Yeah. Was that from Brack? I don't know. I'm really curious because there's no reason why you should invest a smoke grenade up to the BSG. They already watched you cross. Unless you were trying to get one of your SMGs to cross over through Broken, but... That smoke grenade isn't going to get anything covered. Still a 4v4. 30 seconds wipe off of the game clock. Lower gold... Have one player in Gullis watching the overextension, but they're looking like they're trying to build up a push over towards B. Got Exceed, who will be the first one to watch the cross shots come through. No need to move anything around yet if you're face. Exceed also wants to make sure he can at least keep his life. Semtex desperately thrown, not going to connect. Actually does. Just not under the player I maybe mean, expected it to. Brack backing up towards Tractor, and he's not going to lose those, friends. Nope, not when you give them to him individually. Dak does find one in response, but... The play towards B ultimately shut down. Yeah, it's instantly shut down. And now that bomb is down by that tank area. So with 20 seconds left, you have to try to take down Brack if you want to walk away with this potential round. Dak, unfortunately, does not have the right gun for the fight. Picks up an MCW with only 15 seconds left. You have to recover this, and you have to find Brack. Yeah, and they don't realize that Brack has moved over to the cage side. Shots are good, though. Dak not going to be able to get the plant. It looked like it was Rex deep over towards that back barrier who just caught enough of them before the plant could come through. So, FaZe Black respond with a very clean defense of their own. We tie it up a one. And I guess that smoke grenade really paid a big part because <laughs> they were playing nice and slow over towards B, thinking that an aggressive SMG was going to be there to assist Brack, but he had no help. All he had was the tractor to be his friend. And he's able to find a double, almost a triple to close out the round. But FaZe Black respond with another defense to tie the game up at one. I'm just glad that we were both like really committed to what that smoke was for. <laughs> yeah. He probably accidentally had that on. There's no you way know, in hell he was thinking yeah. about the smoke grenade. That's what I'm thinking. Routine 1v1 at long range right as soon as the round starts. This time, no one drops. Another aggressive smoke gets placed. So maybe these are intentional. We need to reevaluate our analysis on this so you get two rounds in a row. Pick 
You see FaZe Black. They found the opening, though, Alan. The setup right now for Laura is two through V-side, two watching the cross, at least through mid-tank. But now if you are FaZe Black, you have all the information gained. We can take all of Water's side, yeah, and we can yeah. try to sneak this bomb down. It's going to be a very difficult retake for Laura to try to find success. I'm actually a bit curious to see how FaZe Black have just not opted to play through the Palace side. Uh, get a little bit even deeper. I mean, obviously, we know that no one's watching that. They won't have that same information, and it's actually classic to clean up the middle of the map. I was going to say, that caught at mid-tank. Looked that there may have been a chance for FaZe Black to continue to push through, but classic gets it done. That's three in the round for Nikki D. Yeah, and that's definitely a round that you want back if you are FaZe Black because you gained a lot of info right off the rip. If you just simply have a smoke grenade at this A site, you can potentially work the bomb plant. But when that first player drops with Dak hitting some great shots on towards the site, you allow all the gunfights to now be abound. As Classic takes control of Cafe, he's able to, like you said, to find a triple on the round. Lower goal, two rounds in a row. Okay. See what comes next here, and we'll have to keep our eye on to see what's going on on this B side of the map. Gunless. Lots of options at range. Lots of damage tallied as well. Rex again. Kind of the... Victim of a lot of the damage that comes through. Joe deceives AR at mid map, looking for something on the crossover towards that blue side, but not quite able to connect onto too much. And everything will kind of reset here after all the antics in the first 30 seconds. Yeah, Lord Gold is trying to get some information, but it's going back to old reliable if you are phase black. Everyone having a lane. This has already been 35 seconds knocked off of the game clock. And Lord Gold are just trying to play for an ounce of information. Finally, they get some onto a C2 with the mid tank. Dude, they yeah. decide to solo him out. These are double ARs that are positioned here defensively for Phase Black. Dak, SMG in hand, wants to get a go on it. And he has cleaned out a lot of it. Prediction, and that will work out. It seemed completely overwhelmed, but oh. does force out the team kill. Plus, also the nade from Joe Deceives to try to assist. He just can't quite get away from Classic. Continues to dominate in the middle of the map, but. Again, just chase after chase on both sides, and it's just even exchange after even exchange, eventually resulting in Face Black having the last guy left alive. Yeah, that's tough, because if you are a lore, you did everything right. You found the opening first blood, you took mid tank control, but I don't know what happened on Classic Screen. That team kill really costed them right there. Because at the same time a trade comes in, you're instantly put into a 3v2, and there was an all-out mix fest in towards the cafe, but once it turned into a 1v1, Gunless is positioning known, and... His HP is not the full. FaZe Black were in the right position to at least find that trade and secure the round. So back and forth in the SD we go. If you are FaZe Black, stick to what you know. And that's not getting first blooded right off the rip. This time it's Dylan Rex dropping to a frag from that car bomb. Now he's had a pretty tough go in these first 30 seconds of almost every single round. Yeah. So now FaZe Black again kind of have to force something. Door gets popped early over towards A. Brack able to find one at mid-map and Joe is already kind of pushed forward into a pretty sneaky spot, but Classic doesn't have an exit. So again, trades for trades come through, and we'll be left with a 2v2. Whoa! Ooh. Drop shot from Exceed takes out Gunless, and now it's just down to Dak on the other side of the map. And now if you are phase black, even though you find that kill, you have to rotate back to pick up that bomb over at the A site. And there's no better way to do it than the buddy system. Dak is able to get the info. Brack gonna go for the chow. It's a 1v1 now. Good exit from Dak. Enough time to fully reset everything. No chase here from Exceed. Instead, he's got his eyes set towards getting this bomb collected and planted. And it looks like he should be able to do this without too much cause for concern. Dak making his move. Does he catch him on the exit? Oh, not fully. Exceed just able to sneak away. So everything resets. Oh, but Dak's seen him. Or maybe that's not enough. Exceed playing literally on the back corner of the map. Now up and over. Exceed shooting back. Both players down low. More tags come through. Dak is low. But Exceed needs to make sure he confirms that he's still here because he's still so far from the bomb. It's all down to who wins the gunfight. Both players off the regen. Dak pushing forward with the pistol. I don't even think he's got enough time to get this kill and run all the way back to the bomb. He's Gotta on run. the foot race. Get there. Go. Not going to have a chance. <laughs> Exceed found himself in the smallest of corners of the map. That's just an icy 1v1, Alan. Yeah. Like, Exceed, like, he, just, he gets the bomb down. He's able to get away from, with his life. And then Dak tries to be the aggressor. He tries to isolate him over towards that Humvee side. But that street is so damn long. 
that he just continuously kept on backing up, stalling out that game clock. I think if you're back in that situation, veterans would probably play that a little bit different because you're playing from the site. You are forcing XC to overextend, but he yeah. probably had an angle from that top bridge to still peek over towards the bomb. But what a round right there out of XC to not allow the 2v1 to go the opposing way. He ices up for his teammates to now back up 3-2. All right, we can decide now that Brack is purposely throwing this smoke because it is coming from Brack. This time oh. it tries to enable exceed forward, but Dak beats him with the beatdown. We'll value with the smoke later as the action continues to favor Lore Gaming here at mid map, leaving Brack by himself. Gonna catch Gunless for free. Definitely gives him a chance at this. Bomb not planted fully yet. If this nade lands, ooh, tight. Definitely close, but Bomb gets planted, and now this becomes a little bit more difficult to manage. Yeah, if that nade would at least. Took that player off the bomb, more of a manageable play, but with 35 seconds left, positioning now known for Brack. Lord Gold had all the crossfires set up. They are just forcing this guy to run away and just try to play for a kill. He's only on a one streak, so I don't really know if you're playing for a cruise missile, but yeah, he just doesn't want to give up a free first kill, at least to yeah. Dak, because he's currently on a four. I think that's the bigger point for sure. And so that's now three rounds that we've seen the smoke get tossed, and that is from Brack, by the way. The first round looked like maybe he thought he had a stun instead, but yeah, now he's thrown it two other times. So it seems to be a pretty dictated set play here for Phase Black defensively, trying to keep a smoke down over towards this B lane and trying to keep some confusion in the mix in terms of how Lore are playing. But so far, Jay, it's just been, you want to throw that smoke? Fine, we'll hit you at mid. We don't care. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a good thing, at least for Brack. He's consistently throwing that smoke grenade, making sure Lore are just not getting a read on any players crossing over towards Broken, but... They got the read on the players being aggressive up through DVD. They open up with the first blood. They find the second and in the man advantage. They're able to just stay strong on their post plant setup to tie the game up at three. Such a back and forth search to destroy. But if you are phase black, your main focus is shutting down Dak. If yeah. he guarantees that cruise missile, it's basically a guaranteed round for Lore. And look at the setup from Lore Gaming. Four players stacking over towards Cafe and the A streak. Gunless just watching the long cross. They haven't seen the cross through dark yet, though. So they're not going to know of how many players have already pushed through. You're going to have to re-clear ice cream on this setup. I mean, if Lore Gaming don't anticipate that Exceed has gotten through, this post plant may be free. All right, this going to be tough. Stick. I'm pretty sure he does get stuck by a nade as well. So Dylan Rex was ready for the pressure through mid broken. And Phase Black just simply are jaw dropped. The fact that this bomb site is open the way that it is. But finally, you're going to attempt to work the bomb plant. Dylan Rex finds his second yeah. on the round. Gunless trying to make something happen as he's trying to be the aggressor up through ice cream. But there's a player right behind you, buddy. You're not going to be able to read it. It's now classic left in a 1v4. Just complete blind counter. Yeah. Flat out. That's all that is. Lore Gaming tried to pull something crazy out. But meanwhile, Face Black, we're looking to go all speed towards B. That, that's simply put, that's just blind counter flat out. Yep. I just think if you are Lore, all right, it's good stuff that you gained all the info that they're pushing over towards B right off the rip. You do everything right, at least taking control of Cafe, shutting down that early A pressure. But if you're going to play it like that, you have to have an answer if they instantly responding with the B push right off the rip. XC yeah. did not slow down. They didn't spot anyone on the cross through the backside of the tank. So they took that B map control instantly. And then Lore Gold, not with attack usage, could not retake quick enough. So Phase Black secure the round. Shut down Dak off for of earning that cruise missile. Back to the defensive side they go. I would slow this one down. I would force yeah, Lord yeah. Gold to beat me by planting that damn bomb. I absolutely agree with the call. Exceed this time. We'll get in towards Broken, though. Brack still playing pretty far forward on this construction cross. And Exceed is looking to actually confirm a kill here. And wow, the Semtex lands just with enough damage tallied to take care of 04. And Exceed's back into the bomb site. Now you can just play this thing out 4v3 with numbers. Yeah, that's all you got to do. Everyone back up. Don't allow the bomb plant to go down at A, and that's going to fall into the hands of Joe to see as he gains the info that they're currently taking control of Cafe. A stun is uh -oh. going to be able to connect, but the crossfire right there from Classic is able to at least even up the numbers in the 3v3 now. And you've gotten Dak on towards sight. Stun will confirm that, yep, they're on A. So that's enough for Exceed to start making his play forward through B, and Dylan Rex just jumps into the site like a madman. Takes care of one. It slows Lore Gaming down just a touch longer. But now Gunless is getting proactive in his own measure. Double checks over towards the palace wall. Brack has not cleaned out the bomb site looking for the exit. Has Dak in the corner. Oh! oh, and that exceed over the top could only confirm the trade. But what a set of shots out of Dak, who should have been caught completely 
unawares. Yeah, that is an insane gunfight. Because you see Brack, he tried to time it perfectly on checking that bomb. But he could not see that angle on where the bomb was getting planted. Then you get the jump on him. As soon as that bomb gets down, you go for the initial gunfight. But that Rival 9 up close and personal is going to get the job done. Dak, with that 1v1, secures the round for his team. And that one's got to bite because if you phase black, you get a nice early first blood. And then you just drop. Like, that cannot happen. Yeah. If you, and now we're all tied up at four. Credit to Lord Gaming, though. Enough to keep them interested to allow Classic that opening exchange through mid. Changes the whole dynamic of the round. Smoke once again placed over towards this B Street. Exceed thinking about possibly trying to get a play over towards B, but they don't 100% know if there's anyone sitting in the broken. So this is all about just confirming that information and seeing if they can find it. Really, any intel anywhere right now. I mean, they're completely blind. Yeah, at least Exceed is able to get... Some info on to where Dak is and his teammates at the same time are working their way through Cafe. So they are getting a read that Lord Gold are playing this one very, very deep. If you crack this freezer door open and you don't spot anyone, no tax is going to be able to hit. You can potentially work this objective. Dak in a tricky spot, but gets away. A little supporting fire from Classic. Trade over towards the B side of the map as 04 looked to get aggressive in towards Treehouse of the rival. And Exceed has seen Gunless cross into the site. And he wants to track this back. Wait, did they see Dak, who just beelined it into DVD? I don't think they did, but it may not make much of a difference because on the same front, FaZe Black have taken a long route towards the outside at A. And they're going to leave Joe Deceives behind to see if he can make a mess of the rotation defensively. Yeah. And this is going to fall into the hands of Dak. He gains the info, but that bomb does get planted. And Dylan Rex is able to win the one-on-one. -on -one. And now Joe Deceives is your time to strike. You know that Gunless is over towards the B point. You're able to take him down. It's a 1v3 left up to Dak. Positioning now known. This is a tall task ahead, man. Yeah, it is. Not a lot of time either. Just one frag grenade. He's going to have to predict and guess on his slide through. Rex gets the opening shots. The rest of Face Black waiting to clean things up. Wow. I mean, we're talking... Two ships passing in the night when Dakum jumps into the DVD. He doesn't yeah. see anybody and no one sees him. And that could have been a major round difference if Dak is able to use that spot to open up some extra kills. And I think that comes down to the communication, man. Like, Gunless jumps towards the backside of Tank. He sees two players. So you're forcing now Dak to rotate off of that A site to get some really, really bad COD timing working through DVD. If you just hold strong and allow Gunless to play around that tractor... Before he makes that call, you can stand strong on that defense, but some bad COD timing there causes them around. Now FaZe Black are at game point. Going back to the old reliable setup, but this time Brack does not throw that smoke grenade. He's trying to see everyone running right out. Oh, and the nades are connecting. Stuns, nades, both of them. Brack's following up. Semtech just to create, again, a little bit of an extra buffer, a little no man's land in front of the B zone, but Lord Gaming are just pushing right through this. Exceed will drop over the middle of the map. Brack's still holding firmly, and... Really, it's just the B setup that's staying strong here for a phase, and it may actually be strong enough to allow a chance to actually reduce this back to marginal terms, but Rex will fall backside park, and then no chance for Brack to rotate back in. Yeah, that just fell into the hands of Dak. He was getting a lot done with that rival now through the middle of the map. He finds the first blood, is able to find the second, keep the numbers in the advantage, and then finds the third to close out the round. Such a big map for Lore. You got to come out here and try to secure this round 11 so you're not down 0-2 in the series as they are going to be the team on defense. Dak is putting the whole squad on his back. Yeah. 14-6. and six. He's trying to take over. Trying and ex I would say succeeding <laughs> to this yeah. point. Safe nades being tossed by Face Black. Just making sure there's no aggression down B Street. And whoa! Where did that come from? Oh, what a difference maker that is from Exceed. There was a trophy down, but it must have landed beforehand. And it was all frags. It wasn't Semtexes, so that set play works out. And now all of a sudden, Lord Gaming moving Wait. quickly. Wait a second. They may sneak out and actually find the player on the plant. Oh, oh what a God. play from Dak. Oh, my God. The fact that he's able to find a time and use that smoke to his advantage makes it more of a manageable play. Instant 2v2. And if you allow Dak to get one more kill, he's going to earn that cruise. Classic playing deep on the back of Ice Cream. Dak gets taken care of. Key elimination from Joe Deceives. So now how does Classic choose to play this? We framed him up as being one of those guys in Surge and Destroy that you can always count on. But this time he gets caught. Rex from the backside of the tank. 
And he's Dak smiling about us. like, I mean, I, what, what do you want to say? Like, we were right <laughs> in there. Like, this is a 4v2. We still almost pulled that back on you boys. But, wow, the set nade play from FaZe Black into round 11. Unreal. Yeah, that was an insane nade from Exceed. He finds the timing perfectly. He used the nade spots all the way in around 11 to find the double. But Dak made the play to potentially steal that round away from FaZe Black and steal the map. Once he works his way through the smoke, he's able to find two. You take down the bomb carrier, but then he gets isolated. Classic just has a read, and he's thinking a potential player is going to go on the flank. But maybe if you're in a crossfire setup with Dak, you can keep him alive a little bit longer. But once he falls over to his tractor, you have all B-side control. Classic's doing his best job to just not l allow that bomb plant to go down. But unfortunately, does not get the timing he was looking for. And they are going to lose that map number two out of a stellar performance out of Dak, man. 16 and 7, that's an absolute takeover. But maybe yeah. if you got 17, you were going to walk away with the Smack W. Oh, if you got 17, they definitely walk away with the W. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still one of those things, though. 16 for the L is certainly tippable. Yeah, but that's tough. That's wild. What a round 11. And with that, now all of a sudden, face black onto the lower bracket. Hold a 2-0 edge in the series with control coming up that we kind of talked about you know the veto process it, it really gives lore the opportunity to take away their worst or if you know phase is best and i would say they definitely took away their worst with invasion being striked off from the control pool yeah it's just these first couple of maps though were lore's picks you have to come out here yeah, and play your yeah. maps and you have to go out there and get victories because now when we get to these middle set of maps it's all phase black and believe it or not i know i said it in the beginning of the series alan please get me to a game five and <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen with the way that FaZe Black are able to clutch up in these final two maps. I mean, we've had two close maps, though, to be fair. We Slow have. start, surely, for Lord Gold, but they brought it back nicely. Definitely a battle. And then here in the round 11 as well, really could have gone either way. It really is that 1v1 right there that Rex is able to find the first kill on to stop Dak, and then Classic does not really give him much of a choice. But the problem is it is high-rise control coming up next. It has been the bread and butter for FaZe Clan Black. And then a real hard point, which we also have seen them used to some advantages in series prior so it definitely looks like as the series goes on like you mentioned it, it definitely starts to favor phase the longer it goes and them taking the first two is not a positive beacon for lore who continue to find themselves as an organization against this phase black squad and still not able to crack the code at least as of yet but we've got control coming up we'll send things to a brief break and we'll have karachi right after this
Welcome back to Miami, friends, and our challenge is open grand finals, where currently FaZe Black find themselves up and on top of Lore Gaming Gold 2-0 after really what were two very exciting maps, round 11 in the search to destroy, and then a 40-point, 40 46-point game as we were finishing off map number one. The thing about it is FaZe Black really took off and were out and ready to go right from the minute go. Uh, minute zero, word go, is what the phrase goes, uh, <laughs> from that map number one, really has, I think, both of us looking at this map three, high-rise control, and still thinking, like, you just have to come out hot here if you're lower gold. Yeah, you have to come out. You have to take this control if you are Lord. You cannot put yourself down 0-3 in a best of seven because it's only one map, obviously, until FaZe Black walk away as the champions. And I feel like this is one of those maps, one of those series where you find yourself down 0-2. You do have a couple young players on your squad, but you need to look at the veterans now. These guys have been in multiple situations like this. Down 0-2, down backs against the wall. You're looking at that veteran's presence to just put the the level heading plays out of there for the for their young players we're talking about gunless and classic these guys have been around for a really really long time and when you're such a young player you can start to lose fool in these moments you're thinking yeah. two maps where we should have won we one opportunity one little mistake costs us but you cannot let this series get away so i'm definitely looking at gunless and classic to try to step up here to keep their teammates hopes alive and you're going to need those two in particular just to try to lock down what has often been AR dominance from FaZe Black on this map yeah. in particular as well. So the task is two-folded, I think is the best way of putting it. See if they can provide what is needed to get their team and their org back into the series. Hard to say, though, because like we said, FaZe Black have used this map as really a linchpin towards success. Just about every single time we watch them play, it feels like they're yep. out of high-rise control. So it's not an easy venue to try to get things going here if you're lower goal. But at least if you are lower, you just got to do your best to at least not allow a lot of segments to go the opposing way and stay strong on defense. They find the initial two kills. They're trying to find at least the trades in towards the B point, but Joe DeSeas and Brad combined for two. So at least they're putting the game clock at a pause. But lower gold, they have a lot of map control to work with. Yeah, sure do. Can they contest and clear, though? The thing. Oh, Dak. Just caught shooting at so many players. Does finish off the first. Good assistance from his teammates to make sure the clock keeps sticking over towards B as well. So... Ooh. Yeah, all things told, this is a really solid start here for Lore. Brax still on three in a row, keeps the play alive over towards the B point. But Dak, only able to get one off spawn, doesn't really create as much defensive pressure as maybe you were assuming, especially with Exceed top helo like this. Oh, that's some great shots from Exceed to find that double, but Lore respond with a triple. All of phase back coming off of the respawn. The only player out right now is going to be Brack, but they know where the pressure's coming in from. The stuns, the nades, everything is hitting, but Brack is at least able to find one kill. The rest of his teammates are falling, and with only 30 seconds left, you at least have to get some work in the objective. Shots coming through, but Gunless stunned up. Can't quite provide the kill. And... <laughs> Joe DeSea thought he was going to be dead to rights. At least has a chance to keep this play alive. Oh, and this is a good reap. Oh, nice shots from 04. Now, all of a sudden, 20.6 on the clock. First stick of progress will get locked in. And Lore Gaming, they try to chow this with just two players left alive, and the trades are decent. Face Black still alive on the point. Yeah, Face Black staying alive. Brack ends those engagements on a three street. Gunless does win a one on one for Joe Deceive, so that's going to open up this B street lane, and he's not going to slow down. He's able to find a double, keep that game clock cocking down. There's only 15 seconds left. You have two seconds, but. Can you potentially find more of your phase black? You just have to find a couple of kills. And with that three in the feed for Lore, might just be enough to secure this defense, only allowing two segments. Joe deceives, one kill, back onto the zone, stops it at 2.5. But like you mentioned, the life count is still pretty dramatic. But wait a second. Kills come through quickly. And all of a sudden, uh -oh. you've got 04 solo challenging on the zone. I mean, that thing was gone, brother. And now what was a 12v7 turns into a 9v7. Extra minute on the clock. Classic gunned at mid-map. Oh, but they do take care of Exceed before it gets between a rock and a hard place. Just keeping safe the spawns at least. Yeah, that's exactly the kill that they were looking for. You have to take down Exceed and not allow him to be a nuisance in your spawn. Now there's no more respawns for Phase Black. Try to stay stronger. You set up. You cannot go a clean two to three dead. Dylan Rex actually does find one. So the next two players have to clutch on up. But this right by Joe DeSeas might potentially make a play happen. Gets one. Uh -oh. Didn't see the second prone, though. Shots come through, but the reset was already out from Dak. Although, Brack gets the kill. Oh Back on God. the zone. 3v3 situation. Exceed playing off the long pinch. Finds another. First tick of progress. Nearly locked. Classic trying to play for the long con. But he's by himself now to 1v3. Rex pretty prepared for this, but he's gone high. 
Brack taken down first and foremost, but the transfer's not in, and FaZe Black steal away the offense. What? Oh, that can't happen if you are lore. You were trying to build some momentum to fight back into this series. You have had two demoralizing maps in the first two, and you answer it with another demoralizing first round in the control. You had everything. You had only about five seconds left on that game clock. You just couldn't find the trade on to Joe Deceives. He gives his teammates another life. You secure that B point. You're able to extend that time. But in no sequence of events, Dylan Rex was able to find five in a row. So FaZe Black secure the attack. Now they go on defense with Trophy Systems and Dylan Rex. If he fix one kill, that cruise missile can play a dividend factor to the final score. Oh, it's just one of those moments that right before the B zone got captured, I was about to say, this is more like it if you're Laura Gold. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. How quickly things can turn when FaZe Black get this map in hand. But... Good moments here. First three kills tallied up for the side of Lord Gold. Plus, now a little bit of pressure being amounted onto both zones at the same time. Gunless over towards A does get taken down. So, 0-4 by himself. Just trying to keep hopes alive towards B. He's at least doing a good job of at least finding a couple kills. But once he falls, everybody else from Lore off the reset. Do have a couple players working their way up through the A Street side. Classic now finds himself on two in a row. And can potentially find a third as well. Great read onto Brack. But the propane tank. The radius to dodge from that. Keep in mind, he was all the way back, Crack Shack. I don't know how he falls to that, and that's an unfortunate death that now leads to Face Black taking all map control. Yeah. Golly, man. Just when you start to think again that Lord Gold are starting to cook with some heat, everything gets turned around. Go to Steve's good prediction and better shots on to 0 4. Hit down B lane, also being read from this position at Heli. Joe not really able to assist in finding any kills, but the damage is decent. Dak at least still able to keep his life and reduce the defenders to marginal numbers, at least mostly so. Stuns and nades will still land gunless on the corner, trying to give Dylan Rex something to consider, but he's just not backing down from these gunfights, and Rex wins another. So now 12 and 9, 13 seconds on the clock, and more gaming are stuck. Yeah, with only 10 seconds left, you have to get out. Unfortunately, you're not going to have any opportunities as Joe DeSees finds the timing on 0-4. Puts himself on six in a row. Already cruise missile going to be earned. And FaZe Black not slowing down, not missing the beat. Walk away with the defense. Only allow one segment to get away from them. And now you have two cruise missiles to work with on the attacking side. But even at that, if you decide to just give up this attacking round, you basically guarantee yourself two defenses back-to-back -back yeah. if you go to round five. Yeah, absolutely the case. Oh, you can just feel the life just kind of draining out of lore right now, can't you? Yeah, yeah, it's you just, can feel it. Just as soon as you start to think they've got something going, Phase Black just immediately turns it into their face, and they're so quick to capitalize on mistakes. It's something that the proper and I talked a lot about when we were watching them play the lore team back in Boston, and even though it's a new roster on both sides, it's the same storyline, man. Phase Black just not making mistakes and punishing lore for theirs. And now if you are lore, you have to be perfect. Try to not allow any segments to get away from you and make sure you try to put them in that tripe nice and early. But you could already see FaZe Black have made their way out through blue side. First segment is about to be done at A, but here comes the pinch from 04 and his teammate in Dak. He's at least able to want, catch one spawner off rip. The trades are better for Lore. So they're able to withstand that first pitch over towards that. So to see as long as we with gun list, tries to get proactive on the fight. A couple of attacks are in, but the drive's not better. Aye. Plus a little bit of assistance, I think, from Classic behind, but... That was kind of a illusion, a mere distraction as FaZe Black get out of spawn and now have their attention set over towards B. Classic hops in towards the window. Up top, exceed Brack, double up, good kills coming through. Gunless also tallied over towards this A site as the clock stops at 50 seconds. And the thing that's scary is if Lord decides to give up this V point, if you can't win one set of fights to get yourself back on in, that two-piece stand by Dilrex might be just enough as you're still trying to contest it if you are Dak, but you do not have the numbers for these fights. You capture this B-point if you are face black. That's when you make it rain with all those missiles through the air. Yeah. Although, Joe Deceased, a couple of kills on the backside of this. We'll get the second ticket of progress in. Shots in the middle of the map. Keep Dak at bay. And you're going to just chalk this one up, boys. Just don't pull the same mistake you did the last time we were here. Dak's going to give this a go. It's being watched, but apparently not well enough. Dak gets two. How has he managed to do that on essentially 20 HP? Brack, last one left. Able to secure one trade, but has to wait for help out of spawn. And the only thing that could come back to bite Lore in the ass is the fact that they did not decap that progression for the third take at B. 
So one set of kills is all phase Black need, but they cannot find any through the middle of the map. 04 and Gunless and even Classic jumps into the party. That's a clean three dead. With only 30 seconds left, phase Black have to get a move on it. You have to win these fights over towards B Street to try to ascend this time. Yeah. Trophy system trying to get placed. Exceed finds the first. Brack gets a read on the Gunless, but gets stunned into place. His teammates pick up, though, where he left off. Clock stops at 15.8. Help on the way from Joe Deceives, and he actually takes down Gunless at range. Dak, not particularly clean with the kill, but still finds it nonetheless. Now to 13.1. Stun comes through, oh but Joe Deceives God. doesn't care, and Rex helps out through the alleyway again. It's just individual kill after individual kill. It's deja vu all over again. J8 v6, minute 10 on the clock. And this is where you make it rain. Everybody invest those cruise missiles. Make sure you know exactly where all of Lord Gold are, but... They are still waiting for it. You have a lot of time to work with. You can get it done with your guns, but you have those missiles for a reason. You can call a game right here in the 5v5. You just call one in. 4v5 situation. Definitely not out of the realm of possibility for Lord Gold to bring this back. Do you feel like you can put it away here, though, if you're FaZe Clan? Joe Deceives holding in towards bottom blue. Gunless right next to him. Whoa! Oh! Didn't expect him there at all! A little jump scare, and now we have another 3v3 over the top of the A zone. What are we doing? Are we saving the cruise missiles for the next map? Like, we're in at 3v2, and other guns are firing. Joe Decease finds another kill, no making way. a double. It's now a 3v1 left up to Classic to try to clutch on up. Again, Classic, by himself. Cruise missile GG. called in. Rex sees him at range. No worries at all. And wow. Joe Deceives just... The definition of him right now in that oh, map. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, I don't know what happened to this guy. Obviously, you started off the league in the CDL. You were on the LAT. You guys could not win a hard point. And Joe Deceives, he was one of the players who got the back burner where he was told to be dropped. But he enters the challenger's division, and he has just been in takeover mode from start to finish. Every single time you think that FaZe Black don't have an opportunity. Even in those final moments, there was only 10 seconds left. He walks up through the B Street, wins two gunfights with the MCW, pulls out the Renetti, jumps into the B point, and wins on the third gunfight. He is just taking the game into his own hands. <laughs> 26 and 17. Man, this guy needs to call back up because he's yeah. disgusting. He is literally disgusting. We've said it. Walking 30 bomb. Just didn't get a chance because it only lasted three rounds. Yeah. I mean, 26 kills in three rounds, two of which were on offense. Spare me. Are you kidding me? That's unbelievable. Wow. Okay. So now all of a sudden, you kind of have to think about uh, what if you're Lord Gold? Like, this feels so familiar to so many different phase black series we've seen over the course of the year to this point where... You know, they get up big after a control. You could put them right into a mixy hard point. We've got, what, Rio coming up next? It's like, man, I don't I don't know, Jay. This doesn't feel great, though, if you're Lore Gaming for the second time against this organization in the Grand Finals. Oh, yeah, it definitely does not feel great. You went to do your first two maps, which were your picks, and they were very, very close, but you walk away with the L. Now, in the middle set of maps, these are all phase blacks as bread and butter. They just dominated you in that high-rise control, and now they're going into a Rio HP where we watched them play this earlier. They are great. They are non-stop pressure from start to finish of this map, and now you're forced to try to complete a reverse sweep in a best of seven. Series is far from over if you are lore, though. The mentality has to be has to. one map at a time. You're looking across at your teammates. I know it's only been one week that this team has been formed, but you have to go back to what got you here. Just one step at a time, one rotation at a time. You have to try to fight your way on back in. Okay. Wow. It's just so tough to try to find that recovery on a map like this where FaZe is feeling good. I'm sure they feel like they can run through a brick wall and shell everything right now. Especially if your name's Joe Deceives. On a map where you can pull out a sub and just do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's where, again, it just becomes such a compounded problem. But I will say, in the effort to this point, Dak has been really good. Yeah. And if you were to want one guy to have another great map and kind of put you in the backpack a little bit, it's n don't look no further than this guy right here. And I'm pretty sure there's a terminology thrown around in Call of Duty sometimes that a wise man once said, it's never chalked. It yeah. takes one map to build some momentum, and Lore already starting off on the better foot, getting 14 seconds off of the P1. They haven't found a lot of the kills, but at least they're soaking up the time. Yeah. Okay. 
early moments, showing some glimmer of hope. Don't want to try to frame it up too much at the moment. Ah, uh, Semtex plus Joe Deceives runs through, exceed off the pinch. That will essentially be a four man down. One member will stay alive, but 04 is essentially coming off spawn. He had to back up so far. Yeah, and if you are Lord, you're just looking for one moment. One chain of kills, a one situational play to go your way. That could change the momentum of this series. But FaZe Black, they reinforce the number two top mid. You take 15 seconds, we'll walk away with 30, and we're going to have the rotation over towards next. You have one player in that trying to hit the route. He actually does open up with the kill onto Exceed. And now you have Joe Deceives trying to locate where he is, and he's able to locate him and walk away with the W in the kill. But the rest of Lord Gold, they're trying to at least apply the pressure through the front. Everyone is dropping around. The last player at least pushed that towards the back. He falls as well. So FaZe Black doing a great job of just stabilizing with all the kills in the feed. Yeah, even off the split spawn situation, they just make yeah. the most of it, right? I mean, it's just a couple of kills on both sides. And now all of a sudden, Lord Gaming hoping that Classic can be maybe the linchpin here to break open this hard point. He gets the first pretty darn cleanly. And really, no one's looking for him yet, but Brack... Oh my goodness, Brack, how is he finessed around pillars to find two from opposite sides of the hard point? Kills come through nicely in the last 14 seconds. Surely go the way of phase black. Yeah, that's all their time. Now you're just thinking about that rotation if you are lore. We cannot lose a couple rotation gunfights and potentially spawn all the way across the map. But at least we, even with Joe Deceased finding that kill, you still have Exceed who just came off spawn, so the spawns are still going to be good here for Lord Gold. But this has to be a response where you can get a full 60 to get yourself back into the game. Yeah, have to. Good reduction of the play around the outside for now. Gunless still going to be tested. Good kills from the inside as well. And it's just Joe, last one left. He'll bail away, but all things told, Lord Gaming off spawn are largely fine. Plus 04 is able to track down the kill. So once again, a little bit of a stagger Whoa. setup. And wow, that was some clean tracking from 04. He's not done oh. nearly. Gets the full team wipe himself, but does more than enough as Lord Gaming have brought this back to level hood. Yeah, this has been a great hold. You're consistently pushing out through top mid, and then every time someone's trying to overextend up through the street side, that's where you're allowing Gunless to shut it down with that MCW. Dylan Rex does take down two. His teammate in Brack takes down the third, but you can see Lord still swanning in towards the back end. This final 10 is going to be theirs. They're going to be able to take the lead, but they're a little bit late off this rotation. So, FaZe yeah. Black, you have to put yourself in the ID setup try to get some much-needed time at this P4. They're going to give up a bit of garage here, but that's pretty voluntarily if you're looking at this from Face Black's perspective. Joe on the box is Thorner, sees the door open, easy kill, turns his attention back to the hard point. One bullet was all it took, but 04 does provide the trade. Stays away from getting traded in his own right. Stun comes through, but Dylan Rex, my goodness, doesn't miss a single bullet. Lord Gaming still fighting from the front, but the oh. kill started to turn up here for Face Black. Yeah, trades are going back and forth, but it's phase like coming out on top of the majority of these fights. And if you want to get it done, let's send in 04 again to at least relieve that pressure onto the point. They're able to find the break again, and 04 doesn't plan on slowing down. He's saying this series is far from over. We should have won the first couple of maps, and he's trying to give life to his team currently as they're still holding on to this P4. Yeah, really good scrappy hard point here from Lord Gaming. All of it from the front, mind you. And with that little bit of extra kill presence at the end of the hard point, they're going to have enough to send resources on rotation here. Decent exchange for Lore again. Classic up top. Oh, but Dylan Rex just not losing 1v1s, man. It feels like every time we see him in a position like this, he's coming away the victor. There it is again. Two in a row for Dylan Rex, 13 and 8, and it will be face black. First ones into our final hill. Yeah, and that's been a difference maker from the last time that they matched up. Dylan Rex did not have the best performance, but like you said, he's winning some insane 1v1 gunfights off the rotation, making it easier for his team to just fall it all into the point. They've been able to hold down this bridge to the T, but here comes Dak with that SMG in hand. He's able to find a double gunless with the third. The break is here, all ready for Lore. Yeah, Dak in a good position to also read how face black want to try to approach this from the front. Kind of zones them out just a touch further. 20 seconds to fight for. Face Black finding nothing, and it's 04 off the pinch for three in a row. Oh boy, here we go. Lord Gaming looking real polished right now, and a lot of it coming from this young man right now. 15 and 11 on four. And now they're starting to pull away with this game. You already have a lot of mid map positioning. Can you just use it to your advantage? Also, have players reading this flank classic with a big one on one shutdown exceed. But look at the play coming in from Brack, the long route from Brack, the trigger discipline from Brack, but the rest of his teammates do fall. So it might be a good route, but now you have to get it all done by yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And so far, so good. Takes down two for the effort, but still, Lord Gaming in the hard point for now. Finally cleared out by Face Black Gunless. Looking to follow up on a couple of the trades, but everyone just sliding away from him. 
Contest time, though, is also still pretty good, though. We're really talking about the macro sense of it. Nice little moment there from Gunless, but does get taken down, and Face Black continue to accrue more time. Yeah, this is good stuff. Face Black obviously needed this time to get back into this game, but another route out of Classic Ooh. is able to find a double. Jodeci's definitely had to be one shot as that goes three dead, and yeah, Brack, not another opportunity where you can go be a one-man army. Gotta try to play your life to at least give your team another opportunity to break in through top mid, but they're more focused off the rotation. They're not gonna push through old, and that's Loki gonna catch Laura off guard because they're yeah. expecting the push to come through the old hill, not right through the front of P2, and now they're gonna be laid off this rotation. Yeah, think about it as though they really don't have the control on the spawns. It's just this gate position. So guns will have to stay up here for phase black, and wow, okay. Rex is taking his attention front, back, side to side. Exceed on the other part of it, able to double down in his own right. So from the front, again, FaZe Black looking pretty darn clean. And don't get me wrong, they can absolutely hold from this gate oh. position. And Exceed on five is really just doing it himself. Yeah, he has to try to find his cruise missile to get back into this game. Because if you are Lore, you're playing for this break at P2. You know how crucial that can be. If you give up all this time, allow FaZe Black to walk away with this remaining scrap. And then allow them also to have the spawners over towards next. <laughs> Exceed again finds a double. Cruise missile now earned. Can he find anything more? Only two billets left in the rival. Do you have a Renetti? Nope, we're not going to do it. We're still switching between rival nines. Staying alive on that eight streak now. Oh my goodness, oh, nearly gets the nine, but oh for the effort, definitely significant. 21 and 14, really willing his team to stay in this game, although FaZe Black have brought it back to, again, relative terms. Oh, Perfect. but oh four, just jumping into the hard point, not missing a single bullet. The only one to survive is Joe Deceives around the back, trying to block spawns. Yeah, that's the worst thing you can do right there if you are phase black, though. You get three-piece off the rotation, and now all those players spawn behind enemy lines. And now you're forced to try to break your way back on in, but it's working out wow. to perfection. Unfortunately, you haven't gotten past 0-4, though. He finds another triple, 25-14. and 14. He's the sole reason why Lore Gaming are currently in the lead. Now potential for a cruise missile as well. Jumps into the side of the hard point. Contest still alive. Brack. Shots from the window side, and O4 is very patient, waits for his teammates, Hello. and there's kill number six. So much discipline from a young SMG in his first year of challengers. Joe C is trying to win this rotation over towards new, and boy, do face black need it because O4 and Lord Gaming are running through Rio right now. Yeah, they were trying to be early off the rotation, so they don't have to invest the cruise missile at this hill, but. The game's starting to get away from you. The cruise missile might be the only way you're able to break on in because here comes another pitch from 04. He has the timings down to a T. We saw a C go on an eight. He's currently on a nine before he gets shut down. He's putting the team on his back as Lord Gaming cannot win it here, but they can get pretty damn close. Sure could. Secondary cruise missile called in. Phase black, mostly deleted before it can even touch ground. Wow. All of a sudden, Lord Gaming have loaded into this Grand Finals in a very major way. Rex takes care of Gunless. Another set of impressive shots, but he's really the only one getting the job done right now for his squad, and you just don't expect that to be the case. An AR player to be able to carry your weight through the rest of this map, especially with a 100-point gap. Yeah, now you got to play perfect hardpoint if you want to fight your way back into this game, and all you need is one opportunity, one break if you are Lord, to extend this series and give us a Game 5. <laughs> As they only need 11 seconds to walk away with the W. Now Dylan, kind of the same we could say in terms of what we were talking about with 04. He is willing his team into this map as much as he possibly can. First 12 seconds are decent. Exceed. Trying to get some bridge control. Nice little pop-up finds Gunless. And then turns his attention towards Dak. Really well played here by Exceed. But Lord Gaming, just take a beat. Get yourself set up. Like you said, only one break required. That's all they need. It's just one set of kills. One, two to three dead. And the game is going to be theirs. As at least phase back, though. Still maintaining a lot of this bridge control. Lower gold. Look like they're just going to chalk this one up. Try to fight for top mid. But here comes 04. The, ma the magic man trying to get it done. He gets cut down. So phase back at least showing a little bit of life at this HP. And they're the team early up for rotation towards top B1. But if you are lower, you can push every scrap time with the way that they've been playing. Definitely could, but... It's just Gunless was the last one left. Brack, good gunfight win over the top of the new time, plus a little bit of damage to help Joe Deceives out of touch. 1v1 here towards the new time. 04 steps in, help nearby. Gunfight win, though, for Joe Deceives. Phase Black now have a 3v2 over the top of the hard point. This is not done yet. Lord Gold just need to get themselves to set up. That's all it is. Contest comes out, but Joe Deceives is turning up now on six in a row. 
Oh, he finds himself on six in a row, but Classic with that double might be just enough. Make it a triple. Actually, all four. Nikki D is saying, we're not going home for a straight match. We're going to force this game five. Clean stuff, man. Wow. And like we saw from the winner's finals, business. <laughs> no pop-offs, no direction towards talking at any particular player. It's just, all right, we know we've got a long road in front of us. And, well, I'll tell you, that goes a long way to try to rebuild some confidence because it's not just 0-4 like you mentioned. Of course, it is a lot of him, but great moments from really everybody. Nikki D in the end right there to secure it. That's going to help, again, just kind of boost that extra confidence looking at a map number five. Yeah, you can tell it's getting hot in there because Nikki D takes off that hoodie. He's representing that Atlanta Faze roster. Believe it or not, he's actually the substitute player for Atlanta Faze. He might never see the time of day, but you <laughs> want to be repping one of the top teams in the CDL. And with the four-piece at the very end of the game, he is starting to get activated. But that was 0-4 from start to finish. He walks away with at least a nine streak at a point in the game. Drops a 30-piece with that SMG in hand. Shuts down all the SMG presence on the opposing side. And now if you are Lord, that's just one step to bringing this all the way back. You secure one map, you get one on the board. And now you're going into a high-rise search and destroy where they have played this team in their most yeah. recent matchup. And they were able to walk away with the W with just non-stop aggression over towards the B Street. Multiple first sludge shutting down Dylan Rex. That has to be their focus point again. We dominate B side of the map. We are going to walk away and continuously extend this series. Yeah, really good foreshadowing right there. And maybe on the other side, if you want to kind of paint the picture of how Face Black put that away. Hey, at least Dylan Rex is shooting this series. Yeah. He will finish 27 and 22, I think, on the map as an AR player, which is not common. So... Definitely some instances you can look at from both sides' perspectives. But for Lord Gold, like you said, that is a huge way to get back into the series. In particular, just again, you just feel like a map like that. Like, it's not just a hard yes. point win. It's not just a map win. But, like, you're running, you're gunning, you're snapping, you're getting everything perfectly centered. Like, it just feels like you're getting more cracked out playing a map like that. So, you have to think that maybe that goes a long way here for Lord Gold getting back largely not just into the series, but potentially to take a couple extra maps. Yeah, I completely agree. Running in that uh, that Rio HP is non-stop progression. All of your timings have to be going to perfection. And with the map, like you said, playing as fast as Rio does, that could potentially build some momentum for Lord Gold going into this next map. Obviously, they know. They are here for a reason. I know they've only been a squad for a whole week now. But you are far from done in this series. It's just one map at a time. Your next up is going to be that high rise search and destroy. I said it before, and I'll say it again. You have to be able to win those initial fights over towards B Street if you want to stand a chance. I agree. All right. Well, with that, we'll take our normal break between map four and map number five. High rise search and destroy. Lord Gaming, like you mentioned, have found some success here against this face black team before. Would have to do it again if they want to see a Karachi control. We'll see what they give for us when we come back after the break.
Welcome back to the grand final stage here in Call of Duty Challengers at the Miami Open. And, well, War Gaming right back in this series, potentially. After <laughs> dropping the first three maps, they come out clean and pretty dominant in the Rio hardpoint. A lot of it coming out of the hands of 0-4 or 0-4, however you prefer to pronounce it. <laughs> Problem is, you're going into a high-rise search and destroy, and you still have to win two more maps after that. So it's a long road for Lord Gold, but I think we both walked away after that last map, Jay, saying... You know, there's some potential here for this series to still see some daylight for sure. Yeah, yeah, they definitely gained momentum playing a map like Rio HP where it's nonstop aggression. You're just setting the tone with those SMGs, playing your timings, and that's what 04 was able to dominate every single time. It's like FaZe Black did not account for him. He was just hitting the rounds, finding three piece after three piece. He ended up one life going on a nine streak. And that was the deciding factor of Lord just dominating in that map number three. I mean, map number four. Now you're going into a high rise search and destroy where both of these teams have played each other. And Lord had the perfect game plan of try to be victorious again. It's all about those B Street fights. Try to play that first blood as best as you possibly can. Absolutely the case. Okay. A lot of focus towards the ARs, in particular Dylan Rex, like you said. Not a major threat last they played, but boy, how different a day makes. Looking pretty solid here to this point. It will be Lore on the offense first and foremost. Gunless looking for that 1v1 over towards the alleyway. Nades up towards top helo on both sides start to come through. And it's Classic who will find first at least eyes onto one. But Face Black just pushed right through. But they don't see Dak on the corner. So the initial double immediately countered back. And we'll go to an early 2v2. That's a good play from Dak. Just staying strong in this S&D mode. Has 16 in the game, number two. And already off to a hot start. He's going to work his bomb all the way back into the spawn. Phase Black are definitely not going to be able to get a read on this. They have basically flipped the map on its head. It's going to turn into a whole lot of one-on-one -on -one gunfights. And this timing might be a little bit better out of the positioning from Dylan. Problem is the staircase could be a bit of a nuisance. And whoa. Just able to secure the kill. And now Gunless will walk right in front of Brack. Boy, I'll tell you for a moment there, and I think we've all been there before, where you're looking at that from Dylan's perspective, you're like, yeah, I don't want to take the shots yet because there's so many yeah. things in the way. <laughs> but he does confirm the kill regardless, and then Gunless just can't get there to confirm a trade. And that's a good tone setting round right there out of phase black. All out of aggression through blue side to at least open up the initial two kills. And then they gained all the info. Even with Dak finding a double, they spotted him going back into his spawn, and Dylan Rex puts himself in a perfect position to at least win that one-on-one. -on -one. So FaZe Black strong on the defensive end, but this is the side where they struggled last time around was all in these attacks. Those gunfights versus gun on the left street were not easy. Yeah. Now well, this time, it's pretty passive on both fronts. Zero four mid-map, little off angle. That'll work out. First blood tallied on to exceed, and FaZe Black have some issues to worry about here now offensively because they pretty much are limited to having to play through this B street all of a sudden. Yeah, they have to aggressively push on up because they don't have any right side of your mini-map control. But at least Jodice is able to take down Classic on the overextension. But do they read the positioning of Dak? Did you get a read on it? Potentially Brack was able to spot him. He might be playing for this kill. Brack up top. Ah. Whoa, wait a second. Dak doesn't quite confirm the elimination that he should have had for free. So things will come to a bit of a miss. And wow, okay. <laughs> oh, 4 just outside the glass <laughs> hanging onto a ledge. Does at least confirm another. So we get a 3v2 situation. Dylan shooting back, but not enough for the kill. And Gunless will finish things off, leaving things just now to Brack. Yeah, Brack now left in a 1v3. Bomb has been recovered, but with 25 seconds left on the game clock. If you are lore, let's just all not challenge 1v1 gunfights and just make sure that objective does not get planted. This round should be ours. Yep, and such will be the case. Okay. A couple of weird angles there from 0-4. One just a little bit off-angled in the middle of the map. The other is... I'm like a little carabiner. He's just hanging out the window. <laughs> yeah. He just that will knows. work out. He just knows the way that they like to play this map. Yeah. Always trying to take top propane control. So when he opens up the first blood on to exceed, he's always the guy trying to get aggressive up through helipad. And then to go back into the spawn, catch the second player through top propane. He gets enough done for Lore to walk away with the round. 1-1 one, one the count. Both teams finding success defensively to this point. Nades all sent over towards the middle of the map here from Lore Gaming's perspective. Not a lot connecting, though. Rex continues to play over towards B Street, essentially by himself. Trophy system to keep him company. And Exceed will just kind of hop over and see if he can catch any info over towards any early A hits that are coming through. 
Yeah, all the phase back are just playing really, really safe. You don't want to give up a free first blood. You're just playing for the information, trying to figure out where the pressure's coming in from. Couple wall bangs in, trying to force the seed to change his positioning up, but great shots out of old 4 to find the read on at least two players. So they have three players accounted for. They must have got a read it. There's no one in towards the site. Yeah, first blood onto Gunless comes through. Joe does see a little hop up over towards this B site. A classic. Whoa, this route may create some opportunities. Yeah, he finds Breck, and now Rex is stuck inside the elevator. Yeah, well, but at least going one for one. Not terrible at all. It gives enough time for Joe to come through, and the trades end up in favor of FaZe Black. Dak had been tagged, but his reposition is a bit sneaky. Problem is he doesn't have the bomb. There's not a lot of time on the clock. Yeah, he just doesn't have the bomb, and FaZe Black have already gotten a read on it. He's going to be able to spot Joe to seize, but just going to play your life, try to set up XC to find this final kill. With the only 10 seconds left, it's not enough time for Dak to work with FaZe Black too strong. On back-to-back -back defensives now. But they find that first blood, win the trades fights in the middle of the round, then have the man advantage, not allowing any time for Dak to work with up to one. Yeah. Good stuff tracking everything down without question after the first blood. I mean, we talked about this a lot, Jay, you and I, during Challenger's Elite. Number situations were such an issue for Face Black on this map. Yeah. And they have really made improvements into making sure they don't overstay their welcome, especially when they find early kills, which is often the case, I feel like, especially from the defensive side. I feel like they're always finding third first blood in the first 30 seconds. This time it's Brack. Long range shots down towards Gunless's direction. Both players will stay alive. Both players will get trophy systems in. And the only thing that's really different about the setup for Lore is 0 4 has gotten really far forward onto B. Yeah, 0 4 is in the B site. It's not phase like, even though they're finally going to be leaving the spawn. He's trying to get a read of how Lore are setting up on this defense. You're going to have Joe Deceives, who is that bomb carrier, working his way through underground alongside his teammate in Exceed. Going to work their way back up through the ladder, and this might fall all into the hands of 0 4. Yeah, the first kill from Dak. It's going to give him a little bit more liberty here, but... Oh, never mind. I was going to say. <laughs> Brax started to make his play forward, but had all eyes set on climbing the ladder. Seat gets a look at one deep, but pretty much another impossible situation. And Lord Gaming's defense solid through two straight opportunities now. Yeah, that's all defenses so far for both squads. You know exactly where the pressure's coming in. You're dominating that battle over there towards the B Street, but it's been an answer for the first bloods for both squads. To find a success on the defensive end. I just got to figure out how the hell we're going to win an attack. Because a lot of both of these teams so far have been playing really, really safe towards the back of the spawn. No one really aggressive up and towards B until that final round where 4 pushes up through that B street. I just think if you are phase black, just do what you do best. Stay strong on defense. Potentially walk away with another first blood in the first 30 seconds. Yep. Joe deceives right back in towards this bottom blue defense position. Often the case. But Lord Gaming kind of taking the route right through the middle of the map and exceed may get a little bit caught here at propane i mean he's really only focused on one thing but problem is zero four try to make a play a little bit further forward he gets caught dak may work around this but timing is going to be everything here yeah timing is going to be everything and at the same time exceed is at least able to find classic makes it a 4v2 dak finds a kill he's able to find a double so gives life back into Lord Gold. Try to clutch up on this round. Also gains uh. the info onto a third player. He's just making plays, man. Thing is, this timing could get awkward. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Little YY up the stairs. Brack was trailing behind Exceed. And maybe the YY is the difference. Maybe not. <laughs> Hard to say. But Dax Heroics will come to a bit of a pause. Leaving Gunless with a 1v2. And with only 24 seconds left, you have to start thinking about that objective of FaZe Black. They've played against Gunless for a long time. It's all about knowing the personnel. you got to be thinking that he's going to be searching for a kill before trying to commit to this objective. And time is not on his side. He hits such a long route. Plays right into the hands of FaZe Black. And they clutch up to avoid the 4v2. Just came down to some COD timing, man. Brack with yeah. that one-on-one -on -one onto Dak. Like, that one's a tough one. And for Gullis not gaining any ounce of information on where they are set up on the defense. Just not enough time for him to find a couple kills and potentially work that objective. Face Black strong, again, on a defensive end. Another moment, though, you look at Dak and you say, man, this guy really does create opportunities, right? <laughs> yeah. Wow. But the big difference is defense continues to reign supreme. Gunless trophy systems down. 
We'll play a passive angle over the top of B Street. Phase Black. Similar ideas here. Joe and Exceed working through bottom blue right up the ladder in towards a plant at B. Uh, but the problem is 04 is still once again just playing these sneaky little off angles. Gets one from the middle of the map. Now all of a sudden he's over on your B Street. And oh my! It's clean from 04. Gunless secures his trade. And I mean, these defenses for Lore have, what, they've survived with three players, it feels like, every single time at least. Yeah. It's 04 finding another first blood. Another different angle he's showing us. But once that first blood happens, you know where the pressure's coming in and you allow the teammates to help you on the crossfires. It's been six rounds in this high-rise search to destroy. All have went to the defensive end, so it simply might just come down to whoever can walk away with attack, man. We got to get yeah. at least one of these objective rounds done. Absolutely the case. Wow. Razor-thin margins at the moment. Offense for Lord. Keeping the bomb pretty passively in the spawn for now. Gunless the one watching over the top of the lane. Rex playing a passive angle on the opposite side. Classic AR in hand here. Smoke through mid. Can they isolate over towards the crane side? Awkward Ooh. gunfight with Joe. Just able to finesse through. Plus also exit to keep his life. And that's just an individual play. I know Old Ford's been coming out on top in a lot of those engagements. But when you get to the nitty gritty of these rounds, teamwork has to be able to prevail. Joe Deceive's not going to slow down. He's able to find his second on the round. Instant 4v2. Classic and gunless. The veterans trying to clutch on up. And gunless really hasn't been able to see too much. Finally gets an eye on DeBrack, but gives away his position in the same breath. Same can be said for Classic. So FaZe will start to manipulate and move around this. And ah, yeah, Classic just gets caught in the reload. Oh, wow, those gosh. were... Wow. <laughs> I mean, we swapped to it right as gunless is getting smoked, but we'll see it likely in the final kill if it plays. This is some snappage right here. Woo! Pretty sure Joe is able to walk away with the ace on the round as well. Obviously, you gain the info onto Gunless sitting towards top for pain. So once you take down Classic, you go for the snap. And you walk away with all four in the round. As FaZe Black again, strong on the defense. On the back who Joe deceives just shuts it down. So now go up 4-3. If they can have an answer here on this attack, they might be able to call a game. But if you are Lore, just continue to play for that first blood on the defensive side. Stack over towards the B Street. Yeah. Another one. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man. This Lore defense <laughs> is not giving anything up at all. So now they've got elevator control. You've got Classic just kind of watching for crosses over towards A. Gunless is throwing shots out deep through the windows. And Dak winning gunfights down low. I mean, FaZe Black have had... I mean, nothing going their way. I mean, not even kills to speak of, really, on the offensive side. Yeah, it just hasn't been successful both of these squads on the attacking side. It's now it's FaZe Black trying to clutch up in the 4v2. Exceed trying to get an angle. He can spot a potential player through the middle of the map, but lower gold have not moved yet on their setup. The only one dancing right now with death is going to be Dak through underground and going back and forth trying to play his COD timings. But with only 35 seconds left, you got to get move on in your face. Yeah, there's just no options. I mean, everything's being contested, it feels like, right now. Rex is holding onto this trash can, hoping that he can find some sort of cover. Does catch Dak getting a little over-aggressive, but ultimately speaking, doesn't seem like much else will really occur out of this. And that's another defensive round where only a single kill is tallied. I mean, I haven't really been tracking fully, but I would be willing to wager that FaZe have only found like three offensive kills to this point. Yeah, it's been tough, man. They have not been having a good time on this attacking side, and that's just the way that Lore Gaming are playing. You have two people who are playing around that underground area between 04 and Dak. Gunless watching over the right street from the back side of the windows, and Classic makes sure no one's getting aggressive either through middle or through that left side. It's just FaZe Black have not had an answer on it. And now if you are Lore, can we get this attack? I think they just try yeah, to solo yeah. out, bombard the B Street, make it the play theirs. Well, nothing given away, at least at the moment. Nades over towards the outside at Propane, but Exceed has barely survived through it. So, again, tested, but really both teams getting away with what they want here in the first 30. Yeah, a lot of map control again from FaZe Black, dominating his B Street control. Exceed is getting a lot of info on at least two players so far. For Lower Gold, they're slowly trying to work their way up through Underground. Classic and 04 trying to be the teammates hand-to-hand, -hand, army of two, through the underground side to try to find the first blood. 
And I don't know if Joe, because he's been kind of cracked moving between both sides, has actually seen the crossover. And again, that staircase providing some issues. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, good double chow coming out with Doe 4. Exceed up top, able to find one, and avoids the initial trade, but classic. There to meet him. So now it rests with Brack. And oh boy. He's going to get the bomb planter for free. Tries to get out the window. Shot at, but slips away for a small moment before eventually being taken down to Lord Gaming. Find the first offensive round. And they said, screw the individual plays. We're going to use our teamwork to prevail on top for the first attack of the high rise surf to destroy. They were able to isolate Jodeci's down low, but even at B Street gunfight, Gunless was able to assist his teammate in keeping him alive, putting them in the 4v2. Even though it's instantly traded, you are in the man advantage. Potentially, if Brack is able to get up with his life and finesse a little bit longer, he hands a chance. But Lord Gold now with two rounds in a row now put themselves at game point. How do you even find kills here if you're face? What do you call? I mean, it's been pretty much the same setup every single time, with the only exception being what does O4 do? He's been forward on B. This time he's pulling up towards Hilo stairs, but the difference is Joe actually wins a gunfight versus Gunless. Oh! Even the classic gets stuck! Oh no! So the Semtex will land, and now all of a sudden you just gotta figure out where Lord Gaming is set up on the other side of the map, and his O4 falls. It's all resting with Dak in the 1v4. Oh, Dak left in the 1v4 is able to find a free kill onto Exceed, but there's just too many bodies to account for. Phase Black said, screw this slow stuff. We're gonna be all out aggressive up through the B Street and isolate Gunless. They find their finally first blood on the attacking side and their first attacking round. It's been back-to-back -back attacks with all defense, a majority of this high-rise search and destroy. We have another round 11 on our hands. And it will be phase on the offense again in this championship point. And maybe the key to success here for Lord is just don't get blooded on B Street, right? Yeah. I mean, easy enough to say, but that time through, it's good team shots that successfully take down the player deep. Gunless once again over in this position. Trophies on both sides. Nate's being tossed and exchanged by both squads, but everything stays safe for now. Brack trying to play towards the outside, but not a lot he can do from this position. He's got to do more than, I would say, forward movement if he wants to do anything here. But this is already a great start for FaZe Black. They have bombarded their way up through the B Street. Again, you're forcing Gunless to back on down to not commit towards these team fights. Over towards the left side, and you gain the information off the classic. You can potentially find the first blood, but at least you get him to reposition. And now all your focus is, if we can slide in towards B and just make sure we dominate helipad steps, we can get that objective down. This whole setup for Lord Gaming was all about classic playing that position with Gunless playing so deep. Doesn't matter, classic still gets first blood. He knows that there's players over towards elevator, but takes himself out of position. 4v3 situation. Phase Black having a tough time working through this top pipe spot from Classic and him and 04 team up to combine with Dak for all the kills needed and Lord Gaming will take the round 11 and even Pierce getting a little juiced up on the main stage. Don't often see that happen. That's what you want to see. Your vet standing up acting like they've never been here before. <laughs> but now Lord Gaming, they are fighting their way back. Map after map. Rio HP was the starting factor. They dominate there. But they just say so damn strong on that defensive side and not allowing FaZe Black to find any success up through the B Street. Both teams walk away with one attacking round, but it all came down to defense. Lord was smiling cheek to cheek, knowing that they were the team in the round 11 on that side of the map. They find the first blood. Great play from Classic to continuously use that hop up. I know he was spotted right off the rip, but he said, nope, I'm going to go right back up there. I'm going to make sure I'm contesting this B-bomb alongside 4 to make sure that teamwork will be able to come out on top. This team was down 0-3, Allen. This yep. team was only a squad for one week, and they are slowly but surely fighting their way back in this grand final. Big time. And you called out all of the things that were successful for this Lord Gaming squad the first time they had met and a lot of those things rang true again outside of the one offensive slip up you take that round of the picture and again the offensive kills are like six for phase yeah. throughout the other four rounds of offense they played just straight dominance and a lot of it like you mentioned from 04 but a lot of trust I will say that Gunless can kind of solo play this B side deep and this round in particular was all about just 
Classic, you got to play pipes, brother. Like, we've got two guys yeah. playing A or mid. Gunless is playing deep. Like, Classic had to be the pivotal man up front. Yeah, he was not going to shy away from the moment. The guy's been playing COD since I, since my kid was in diapers. Actually, even longer than that. Before my <laughs> kid was even that. thought about. <laughs> He's been playing COD for a really long time. He somehow, someway, always manages to put it together in Search and Destroy. Pretty sure even back in the day, he won a map where he was sitting at 0-11. So Classic knows exactly what it's like to win Search and Destroy in multiple, multiple different ways. Now Lower Gold with two maps in a row. Keep this series alive. We got a Karachi control where we were at least able to witness FaZe Black put the beat down on 5 Media Clan. So they're going to be feeling good into the Karachi, but all momentum currently in favor of Lore. You just got to continue to do it one map at a time. Absolutely. Absolutely the case. And again... Everyone's stepping up right now for the side of Lore Gaming, so I don't even want to point to a particular individual, but you know if FaZe want to run through you on this map, you need some good SMG presence. So I'm yeah. really curious to see how often is O4 going to try to pull the Rival 9. You know, was, when does he want to go back and forth between the two weapons? Does he just purely run Rival? Does he want to go to an MCW on certain setups? I think that'll be a really curious point in terms of how they want to try to mitigate what FaZe has often done to everybody, which is run through them. So yeah. those are kind of the question marks here. Uh, but I think confidence has got to be really high right now if you're Lord Gaming coming off of two really strong maps. Oh, yeah, you're feeling great. You know this series is far from over, and if you are FaZe Black, that pressure is starting to hit. You were already dominating this series in the first three maps, but now the last two is really went in favor of Lore from start to finish. It was all defenses, but all it took was one attacking round. Once you see that round 11 pop up and you're the team on the attack, you have to figure it out again. But Lore, they weren't going to do the same exact game plan, which was stack over towards B, gave up that free first blood. They gave you all that B side control. They were just making sure they were playing safe around that objective to simply not allow that bomb plant to go down. Now they're able to force another control. This time it's going to be on Karachi. They do not want to play Invasion. They were the team that got rid of it. And obviously, if you are Lore Gaming, you watch Phaseback play this earlier on. You know exactly what they were strong at. And that's on the defensive side, consistently staying pushed out towards Junk. They were blocking that spawn, making it very difficult for 5 Media to try to wrap their, wrap their way out or work their way up towards B side. Yep. So I think if you are Lore, you have to make sure on your attacks, we are accounting for everyone. When you were off spawn, you were realizing where they are pushing out because when you allow a couple players from phase back to sip on by, that's when you get put in a trap, and that's not fun to try to get out. Well, on top of that, think about the fact that phase black also have that cheeky break off towards diner on their yep. offense as well. Yep. So a lot of things to think about, especially considering that Lore Gaming should have been able to watch that series play through. So just comes down to trust the process again. That's the one thing I feel like we often don't get a lot of time to talk about. It's like with the team that's recently put together, you know, how much do you trust the guy that's going to be, you know, crowned as your IGL? You know, is it going to be too many chefs in the kitchen here where everyone's trying to make calls into like, we got to remember this, got to make sure we do that, make sure we do this. Where it's like, yeah. no boys, listen to this one guy, trust to what we've done to this point. And fist bumps are out, which means we're close to loading in. We'll see what happens. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. We're talking about these guys on one week of practice that found themselves in the grand finals at Miami. So whatever has been working, it is no time to clash heads. You just got to keep on pushing that train forward. And now you're just one map away from forcing a game seven and applying all that pressure to Flay's Black. This is one that they definitely want to close out here. You don't want to get to a game seven, man, and allow 04 to pick you apart. And the way that Dak has also been playing in Search and Destroy, they have been playing fantastic in that mode. Yep. Okay. Let's see what happens. It's going to be Lore Gaming on the offense first, and they will take their direction straight over towards the traditional A site. Nades over the top, of course, as you'd expect. Rex actually does get stunned trying to play through this long street on the outside at A, and Dak will say, I know exactly where you are. Oh, wow. my absolute snapper towards exceed. First two kills are good, and with that, the first ticket progress is already locked. Yeah, those guns are staying hot, man. Dak is not slowing down. He's putting himself behind enemy lines, potentially playing for a couple of spawn kills. Is only able to take down one, but it's relieving the pressure for the rest of his team as that second segment is already going to be complete. The third is on the way. And that's a big cook coming in from Joe, but a bigger trade coming in from 04. Now you give the ability to Lore to sprint right through with those close spawns at red. Yeah, but see, does at least establish some sort of a front line here. Confirms the trade, plus gets a little bit of presence in towards uh -oh. top office, but doesn't make a difference. So four and classic running through him. Gunless uh -oh. also in the mix. Not looking good. Lord Gaming, straight kills. Exceed gets over the top of the wall. But he's being chased here. Oh my goodness, Lord Gaming are just not letting them 
do anything. This might be Absolute it. dominance. Four straight kills are all that comes through, and now it's a second tick. The third's on the way. Stack is in. One kill is good, but it's not enough. How about that for an offense? Woo-wee! Lord have mercy. That's how you're going to come out swinging on the early attack. You make the play go to you. Non-stop aggression through the middle of the map, but I was it simply came down to Dax's breakoff. He finds a two-piece over towards the left side. He shuts down XC trying to set up that pitch through top three. And then at that point, FaZe Black just scattered the whole time. In certain situations, when you're losing those gunfights over towards junk, you cannot afford to drop at the same time because then you're giving all map control to lore, and then they just took that map control, took those kills, and instantly put themselves in towards the point. Wow. Such a fast attacking round for Lore to walk up way 1-0. That is as quick as we've seen all tournament long. So now FaZe Black have to respond in kind. First kill good for Dylan Rex. First stick of progress coming through. Plus Brack able to find the head of 04. Dak not really able to do too much, but does get to top third. Shots come through, and that will alert Dylan Rex that he has to get activated. Kill comes out, and okay, clean stuff here from FaZe on their opening breakoff. Yeah, already a great start. You see the route being hit by Brack. He knows that at least one player is going to be pushed out towards Junk. They're able to isolate him. Give a better avenue of attack to strip right up through B. But you at least still have a couple players from Lord contesting over towards A. And Dak with that double is going to reinforce all of Faze Black to not continuously overextend. Yep. 60 seconds tally. Gunless top at fire. Does well. Transition is so hard pressed, right? I mean, they're covering everything. Junkyard's being held by Dak. You got the OE being held by Classic. And I guess the only bit of good news here is that you've got Phase Black working through that junkyard pressure, but there's still so many members to deal with your lore gold. And yeah, the SMGs are just absolutely shining right now for lore. Yeah, they're playing great. But at least if you are Phase Black, you won those gunfights over towards junk. You were also able to take down gunless. So you can instantly get put into this objective with a next wave of fights. You got to get past 04 and Dak and making play after play with that rival nine in hand. Wow. Can't win that one up close to person who versus Joe to see. But at least you start a little bit of that time for your teammates to get back into the play. Yeah, XC able to stop the clock at a minute 30. Rack actually tracks down Gunless who is trying to come in from behind here. But now 04 is going to get stunned up. Frag out uh, from both sides. Brack, how does he stay alive through that? It wasn't, must have not been cooked very well. A full rare frag grenade. Doesn't really come through, and then the help from Joe Deceives is in. We've got a scuffle on top of the zone. 04, able to get himself two. Exceed the last one standing. Tough shots over the top, but he's only able to tally one. And with that, Lord Gaming can re-control the zone. Yeah, they can re-control, but you have to make sure you clutch up on these next set of fights. You know, those close ones are still going to be here for phase black. 04 is going to change up the corner. A nice little cheeky angle to set him up Duh! for the double, but unfortunately, he cannot finish the kill on to Dylan. And now if you are a phase black, you can get right to that point. Oh no, not like that! <laughs> One of the worst turn-ons we've seen maybe this Jesus. year. Doesn't make a difference. Lord, pick up. Get right back involved defensively. 9v8 situation in a round that can only be defined as chaos. It is straight gunfight after gunfight. 45 on the clock. And we go 7v7. We go 7v7, but Lord, you cannot afford to drop here. Gonna be in a tight setup. You have to trade efficiently. And at least Gunless with that SMG in hand is able to put a little bit of pressure over towards Ticket. 35 seconds left, 5v5. Brack gets through the middle of the map. Dak Gunless doubled up over towards the front side at bottom red. Exceed. Right up top with Brack. 04, seen down low. Tags are in, but not enough to confirm the kill. 18 seconds on the clock. Gotta go. Dak. Getting cover from Gunless from behind. Has to turn. Oh, but Joe Deceives able to open up with a double. 4v3 situation, but you still have to stop the clock here. As Classic drops, it's just down to 04. Can he make up for the turn on from earlier? 2v2 situation. He's got Gunless working with him. Check over towards the back door, even while stun doesn't make a difference. The 1v1. Clock stops at 5.1 seconds. Joe goes tall oh! in 04. Snaps up, finds the kill, and wins the round. Wow! What a play out of 04. That was a playmaker v playmaker. And 04 with the read. Knowing that he has to be playing towards the top lead and the top ledge in the back side of the closet. Is able to clutch up in the one-on-one -on -one to secure the round four lore. I don't know what the pep talk was, Alan, when they were down 0-3, but these guys are fighting. Now one round away from forcing a game seven. Unreal.
absolutely unreal. And you gotta remember, they were barely even pushed aside in any form offensively. And what? How does Classic get the top fire off the break off for free? Okay, well, <laughs> kill, comes, <laughs> matter. kill comes out regardless, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone run that quickly to top fire like that and not get shot at. Yeah, not right up through the middle of the map, but Classy, he has a good understanding of what the hell is going on. And FaZe Black, the way they like to play their defensive setup, but that second segment is about to get complete. We have a huge gunfight between Joe Deceives and Classic for this junkyard control. He's trying to isolate him, but Joe Deceives is able to win the one-on-one. -on -one. He does not need the reinforcements. And this is where you have an opportunity to potentially go for that flank. Joe Deceives finds one on the back end. Dylan Rex through the front, eliminates Gunless, but at least that second segment is complete. Yeah. Siege starting to get himself back into this map as well. 7 and 14, not what you often see from him in control. But the rest of his team started to pick things up a bit as well. Joe Deceives on 5. Cruise Missile could go a long way. And boy, I'm sure he's saying, just give me one more bullet. I mean, he's got a lot of damage in for a couple of players. And finally, Tally's kill number 6. 24 plays, 19, 44 seconds on the clock. Okay, and if you are phase black, you, you got to try to keep him off of this 8 point. You're down by a lot of segments. So you have to try to make up for it, but Lord, they're just going to do the easy work. You're not going to invest a cruise missile here. You're going to play for a two-minute setup over towards that B point. But with Dak and 04 finding a couple kills, that A capture now gets complete. You can start to get aggressive off the rotation. He finds another one, and this is another scary moment. That cruise missile might have to get invested. Yeah, Bracto from the top side at fire. Ooh, nearly gets the double, but Classic staying alive is massive. Joe Deceives down low. Looking to see if he can tally where exactly he's gone to, but Classic hasn't left. He's still playing on top of that balcony. Nice long range shots from Joe Deceives. It's kill number 21 for him. That confirms the trade. Threat now established. Lord Gaming trying to break this in from the front. Yeah, and they are here. They are here right in the face of FaZe Black. You have to clutch up on these fights with a very tight setup over towards the cafe. Now it's going to fall into the hands of the SMGs. Unfortunately, 04 cannot take down one. Classic goes for the trade, but it's numbers advantage currently for FaZe Black. All out mix fest in towards the cafe. You're able to put the game out of pause, and Gunless still maintaining the map control for his teammates to reinforce. Okay, system down, keeping phase at least somewhat healthy. Uh -oh. Coming over the top of the jump wall, the three kills come through. First ticket progress is locked. Brack also dropping means that now, all of a sudden for phase, you've got to find success. Jumping over the wall, and it's just not coming through. Second tick is in, two members on. Rex only able to G -G. get one. And we are going the distance here, friends. It's a 3 0 start, but a three map battle back. And a 3-0 here at the control. And again, you just don't often see Gunless standing up and spewing. But he's up there and he's letting them know about it as we head to a map number seven. Oh, my God. I know we weren't blessed with a map five in any of our best of fives. But in the best of seven, we are going all the way to the very end. Lord Gaming. Lord Gold. Whatever the hell you want to call them. These guys are frying right now. Real HP, high rise search and destroy. Based off the real HP, I should have known that they were gonna come out swinging on this Karachi because those SMGs are just hitting different. They dominate on this Karachi and control in a clean 3 0. And with Gunless standing up, you best believe FaZe Black, they are feeling it right now, Alan. They were up 3 0, and all of a sudden they blink. They're going to a game seven. Yeah, pressure's on. I'll say, holy cow, 21 and 14 from Dak. I mean, he's having an absolute career series. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even in the three-map losses, he was still putting up 1.2s. I'd be really curious to see what his final KD will be. Regardless of the result, he has been an absolute gem here in the Challengers Grand Finals, but... It wasn't just him. I mean, classic and gunless looking really solid. 0-4 making up for the unfortunate little world star situation that happened when that key 1v1. <laughs> I mean, so many pivotal moments for Lore Gaming getting us to now again just one map. That's all it and, is. And who would have thought, Alan? Who would have thought that the young guns with the squad with that's only been together from for one week are the reason why Lore have been able to fight their way all the way back? Yeah. Back in the 04, map after map have just been able to take over. Whether it's Search and Destroy, whether it's HP. These guys, these young fellas are getting it done. Trying to be a staple. Trying to leave their mark in Miami. Have brought this one all the way back. And we got a Rio Search and Destroy where we saw 04 getting a lot of timings, man. Face yes, black, sir. they are definitely feeling that pressure. Wow. Okay. That's what the frame-up looks like. 
players, I'm sure, will be taking a small break, so we will also do the same. Don't go anywhere, though. Map number seven, going to be an absolute barn burner's face black look to go back to back, whereas Lore Gaming try to get a little bit of at least organizational revenge from what happened in Boston. We'll join Ben back in progress when we come back after the break. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just got word, Alan, that we're not going to the break. These players oh. are ready to go. There's no okay. bathroom breaks. There's no reset. A little bit of conversations with the coach. These guys said, screw that commercial. We are going hot into this game seven. My bad. Didn't see that. <laughs> I'm just locked into the normal flow. Fine. Let's <laughs> jump in then. Let's go. I'm ready for it. I don't need water. Who needs water? <laughs> it's fine. Golly, this is about to be fun. But you're, you called it correctly. I mean, 04 legitimately caught every flank timing, every pitch timing when we saw them on this map earlier today. So that will have to be something you have to keep in mind if you're face black. And I remember face black loving themselves some Rio with the way that they were playing their attacks. They're all out aggressive every single time through top mid. So if you are lower, you probably didn't watch them play this map, but there's definitely some VOD throughout the elite. You're able to get a read on what they like to do. But into the game seven we go. Who wants it more, Alan? Well, it's going to be offense first for Face Black again on the high rise. They did not find any success at all offensively, but we watched them play this map, and they were continually finding success playing on the top side of the map. And it usually follows up with a quick bomb plant, which is exactly what's happened here once again. So the quick plant comes through, and we reset immediately to a 4v4. And they're all going to back out of the site as well. So hopefully Laura have a couple attacks to use to try to reinforce their rate through top mid. Exceed is able to find the first blood. Dak trying to play for the trade. He sets up gunless for it, but Dylan Rex with the bridge route is able to keep the man wow. advantage. Clean shots even through the door. Pistol out. Classic taken down to critical HP, but shrugs it off. Now off the regen. 1v2 left in front of him. Gets maybe a piece of timing here, but the high step off the vending machine not going to work out in phase black. Quick to get the bomb planted. Works out for the win. Yeah, that's good stuff right there out of phase blacks and no Exactly what's going on in round number one. No trophy systems to at least make it easier for Lord to try to reinforce. You're hitting a couple of stuns. You're hitting a couple of nades to keep them at bay. And then you get the bomb down. You start off the trade fights with the first blood. Then you come out on top at the end. Phase Black secured the first attack. How do you respond to this if you're Lore? Again, we often talk about it's not even just the fact that Phase Black are good in the middle of the map. They're good at reading what plays are coming their way as well. This time it'll be a three-man defensive setup towards A with just exceed. Trying to throw utility and keep Lore at bay. But, wow, this feels familiar. Lore Gaming getting full control at top mid. And they're going to go for the quick plant here as well, Jay. Yeah, and I'm wondering if Phase Black have a couple nades or a couple stacks to work their way back on in. But that bomb is going to get planted again for free. So this time it's Phase on the 4v4 retake. They start off with the first blood. Great shots from Dylan. Follow-up. Not going to be there. Classic gets the trade. 30 seconds on the clock. A little bit of pressure here for FaZe to have to move quickly and flush out some of these key positions. And it's coming at a cost. I mean, one-for-one -one exchanges are perfectly fine for Lore Gaming. And now seen last one left. Hits the dead silence. Sneaks across. Knows that he should at least force one defender to come check. But that will be handled by Classic. Time becoming an issue. Exceed right back out the doors. And I think Gunless just saw him and said, All right, you take that long route, friend. I will watch you when you try to hop on for this defuse. Which even that will not come through. So Lore Gaming respond with an offense of their own. Oh, yeah, same exact round. Basically a, a mirror effect for both of these teams on the early attack, but the difference is exceed ends that round on a three. And if you are lower, you take the pressure against them. Just got to make sure you are staying composed in this moment. You did not decide to fight all the way back from down all three to fall short just one map in the game seven. As we saw all of high rise, it was all out defense. One sneaky attack for both squads and it simply might come down to all attacks on this map. Yeah, very well may. <laughs> I mean, based on the tempo we're seeing right now, this time Lord Gaming will commit a little bit of extra resources defensively over to the top of the B site. And meanwhile, Phase Black kind of have their attention over towards A. The only defender here at the moment is Classic, but he's playing a very passive angle, and surely this doesn't get uh, checked out before 04 can help him out. Yeah, I just really hope that Dak is going to be patient. Not decide to hit, hit this deep flank, but... Classic finds that first blood. He gains the info on to exceed. So now we're just going to get out with our life. Keep our man advantage in favor of Lore. Joe Deceives trying to clear out some space. And a lot has been given here. But the defense now in position playing from both sides. And Eski's nice commitment from 0-4. As soon as Brack took shots on one side, he pushes the other. Joe Deceives has to turn around to confirm a trade. That puts him out of position. Oh, nice shots towards Gunless. But... 
would have been hard pressed to do much more, even if he did find that elimination. So, clean stuff starting to come through here as Lord gave me take back to back rounds. Yeah, that was good stuff right there from Laura to get an early read on where the pressure was coming in. This time on defense, they got a couple trophy systems, so those tacks are not going to be useful on the side of Phase Black. You show Phase through top mid, you get a read that they're not applying that pressure on that side. So you rotate back to set up a couple crossfires with Classic, but once he finds that first blood, and at the same time, Dak gets info onto the Island player. You just got to keep your man advantage and play the trades. That's lower gold now with two rounds in a row. Back to the attacking side. Phase black. You can't stack three over towards A. It's yeah. Lower gold. They are just taking top mid every time. Oh, this time though. Lower gaming come away in the favor of a lot of the opening exchange with the nades. But the gunfire has a different story to tell or does it. Classic. Huge double. Dak. Last kill comes through. And for the first time, we see both teams square up top mid. And it goes the way of lower gaming for three in a row. Oh, man, they get the first blood onto Exceed. You saw FaZe Blacken's game plan. We can't try to give up mid-top control as easy as we did in the previous defense, but they did not have the decision to be made for them. As Lord with the non-stop aggression through top mid, Classic with the double, starting to pull away in this search to destroy. FaZe Black, you got to stop the bleeding. You yeah. have to gain some momentum somewhere, and it has to be this round. Absolutely. It's not often that we get a chance to say must win round, but this one's definitely going to feel like it. Four stuns go over the top at mid. Trophy system largely keeps Lore Gaming safe, but this is all essentially just a little bit of a head fake. But look at Classic. He's trying to sneak up, and wow, the timing. If he would have taken even one more step forward, he would have been caught without an exit, but instead he gets the read, and now he's set up in position to defend this. Yeah, that is all he needed to do. Just get the timing, gain the info, and now know... Give the heads up to his teammates that they are just being a decoy over towards B. They're 100% coming over towards A. You see Dak taking a lot of mid-map control, and now you're going to force Phase Black to hit that rotation. Yeah. You don't want to rock into the crossfires from lower, and that time is starting to dwindle down. we got to get this objective done somewhere. They've got no info. They don't know what's sitting over towards bridge side. They don't know if anyone's holding this quarter that Dak currently finds himself at vending. Exceed actually just bursts through the backside of the U-turn, though. That's actually great space that FaZe can now use as a way to try to get into this B site. Here comes the approach. Gunless, topside Eskies, Brack, a little bit of crossfire set up. That's going to be good enough for trades back and forth. Exceed collects the bomb quickly. It immediately hops on for the plant. Classic not going to check this. We're going to go to a 2v2. We're going to go to a 2v2. This is a much-needed round for FaZe. Stop the bleeding in this search and destroy. Can Classic find a timing on the deep pinch to at least isolate one player, but... So a couple shots do come down. Classic now gains the info that they're going to camp in the back of their spawn. Yeah. And with that reposition, it might catch them off guard. See, able to find Gunless for the first. Classic has to go. Yeah. He's cleared out a lot of space, sure, but there's still so many question marks in terms of where this post might set up. Decent read on the first one, but the gunfight doesn't go his way, and FaZe Black take that aptly mentioned pretty much must win round. Yeah, those early couple of shots keeps Classic on that side of the map. He's just roaming around the lower Eskies area. Trying to locate where FaZe Black went. But they just rotated right up through the middle of the map. We're able to catch Gunless with his pants down. And then in a 2v1 Classic was still trying to locate someone. But couldn't find anything. FaZe Black, even after finding that first blood, we're able to stay strong on that post-plant setup to secure the round. Might want the bomb here, boys. Maybe not. <laughs> Quick aggression over towards Bridgeside. Gunless with the one to track back to collect. And for FaZe, opting to kind of keep mid open. This feels kind of familiar in a way where Exedus is on an island, but he's on an island with a rival nine of all weapons. Yeah, I think he's just simply throwing shoulders on this side of the map. They try to find a timing to execute a play up through bridge. The Lord currently take all mid-map control. They're going to start to work that objective, and I don't know if they're going to be able to spot him. With that trophy going down, you should know the bomb is getting planted. First blood good. Exceed finds the kill. A follow-up, though, from Dak at 04, but no exit. Oh, oh! is there. Wow. I mean, 50 HP. A little drop shot, almost a follow-up under Rex, but there's no exit available, even if that would have gone maybe a little bit cleaner. And wow, that little drop shot from 04 at 1 HP essentially is everything. I'm telling you, somehow, some way, he just manages to make plays with that rival 9. He's the objective player. He's able to at least find one. Also finds a second, like you said, with the drop shot. And also puts a couple bullets in oh. on the very end. What the hell just happened? Not like this. What just happened? 
I really hope that that was for, I hate to say it, but I really hope that was for everybody, not just our observer. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can tell it's for everyone. Everyone's calm, cool, and collected. You're taking a couple sips of water, so that had to be an entire lobby drop. Okay, thank but God. But still be lower gaming. <laughs> Up 4-2. All momentum on their side, and this reset could play a big factor because they were the team right there to walk away with the attack. And now if you are a phase black, you can go back to exactly what you did in round number one. A whole lot of pressure through top mid because there's no trophy systems to work with now off the yeah. reset. Yeah, this definitely changes how things go, as it often does. And we've seen it across challengers in the past as well as even in the CDL at times. These resets, unreal, change everything. So we'll jump back into this, I assume, still 4-2, obviously, because that yeah. happened pretty clearly at the end of the round. So Huge moment. In terms of how do you bounce back off this, right? I mean, what do you call here? I think it's the, maybe even the bigger question in terms of, again, not having trophies and things of the nature. We see Face Black often kind of succeed in the mixier parts of the map when there are no trophy systems out because their name placements are so good. No, the way that you have to get this done, if you are lower, you have to at least apply the pressure over through the bridge side. You can't contest through top mid because you know those stuns and nades are going to be hurting. So you have to work over towards bridge so you can still at least attempt to contest through top mid. That has to be the play call going into this reset on the defense. Yeah. Okay. That's the coach call from Captain Study over here. I should I like be a that. coach. I swear, <laughs> Alan. Like, I know the game down to the T. You want to get better at Call of Duty? Definitely listen to us too, Cass, because I'm breaking the game down, <laughs> making it a lot easier for you when you're going through rank play, getting slammed in a bunch of these maps. Yeah, that sounds like me in a nutshell. But... <laughs> We will be, of course, like the lower third there says, we will be remaking the lobby from 4-2. Again, no trophy systems in play. So, wow. I mean, it's just the simple fact, the matter of this looked like it was going to be a runaway series for Phase Black in the first oh, three yeah. maps, and all of a sudden, a real hard point turns everything around uh, for the side of Lore Gaming. They come out and play that map electrically, pretty darn clean as well for what it's worth. And it, again, like we talked about it in the moment, but I really do believe like maps like that, that are forcing you to have to be essentially cracked out and have to be able to snap, turn, find centering, like... That's what really gets you, like, in a vibe. Just being able to really succeed in moments that look like that. So, that could have been the turning point here overall. I mean, it's easy to say because it has to this point been the turning point. But, I don't know, man. It's felt like it's a new lore gaming since that Rio hard point. Yes, that Rio hard point got the blood flowing. Like you said, it's all about just being non-stop aggressive around the map. Playing your timings to perfection. And with all that timing and everything that was going the way. Lower game may have brought this one all the way back. And now they find themselves two rounds away from completing a reverse sweep and walking away victorious as our Miami Challengers event champions. Just got to stick with your foot on the gas, man. You got to keep going pedal to the metal because this, series, this map is far from over. Remember, 4-2 in favor of Lore Gold. Loading on into a phase black offense. Expectations would be that they want to push this thing up towards mid, but not the case here. Three members quickly over towards A. It's 04 who's playing inside Garage Classic on the corner to watch the cross, and he surely has at least seen one. Nades will confirm that there are more. But all the meanwhile, 04 has stayed tucked in very nicely right between these shelves. Oh, yeah, this is the play. This is the wow. spot he was able to play in one of his previous series that led to a double. But with Classic finding that first blood, Phase Black now have to rotate over with no information on the left side of the map. Currently are not taking bridge control. They just decided to push right through middle, and they find that kill onto Gunless and make it a 3v3. What a call from Exceed. Like you said, there was not a lot of space here. But they isolate onto Gunless. They get through the back. And now it's just trying to get a read on where this retake is coming from, which, to be fair, is coming quickly. It's all up top already. And really, there's nobody here for face. They need to check on this defuse. It's going to force a couple of the gunfights. Joey able to find the first, but Classic, he's still sticking for it. Is anyone going to be able to take him off in time? Looks like the kill came through, and yeah, just barely. Wow, that got tight, though. Yeah, that one definitely got tight. Thankfully, if you are phase black, when you find that kill onto Gunless, you plant the bomb on the opposite side. Classic tries to stretch it, but that head is still peeking. So that's going to be Phase Black, even though they got first blood and securing the round with a great mid-round adjustment. Now down 4-3, Joe DeSees finds himself on three in a row, and I still don't think there's been enough time for Lord Gaming to earn <laughs> themselves some trophies. Oh, Classic is right there. They should yeah, have the Classic's trophy they want right to attempt there. towards B. Yeah, I might have to pause for just a moment here, but not really at all. Trophy down, and it comes into effect. And oh boy, both sides are going to have trophies up. They just want to take this thing straight through Eskies. Exceed gets first blood. Classic nearly able to respond, but everything gets pushed back, and we have a 4v3 numbers advantage for Phase Black. 
Good stuff from FaZe Black to use their teamwork to take top mid control, open up with that first kill, and now you're forcing lower gold to potentially hit an adjustment over towards A, but this is a complete blind counter. O4 tries to catch the timing as the island player pushing aggressively up through the A side. And now it's a 4v2 left up to Glundless and Classic, the Vets for lore. Oh, and Classic just gets completely turned around here. Yeah, nowhere to go. This is just wolf pack mentality here. Oh, yeah. Face black. <laughs> I mean, all four of them running together. Gunless by himself. His position now known. Does take down Dylan for free, but the play after this is going to be a very laborious one as at least he's got the bomb to work with, but... Yeah, face black, keep holding hands like this. Surely there's no way Gunless pulls this off. Yeah, there's just no way in hell. We're playing great team Call of Duty. You have the numbers advantage. He can't kill all three of you at the same time. And that is going to lead to them being victorious. They three push right off the rip through top mid. They three rotate over towards back end to catch 04. And then they three rotate back in towards bottom P3 to catch Classic. You just can't win rounds like that. Because everyone is right in front of you. They're all conga lining together. Yes, sir. And that brings us back to level terms now all of a sudden. Two rounds in a row for FaZe Black has us after the restart at 4-4 tally. Map 7, Grand Finals, Miami Challengers Open. Doesn't get much better than this. Only issue is, for Lord Gaming, can you find a way to get yourself back into this reset? Because you got Exceed on 3, Joe on 4. Smoke up top on the bridge. Dak able to find one through all of it. I mean, is there anyone better in this tournament that's been good at playing through Smoke? Because he's been unreal. Yeah, him and 04 somehow, some way, are always getting it done. Well, you think all the odds are stacked against them, but Dak, unfortunately, with the peak, is going to give a freebie to Dylan Rex, able to even up the numbers at a 3v3, and now the rotation call is going to be, let's try to go over towards A, because we don't know how many more players are going to be sitting through top mid. Oh, oh they're just going to take top mid. Yeah, Lord Damien kind of give up the angles just as the hit starts to come through, so a couple of shots from 04, but they don't know that FaZe are already playing their top staircase. Gunless, well, now he'll confirm the information. Just the left hand being seen. 04 tries to make a play happen. Follow up from Classic. A gunless, no good. I mean, that is a selfless play from 04. And all of a sudden, it turns into a 1v2 situation for Joe Deceives. 30 seconds on the clock. And if he's able to find these final two kills, he's going to earn that cruise missile and basically call a game. So you have to clutch up in if you're lower in the numbers advantage. Everyone just backs up to the spawn. And the buddy system works out to perfection. As that now puts lower gaming, lower gold. All the way back from down 0-3, winning three straight, up 5-4 at game point to potentially be our champions. Unbelievable scenes. I don't think we've ever seen it. Hate to jinx it right now, but I don't think we've ever seen a reverse sweep in a Challengers Finals. But that's what's on the precipice at the moment. One round away, our Lord Gold. Phase Black trying to send this thing to a round 11. Trophy systems at the ready for Classic. Pops it right on top of Eski. Nades over the top. Again, continue to come through. Exceed, Joe working together. They're trying to get aggressive as well. They don't they do not want Lord Gaming to have any sort of staircase control. The chase is on. 04 dealt with, but classic off the back as Nade hits for one, but doesn't slip away long enough. Numbers still with phase black. Now in the 3v2, someone has to try to make an individual play. That currently with this control. At least gonna get a lot of info that no one is aggressive through top mid. Phase Black have to be going back to what worked in their previous defensive round, and that's the buddy system. Well, we have to start thinking about that objective. Gunless trying to take uh, a little bit of ground over here towards the A side while Dak is working the opposing end. And Dylan Rex is at least able to get info onto one. If there were ever a player to want in a 2v3, I want this guy. Dak with the plant. Gives an opportunity here for Lord Gold to set up their post plant and actually put a little bit of pressure here onto Phase Black with the clock ticking against them. Long routes being hit. FaZe need to clear out so much space. This is not a great angle, though, for Dak. He sees the shoulder. The shots are clean, but not enough to finish off the elimination. Oh! Meanwhile, though, he tracks down Exceed. Hold on a second. Gunless is on the other side. He can confirm that no one's on the defuse here. Problem is, he gets a little bit caught out, but still keeps his life. How has he stayed alive this long? Now it's over to Dak for the 1v2 situation. Finds the first. 1v1 with Dylan Rex. Clock favors him. Slips away, but Rex finds the kill. Just comes down to can he get to the bomb in time? Yes, he can. We're going around 11. Oh, my God. I thought Dak did just enough to at least, once he wins that one-on-one -on -one gunfight, to potentially set up Gunless for a freebie because they did not account where he was the whole round. But Dylan Rex, he knew I had to make the play come to me.
I have to be the aggressor, and he gets to the bomb just at the right time to secure the defense. So now it all comes down to one. One round, one set of kills to crown our champions. What do you call here? Face black on the offense. Do they go to their tried and true? Quick play up to Eskies on to B. Do they try to finesse a little bit? Maybe try to get them to think that it's a play towards B and then stretch the map a different way. May not make much of a difference. I mean, Classic has already gotten some A control, and Lord no, there's nothing up towards mid. This is a lot of information here for the defense. Classic almost able to tally first blood. Nade cooked. Does land. Got oh my goodness, it must have bounced off a pillar. Joe will fall. It's a big first blood out of Classic. He's done it every time now, and FaZe Black have hit the rotation through top mid. Dak is able to find the second. It's a 4v2. Bomb being planted, though, for Brack and Dylan Rex. Can they survive through this 2v4 situation? Gunless gets a read under Brack. Resets. Rex over the top. Clean shots. What a bait that is. But now Dak trying to follow up. Red Dot chasing. Oh, he's weak, though. Pistols are out. Kills. Not through yet. No one's out for the defuse, but Brack gets here in time. Now it's just down to one. Rex dancing with 04, and it's the pistol to secure it. Plenty of time for the defuse. Gold is in the name, and that is what they'll earn with the reverse sweep here in the Challengers Grand Finals. Wow. That's all I got to say, Alan, is wow. You're talking about being down 0-3 in this series versus a phase black squad who've been finding a lot of success in the Challenger Cups, who've been having a lot of success so far throughout this entire season. But on one week of practice, Lord Gold come in here, complete the reverse sweep. It goes all the way to around 11, 1v1, and 0 for the young gun in his first season in Challengers is able to get it done for his team. What a series from start to finish. Obviously, FaZe Black came out swinging, but Lord Gold had put their names on the map. That is how you fight through adversity. That is how you get it done with your backs against the wall. And congratulations to Lord Gold walking away as our major two challenger champions. Unbelievable series. <laughs> Unbelievable series. And there is something appropriate about it being largely Dak to confirm the round in a way. And at the same time, you could also give a lot of credit to the young gun up at 04 to find the final 1v1 kill after what has been an incredible debut in Challengers. I mean, the kid's been playing competitively now in the scene. What, there's been three months worth of events? And he goes from a first ever Challengers Elite finishing top eight to now being a champion. Whereas on the other side, you talk about Dak. Had a really good breakout year, I think, for a lot of people last year, playing alongside people like Cruz and Co. throughout the majority of the year. And then still, to be talked about the veterans, Class Classic at Gunless had an absolute event this this weekend. Unreal stuff out of that. And now, if you are a potential some of these CDL teams, you add more plays to the list that you're potentially going to pick on up. I know 04 and Dak was not on their bingo card, but those guys played fantastic in this grand finals. Backs against the wall. You're thinking that the rookies are going to be shaking a little bit. They're nervous. They're probably sitting there like, we're definitely a lot more comfortable in our house. They're not used to this environment at being down 0-3 on land. Even with FaZe Black doing all the chirping that they were doing. They yeah. were up 3-0. You're chirping after every single map. But the fact that they're able to stay so composed in this series all the way towards the very end, they were able to answer with four straight maps, two search and destroys in between of those four, where they go all the way down to the round 11. The ice was there for Lore, and they walk away with $40,000 richer. Unreal, man. What a finish. What an absolute series. I mean, we had round 11s at every search and destroy, bro. Like, you want to talk about there being razor thin margins between these two teams? That is pretty much the definition of it. Two different 3 0s in the controls. And the hard points also split between them. Unreal series. And man, it's just one of those things that like as people that, you know, constantly watch over the challenger scene, the easy conversation is who's the first one you call. <laughs> there are some options, I'll tell you that much, between the eight players we just watched throughout that seven map series.
I think without a question, if you're looking for some SMG players who are going to set the tone, set the pace, Dak in 04 got to be at the top of your list alongside Joe Deceives. He was having his moments, at least in the first three maps, but the last four was all of the young guns. Dak and 04, time and time again. Even with Dak dropping 16 in game two, they fall short. Yeah. They were on point from start to finish of this series, and I was a little bit nervous. Obviously, with FaZe Black playing multiple matches today, guns are hot. They started off the series up 3-0. Lord Gaming was sitting nice and comfortable on the couch, just waiting for their match to come to them. But the fact that they were able to stay so composed in this moment, backs against the wall, you're looking at the veterans to at least keep them calm, cool, and collected in this series. And it was everything that they needed to walk away as the champions, man. That's insane stuff, man. I'm excited to see these guys, what they look like with more than just one week of practice. Because they've yeah. only been together yeah. one week. That honeymoon stage is hitting diff at this event. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Well, let's take a look to see what they walk away with across the board here in our prizing for the event. $40,000 richer. 10k a piece of course easy math there for lord gold face black look at the 24k for second five media clan continued to just surprise us oh, yeah. on the european region great day yesterday could not quite find it here today but coming into the upper bracket final they uh impose some eu dominance uh across not just this event but also what they were able to do in boston a top six finish there now supplanted with a third place finish here omit eu will finish in fourth boston academy couldn't quite get things going after their lower quarterfinal matchup earlier today they'll finish tied fifth six with team war and then to finish off we had houston spartans also with lore black on the other side not quite able to break into sunday so here's a look at how the bracket had happened and you know you look at lore gaming right there in the smack down in the middle beat phase black twice you also had that nice, quick, swift three over versus five media clan. Lots of conviction throughout the day today. Yeah, lower, lower gaming. Overall, they had a fantastic weekend. You have two teams that finished in the top eight. Obviously, they go head to head in round number one. Lower gold is able to come out on top. But as you take a look at our bracket, it's just top team from the NA side, top teams from the EU to be into our final eight. But it's Lord gaming, lower gold. Coming out on top, man. I, there's just nothing else left to say. These guys just came out and just got it done in fashions that we normally do not see it get done. And they're just feeling great, man. They are just feeling yeah. great. It's always good when you're the team that gets the last laugh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, off of a reverse sweep round 11 as well? Yeah. Come yeah. on. What are we talking <laughs> about over here? Good grief. Well, that will unfortunately do it, but at least we got ourselves a hell of a look at challengers throughout the L of the weekend. So big shout out to the Miami Heretics for helping put this on in the first place. I know there was a lot of conversation at the beginning of the year that they may not even run anything at all. So major props to Miami for getting together and finding a way to make this all happen. And of course, the Esports Engine team, both on the site and our production team here behind the scenes to allow the broadcast to be successful over the last two days. So Jay, final words for you before we close things out here today. Challengers is lit, man. I can't wait to see what Elite <laughs> Stage 2 is going to bring to us because there's a whole lot of guys that I now know who the hell they are. Absolutely the case. That's what's coming up next. It'll be a while, though, before we see the next qualification process and Season 2 of Challengers Elite. Mark your calendars for April the 24th. That'll be the first day back for Challengers Elite Season 2 group play action. Until next time, make sure you keep holding it down. Bye-bye.